Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. We have seen the name Jesus walking in the Spirit. We have seen the value of the name. We have seen the value of staying in faith. Glory be to God. Maybe many of us, we don't know the name Jesus, we call the name Jesus just as we call the name of person. You have seen the value of the name so much and the value of staying in faith congratulations i'm in the midst of successful people i'm in the midst of joyful people I'm in the midst of healed people, yeah. delivered people, yeah. blessed people. Yeah. I know you would like to hear that. When the Holy Spirit speaks, changes are beginning. Whether you like it or not, changes are beginning. I want to say to you, you will not remain and you will not go the same. Because we are still standing on his way. His way say, let there be light. That is the promise of his way. Are you sick? Let the sick come. We are still standing on his way and his assurance of what? Assurance of salvation. Let us rise up on our faith. Jesus has given so much capacity to learn from our mistake, to learn from our error. That is why you are here today. If there is no capacity to learn from your error, you will not be here today. There are some errors you committed that will have led to death. Many errors you committed in the past that will have led to what? By now they will have been pointed to your graveyard. Many that are in the graveyard, they have never done so much you have done. When you think back, many that are in the graveyard today, Many of them have not committed the error, the mistake you have committed. But today they are pointed to their graveyard. Their dream crash. These are the testimonies you are supposed to be given. So much capacity to learn from our mistake, from our error, and move on. That is why you are here. You have done so much that will have led to graveyards, that will have led to deaths, or sick beds. But here you are. So God has given us so much capacity to learn from our error, from our mistake. So you bow down your head now, Ask God to give you enough grace to learn from your error, from your mistake, and move on. Mistake will come. You will learn. And not fail. 
and move on. Bow down your head. Ask God to give you enough. Enough grace to continue to learn from your error, from your mistake. Ask God grace. Grace. He has given you, but it can still increase that capacity. It can still. There's no limit to the grace of God. What you have today can be increased, can be multiplied. That is why you're here. Ask God, grace, Lord. Grace. Grace. Enough grace to learn from my error, to learn from my mistake. Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Mistake will come. So far, you are still living. Flesh. And you will learn and move on. So, each time that mistake comes, it is not the mistake that matter. What you learn from it. That why, why should why this mistake? Why this mistake? No, never you say that when it comes. Test. You can count how many tests, examinations you have gone through. Each time you need promotion, you should be ready for examination. After passing the examination, you'll be promoted. So Mistake will come. Don't bother yourself. Eh, why this mistake? Why this error? Why? Oh my God! Oh, I'm a Christian. Why all this? Why all this? No, 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 no. It will come. What of if God allow is? If the tempter have consulted God, allow me to test this man. If God allow it, what will you do? So. It should have, why all this? Why this? I fail this and another. Why all this? Oh my God, I'm a Christian. Don't let that affect your faith. It is time to apply your faith. Time to apply your faith, not to bother. Mistake will come. Tell your neighbor. I mean, error will come. You will learn and move on. There's capacity. There's ability. He never promised to keep you away. He never promised to keep you away from mistake. He never promised to keep you away from mistake because he has given you capacity. He has given you grace. No mistake, no grace. He never promised to keep you away from all this nonsense, challenges, temptation, whatever. He never promised to keep you away. But he promised to see you through. If God must be God, if you must be Christian, tell your neighbor, if God must be God, if you must be Christian, you have to answer that. Tell your neighbor again, if God must be God, if you must be Christian, you should answer that question. What take God to be God is what take you to be Christian. If God must be God, it must pass through furnace. If you must be Christian, you must pass through temptation. Try us. Just tell that you laugh, smile when it comes. Ah, where this trouble? Promotion is coming. And get ready to pass through it. You are now complaining. Get ready to be promoted to GM. 
you must also be ready to go through some tests to see whether you'll be qualified to be GM. If gold must be gold, it must pass through furnace. If you must be a Christian, a faithful Christian, your character must be tested through rare situation. Your test may be different from my test. Your may be sickness. Mr. B may be hardship. Mr. C may be accusation. Mr. D may be affliction. E may be limitation in progress. There are some message you don't need to sit down and receive. There are many messages you must have to stand and receive it. That is why you are standing. I need your body, your soul, your spirit attention. Take this. What takes gold to be gold also takes you to be a true believer. It's challenging. Is that move you forward or backward? When the Holy Spirit speaks, changes are beginning. That is Holy Spirit. A man has ability to speak. Take note of that. Man has ability to speak, but Holy Spirit speaks. And when he speaks, changes are beginning. You must identify who speaks to you. A man will walk towards you and speak to you. And uh, a man also will walk towards you and the Holy Spirit will speak to you through him. Who is speaking? Anyone can say Jesus is Lord. But not everyone can say it genuinely. Anyone can say, be he in the name of Jesus. Anyone can say that. Be deliver in the name of Jesus. Anybody can say that. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Anyone can say, rise up and pray. Be he, be delivered. Anybody can do that. If I give you a mic now, you start saying it. To make a change, you must stand on his way. You must stand on his word and in the assurance of salvation by salvation you can be healed because that salvation will help you to maintain the healing if you receive without salvation you cannot maintain it as you receive it go it's gone it's gone you can be healed by salvation Nothing go for nothing, nothing come by chance. Salvation. Have healing. Salvation. Have blessing. Salvation. Have breakthrough. You may be seated. Thank you. You have a role to play. The prayer is not just one-sided. As you are sitting, continue to meditate. Your meditation brings results. With your heart, you see Jesus. With your heart, you walk with him. You agree with him with your heart. And you must take control of your heart. Because our heart is just like this. Just like this. As you are sitting down, if you don't take hold of your heart, as I'm talking now, your heart will be telling you, who is this man now? Who is this man? Look at him. Look at the way. Look at him. Look at him. And you can't take hold. That is why you have must take hold. Just, mm, no, arrest your heart. It's not too late now as I'm talking to you. Mm, my heart. Let it look where you look. Begin to take more of me, give me more of you. Begin to engage your heart. If you don't engage your heart as you are looking at me, 
you will be looking one direction and your heart will be saying nonsense. When you greet a person, good morning, sir. Your heart will say, see him, see him. Very proud man. I say good morning. He refuses to answer me. You will greet, your heart will not greet. We Christians, we, we take hold of our heart. In order to have accomplishment, result, what you say, you say be he, your heart must also mm, release that word. Not you say, your heart release it. So as you are looking at me now, begin to meditate in your heart. Don't allow your heart to be silent. Because we Christians, we are not walk by sight. We walk by what? Huh? Do you know what the Bible calls faith? What faith? When you say you walk by faith, you mean you walk by heart. If you are just going by your eyes, you always have an error all the time. But when you walk, you must walk by your heart. The eyes of your heart must lead you. As I'm looking now, I'm not only walk going by what I'm seeing, but this heart is the one leading me. The heart has eyes. The Bible says faith is of man's heart, means man's spirit. So when you are sitting down, you must also sit by your what? Your heart. Anything that is not from your heart is a sin. Your heart and your mind must be in accord, in agreement. If not, we will not be able to place you. With our mouth, we confess. With our heart, we believe. Salvation. With our mouth, we do what? With our heart. This is life you must begin to live. Are you engaged your heart now? Huh? Take more of me, give me more of you. If somebody is even calling you, it must call all of you. <clears throat> you are two nature in one person. You and your divine. Take more of me, give me more of you. This is Prayer will anoint her for you. You may have your own prayer, no doubt about that, but because of your witness, the Lord gave us just a word that is easy for you to communicate. Take more of me, give me more of you, Lord. Your faithfulness, your kindness, your purity, your holiness is simple. Just simple to communicate. Begin to say that, engage your heart. So, when you now engage your heart, you begin to have fulfillment, results. We are like this because our heart, that is our spirit, is saying this, and our eyes is saying this. You are seeing white, and your heart is talking to a different thing. You are greeting me, good morning, sir. And I say, oh, thank you. And your heart at the same time will say, why are you greeting him? You ask yourself, ah, why am I greeting this man? Well, I will greet him as my pastor. That is our heart for you. Your heart is always not agree in accord with whatever you do. So, arrest your heart. Once you are able to get this, you begin to work in line with God. As I'm talking to you, I'm also at the same time praying. How possible for a man to be preaching at the same time praying? Yes, it's possible. Because I have two nations. Two persons in one person. It's possible. Until you begin to live this kind of life, you will overcome this world. If not, a situation where you say, 3 p.m., I'm going to pray. You can never overcome this world. Tomorrow I will fast. You must, fasting must, is 
every day. The word fasting is abstaining from unrighteousness. 24-7 prayer. Not when you enter the room, you say, I want to pray. I want to fast. These are the areas Satan used to get you. You know when you are not praying, he cast you. Before you pray, he cast you. You know when you pray, he will not be able to cast you. He will make sure he cast you before you go to pray. 18 in the spirit that is what we call spirit prayer if a man is a Christian you know he doesn't talk because you are the only person talking if there is another talk in the spirit you can't you wait for the one that talk underneath you are calling me hello sir I said, hello, what do you want? Okay, I'll wait for you. I would never talk like that. I said, hello, I'll pause. You think that I don't hear what you are saying. I'm praying on that. People say, it's eloquent speech. Hello, just as it's law, just as it's law. Because he's the only person talking. Jesus is like, Jesus is like, at what time you wait for the Holy Spirit to talk? The one that control you. Nobody control you. You are the one talking. You want to display the skill. What are the ones that give you the way? Why can't you pause? Hear from him and say what he wants you to say. So when you pick a phone, oh, hello, sir, <laughs> I'm ready. I must hear from the one, my controller, what to say. I must hear from my commander, what to say. I must hear from my instructor, what to say. Hello, sir, hello. Eh, I, I just say, let me greet you. Um, thank you. At the same time, I'm praying in the spirit. Can you hear me, sir? I hear you quite all right. You think I don't hear you? I hear you. Because I'm not alone. If I'm not alone, I must hear from him who sent me. Continue serving God with physical strength, eloquent speech, day, your eyes, your mouth. No. You must serve him with all your world. heart. First place we must grow or prosper is in our spiritual life. Let me share with you why it's so difficult for us. After you have made a lot of money, you are rich, fleet of car companies you have a lot yet there's a burden why because it's like uh, we are prosper in our financial life material life and everything but in our spiritual life zero you have money where You have people. Yet, there's so much body. Hardly you'll be able to sleep, but you are not sick. You need help of drug tablets to sleep. You cannot sit down any longer alone for three to four hours. You need to be in the midst of people to be happy. Create joy, joy that created, not joy of the Lord. So people will make you happy, 
you need to go to party, you need to go to club house, you need to go to occasion, you need to go to uh, medical checkup, you need to go for holiday every week just to be happy. You are looking for just joy. The one you have is not sustain you. Now, reverse is the case. Our spiritual life, yes. Because this spiritual life is the one that carry everything we have. It carry our money, it carry our property, your fame, it is the spiritual life that carry them. If something that carry you is very small, you know the weight will be too much for him. The life many of us live is like uh, you as a person carry this If you carry this, you will soon get tired. Your spiritual life is like that. What carry you is your spiritual life. It's not your money that carry you. It's not your material that carry you. It is not your fame that carry you. It is not your popularity that carry you. Wealth, no. What carry you is your spiritual life. And what you have is so much, too much for spiritual life to carry. So your spiritual life is just... <clears throat> <clears throat> that is why life is so difficult for many of us. With your money, with your property, with your mate, you keep asking yourself, I have money, why should I be suffering? I have need, why should I be suffering? I'm, I have fame, I have complete all over the world, why should I be suffering? Yeah, because the person that carry you is carrying so much low property and is the one that's supposed to be giant and those things are supposed to be. I want you to work on that. God has given us the capacity to learn from our challenges. So if you don't want challenges, you don't want to learn. Tell your neighbor, you don't want challenges. You don't want to learn. Tell your neighbor again, you don't want challenges. You don't want to learn. What lesson will you learn from, from breakthrough? Breakthrough come, it come. What lesson will you learn from pleasure? We much, much learn from challenges. Your challenge could be sickness. Your challenge could be poverty. Your challenge could be temptation. You don't want challenges. You don't want to learn. And you don't want to learn. You don't want to move forward. Challenges will come. And we will learn. And move on. You know the process here of seed growing. When you plant the seed, you water them, you nurture them. Why should you water seed? Because of season, dry season, rain season. You nurture them, you keep them away from the insect bed. You try to remove weed around it. These are the challenges seed have. Before grow and become beneficial to you. In the same day, you are a seed growing. Your faith is lifted up that you see your hand. I would like to ask a question before I leave you, and I want somebody from the heart of people to answer this question. How does this message appear to you? Don't rely on yourself, but on the Holy Spirit, because the burden will arrive, challenges will come. If you rely on yourself, you will not hold it, you will not stand it, you not maintain it. 
but you, the Holy Spirit, you will go forward. You need challenges to move forward, to learn and to move forward. What Thank are you. the challenges we are talking about? Oh, problem of life. Thank you. Clap for her. Thank you. You listen to that? He said, we need challenges. There are some challenges you, you cause by yourself. And when you cause a challenge and it comes, God will withdraw his strength for you to face it. You decided to look for a sugar, soaking sugar, and begin to eat sugar, eat ice cream, eat sugar, eat ice cream, eat sugar, eat ice cream, eat sugar, eat ice cream. And you say you like the food. What will you expect? And when it comes, you face it on your own. God will withdraw his strength to face the diabetes. Without God, you'll be defeated. Without God, you'll be destroyed. Without God, you'll die. Emmanuel. I have learned today from our senior prophet TB Joshua that being a human being, we have to be passing some challenges because before a gold must be, must be gold, it has to pass through fire. So before a Christian must be a real, true, born again Christian, must pass through some challenges. Thank you. Brother, can you just give us more? What challenges are you going through now? The challenges can be sickness, can be... I say you. <laughs> just tell us the, one of the challenges because everyone here has one or two, three. Family challenges. That is disunity. So that's it. Which is common. The question now is, if you are not the cause, because some of us, this issue of family, we are the cause. We cause it, and when we cause it in that sense, sometimes God will draw his power and leave us to face it. So thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Beside the altar, the same. I'm, I'm right at your back. I say I'm right at your back. I say I'm at your back here. Yeah? Yesterday I was in front. I, I think I will enjoy a bit fresh air today but much music from outside viewers all over the world thank you uh, yes this is a promise the Lord has made for you and I and we are here today to receive it God's promise about every matter must be known to us before prayer. Tell your neighbor, God's promise. When we say God's promise, we mean God's will. 
So any, anywhere you, you see God's promise in the Bible mean God's will. Just like, uh, God's, just like uh, man's heart, the same as man's spirit. So God's promise about every matter could be headache, could be cancer, could be hardship. Just name every situation you are facing. God's promise about every matter must be known to us before prayer. If you don't know, and you are just jumping to prayer, like what we do today, you just, um, you say, no matter, you see it as, as a Christian, you must pray. No. Before you pray, you must know God's promise, God's will about the matter. That is, what is the will of God concerning that headache? What is His will concerning your situation? Before you begin to say, God, hear me, God, de deliver me, God, pray for me, God, help me. You must know whether he will, His promise, His will concerning it. So that it's not a man that fails. When you call His name, you mean you have heard from him that it, you, you should call him. And he said, God, I need bread. It means you know he will give you that bread. That you don't know whether he will give you bread, you just jump and begin to say, God, give me bread, give me bread, give me These are the cause of frustration today in our Christian life. You say, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying every day, pray, pray, pray. I ask for biscuits, I ask for biscuits, no biscuits, nothing. Because you don't know God's promise about the matter, before you begin to pray. When we know God's way, we will trust in Him according to His way. If I know now, oh yes, I know you will be here now and I'm here to pray for you. I will, my trust will be very strong. I will do it ease. I would not begin to believe me, hear me, hear me, hear me, because you don't know whether you will be here. That's why you have to cry. You have to no, 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 no. When you know God's will, I mean God's promise, you will trust in Him according to His word, according to His will. Because I know you'll be here, I know you'll be delivered, I know you'll be set free. That is why I dress like this here. I know I will face some stiff opposition. You know what I mean by face, face uh, stiff of opposition? Some certain situation that it will be a bit difficult to, to, to remove. But I'm ready. So if I'm now coming here with Agbada and car, big car, and say, hey, Jesus, they will tear my Agbada here today. Or if I now come here with the tie and say, in Jesus' name, amen, they will just grab that tie in my neck. So I'm ready now. I can just remove my shoe. I can just... Uh, uh, uh. To know God's promise, one must know the word of God. Tell your neighbor. To know God's promise, one must know the word of God. Without God's promise, I mean without God's will, our faith is no real. That is, you don't know whether God will hear you. You don't know. And you begin to say, I have faith. Jesus, hear me. It means you are messing up yourself. If it's not the will of God for you to be here, and you are praying to be here, your faith is no real. Tell your neighbor, 
without God's promise, without God's will, our faith is no real. I can hear you. That is, without God's promise, promise me we. Without God's we, me without God's promise. Without God's promise, our faith is no real. That is, no real. We are fake. We are fake. You say, uh, I'm here now today. I don't know whether you'll be delivered. I, 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 because I'm a pastor. I don't know whether you will be delivered or whether you will be here, and I'm not here to pray for you. It means I'm, I'm coming here to mess up myself. I must know the man of God concern you before I begin to talk to you about God. I, w- I must know whether God, uh, it is the will of God to set you free. Today is your day to receive before coming here. I know you when you hear something very sweet. Very sweet. You that's your hand. That's why your hand is no longer pay you again. Uh, but uh, if you don't hear anything sweet, you still bring it here. Man of God, I have pain, I have pain. Is, there are two things like that. If it is uh, money they want to give you, if you have pain in that hand and they stretch one million of dollars immediately the pain you stretch your hand and collect it oh my god thank you lord so i don't want to take much of your time you just take this way yes simple as a see without god's promise our faith is no real our faith is not genuine you don't know you will be here you don't even know what you ask whether you'll be given or not god is your father you don't know whether this God will give you what you're asking for. But you are now beginning to say, God, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me. Mm. God's time is the bear. It may not be the right time for God to give you what you're asking for. Even the sickness you are talking about, challenging you have now, is a blessing. Some challenges are blessing. Why? Because they are to strengthen your desire. If not those challenges, you will not read your Bible. If not those challenges, you will not be here today to listen to the word of God. You will be somewhere else. But if the Lord knows that uh, you have not learned enough, you have not learned enough, it will still leave you to continue that trouble. It, it will allow you to continue swallowing that pain. See, your, your desire and your determination are, I mean, strong. So don't consider what you are going through as a problem or as an enemy. No, no, no. As a Christian, it's not an enemy. What you are going through to strengthen your desire. To make you know God. By the time you are delivered today, you can't run for God again. Rather, you run to Him. God is always good to, 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 to force Him to have pain before freedom. It's always good to pass through darkness before light. If you have not stayed in the darkness, and you are enjoying the light, you will likely not appreciate that light. There are many of our colleagues today, as we are talking out there somewhere else, taking alcohol, drinking and smoking, because they have never forced it before. If they have forced it, and doctors said to them, look, you are the pawn, just go and write your will with suitable you are facing. And they know the cause of this. By the time they get over this sickness, they will never want to taste those things again. It's always good. So I want to leave you and I want to say, well, it is the promise of God to put an end to your challenge today. So thank you, thank you. Osha, thank you, thank you. Living in the 
physical body, learning to live in natural world. You are a spirit. Man is a body being, spirit being, possessed of spirit, soul, and body. It is possible to identify our body. What of our soul and spirit? Shall we say we have no soul and spirit because we cannot identify them? Because there is no emotional contact to prove their existence. Shall we say we have no soul and spirit? Let God say we have. The real thing about man is not his body but his spirit. Man is a spirit being. You are only learning to live in this natural world. So how to walk, how to talk, how to look, you are learning to live in this natural world. You are a spirit. So once you know that, you will not allow this physical body to control you. So if you are a spirit, why are you now fighting your brother? Our battle is not a flesh, but spirit being. It's not against flesh and blood. Your brother is blood, is flesh. So you have to let the world know that you are a spirit. By acting this way, by not fighting the flesh and blood. If your brother says you, you will deal with you, you will deal with you. You say to yourself, I'm the spirit. How can you deal with the spirit? It's not possible. You can't hold the spirit. You can't touch the spirit. Where will you see the spirit? I'm fighting the spirit. You can only fight the flesh and blood. What are you going to do now? Now you know you are a spirit. So you have to feed your spirit. Your spirit is hungry. Hunger wants to kill your spirit. You are always feeding your, your flesh. But and you are, you are a spirit. Hunger wants to kill your spirit. All this food you eat is not they are not for your spirit, they are for your flesh. You have to feed your spirit. By allowing the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate in it and keep it in your heart. You are a spirit. The Word of God is a treasure that provides great riches in the lives of those who meditate on it. Pearls of Usefulness. Like I said, faith releases healing power. Faith releases blessing. Faith is like a vacuum that draw what? That draw what? Anointing. From who? And you are building faith. Building faith. You are like a ball. It's pumped, but it's not well pumped. But the more you say, take more of me, give more of you, you are pumping the ball. You are pumping the ball, take more of me, take more of me. You see the ball become big, become big. Take more of me, take more of me, the ball become big and become big and become big. You are the ball. So if you stop, you stop pumping. And if you continue, the ball will continue to be big, big. You are the ball. The air that enters is that faith. The way you are saying, take more of me, give more of you. It's so strong. Spirit prayer. When you get that ball to stand up, ball, you get it to stand and it level you can play it. You begin to eat with Jesus. See vision, dream, dream. Your heart will begin to talk to you. You don't need to sleep to see vision. It is heart that talks to us. You'll be moving, your heart will say, Don't go there, go back. Ah, who is talking to me? It's your heart. Pumped by faith. Get it worked. 
see with your heart, not with your eye. Our focus. Exodus 14, I will take my reading from verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Verse 11. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? They did not we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. That is the message from Moses. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Glory be to God. The Lord will fight for you. Yeah. You need only to be still. Yeah. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Let someone say, Move on. Move on. When his people were crying, grumbling, murmuring, and rebelling, Moses' heart was deeply engaged with the Lord. Moses stood as a communicator between visible and invisible. As a communicator, he had his own language with which he interacted with God. This means every believer has their own language of communicating their needs to God. It is a grace given to every true believer to be able to speak in different languages. This means every believer has their own methods. If that is under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, Baba God will hear you. If that is the method, if this is done under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, God will hear you. Every believer has their own language of communicating their needs to God. It is a grace given to every true believer to be able to speak in different languages. If I take you back to that text, we heard no word of prayer from Moses. Yet, God asked him, why are you crying unto me? This means God sees our hearts. God sees our meditation. God sees our tears. God sees our heart desires. Whichever way you express your needs, whichever way you express yourself under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, he hears you. Moses was silent, but his faith was not. He was silent, but his faith was active. Active faith will make that which is against us to be for us. 
when you add faith, you walk with the Lord. When you walk with the Lord, what is seen cannot dictate your direction. Let someone say, faith does not ask for possible things. For example, crossing the Red Sea on foot was an impossible thing in the natural. The Red Sea was against the free movement of the Israelites into their promised land. It was against their victory. It was against their success. It was against their liberty, freedom. But Moses said to the people, move on. They could still see the Red Sea in the natural, but the Lord was still saying something through the Red Sea. Let someone say hallelujah. He was saying, look, every mountain shall be leveled for your sake. Amen. I want you to rise up and begin to say, you of Saku, I will not because of you change my direction. I will not because of you Change my position. I know the Lord is still saying something through you. I'm a man of faith. Yes! Your obstacle could be sickness. Your obstacle could be isolation. Your obstacle could be depression. Your obstacle could be poverty. You obstacle. I will not because of you change my direction. I will not because of you change my confession. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Redeemer. Yeah! Many change their confession because of obstacles. They begin to see Jesus in the bad light. I'm telling you, you obstacle, I will not because of you change my direction. I will not because of you change my position. I know my God. When you know that you are a man of faith, you can be bold. Begin to tell your obstacle. You obstacle. You. I will not because of you change my position. I will not because of you. Change my conversion. I'm telling you. Lord, is this saying something? Ta-da! In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. You can only be bold when you know that you are a fit man. If you are a fit man, let us see your hand. If you are a fit woman, let us see your hand. You may be seated. When you know that you are a fit man, you will be bold to speak to that mountain. Yes, you obstacle. You obstacle. I will not because of you change my direction. direction I'm going. I will not because of this hindrance. Change my direction. Because God may stop you a while in order to preserve you. Baba God is still saying something. He may want to stop you in order to prepare you for challenges ahead. He may want to stop you in order to keep you for a new level he may want to stop you in order to reform you because you need to be reformed. The Lord was saying to Moses, why are you crying unto me? In other words, why should you continue to pray? I have heard your prayer. 
act now. That is, act faith now. When the Lord says he has heard your prayer, this means you have something else to do besides praying. This means a time to send our petitions to God and a time to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say about that petition. Moses said to the people, march on. Even then, they could still see the rest see in the natural. When we make a decision in the natural, Satan has power over us. Even then, they could still see the rest see in the natural. But God was still saying something through the rest see. What is your rest see today? Moses acted faith and those things that were against him began to work for him. When you act faith, there is good health in sickness. When you act faith, there is success in action. When you act faith, there is freedom in yoke. Look at the picture as he was trapped between the Red Sea and the pursuing Egyptian soldiers until the eyes of his faith were opened. The opening of our eyes of faith is the silencing of our fears. In the dark, we are bound to be frightened. Tell your neighbor, in the dark, we are bound to be frightened. When you live in the natural, you live by what you see, what you hear, what your circumstances look like. This is the situation many of you are today. You are frightened because you are in the dark. The clearer sight we have of the power of heaven, the less we fear the calamities, the troubles, the circumstances, those things that are against you. In other words, the more you see those who are with you, <laughs> protecting you, fighting for you, the less you fear those who are against you. The less you fear the poverty, the less you fear the sickness, the less you fear isolation, the less you fear frustration, depression. People of faith, listen to this. God speaks strength and courage through our troubles and problems. Tell your neighbor, God speaks strength and courage through our troubles and problems. If you know this, when trouble comes, promotion comes, your testing qualifies you for promotion. Your promotion qualifies you for rewards. You never confess failure, but you live in the failure realm. You never confess sickness, but you are living in a sickness realm. This shows that we are Christians in profession. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Are you there? For everyone born of God overcomes the world. 
This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. What are you going through as a man of faith? Ask your neighbor, what are you going through as a man of faith? Do not forget that you have a place in the believer's authority. Let me take you to the book of Luke 10, verse 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all, let someone say all, all. the power of enemy. Nothing will harm you. It is natural that we should live in power. Oh. I want to salute. <laughs> it is a normal thing as a Christian that you should function in power and authority. To know God's presence is to know God's authority. To know God's present is to know God's power. No God, no power. No God, no authority. As for me, I am taking my place in the believer's authority. What is my place? I can contact God in the name of Jesus. I can contact him. I have access. I can contact Baba God in the name of Jesus. Whenever you are faced with a trying situation which tends to challenge your faith, remember to take your work, your, your place in the believer's authority. The father loves me just as he does any of his children. Because of this, whatever I say here shall be said in heaven. Because of this, whatever I lose here shall be lost in heaven. Let someone say, the father lost me just as he does any of his children. When you know you have a place in the believer's authority, you now begin to compare yourself to others. Ah, yes, I saw one lesser jeep. I'm going to buy it. You begin to run, you want to buy it? Hey, look at this suit. I'm going to buy the same. Hey, I'm going to do this. There is a star in the town now. I'm going to do the same. Because you don't have a place in the believer's authority. Every true Christian has their own method. If you know you have a place in the believer's authority, every mountain shall be leveled for your sake. Stand up, stand up right now. Begin to confess that every mountain shall be leveled for my sake. For my sin, every mountain shall be leveled. For my sin, every hill, every hill will become plain. For my sin, begin to confess this right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Lord says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes, scorpions, and nothing, nothing. The Lord Almighty 
has leveled every mountain for your sake. Yeah. Every hill shall become plain for your sake. Yeah. Lift up your voice with faith in your heart. Right now, begin to ask God to open the eyes of your faith. Say, open the eyes of my faith that I may see his protecting hand that I may know God's will consigning my situation. Prayer. Ask him to open your heart. Open my heart to your word. Open my heart to your spirit. Prayer. Élève ta voix et demande au Seigneur qu'il ouvre ton cœur à la foi, qu'il ouvre ton cœur à son esprit. Priez. Pray for the nation, pray for the universe. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Love for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God's government and authority are incontestable. His power and majesty are enough to support his authority. Tell your neighbor. That is, when Jesus says yes, no. Right now, give thanks to God. Give thanks to Him. He has promised He will not fail. He has promised you that every mountain shall be leveled. He has promised you that every hill shall become plain. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat after me. Father, I'm a sinner. Je suis un pécheur. I need you J'ai besoin de toi. as my Lord and Savior. Comme mon Seigneur et Sauveur. I need you J'ai besoin de toi. as my partner. Comme mon partenaire. I need you J'ai besoin as de toi. my Redeemer, Comme mon Redempteur. my Savior. Mon Sauveur. Come into my life. Viens dans ma vie. Enter my soul. Entre dans mon âme. Wash péché. away my sin. Lave mes péchés. With your precious blood in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to the family of God. Amen. We love you. Blessed be the Lord God. abide in us and we abide in this. Thank you, Lord. Remember, the best is yet to come. Emmanuel, if God is with us, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to take this message your condition. Let someone say my condition. condition. The question, what is your condition? Because of our condition, we cannot reason well. We lose focus. What is my condition? What is your condition? Let's quickly look at the book of Matthew 4. Viewers all over the world, 
Where can you go from his presence? It's everywhere, inside you, within, outside. What you are thinking, he knows. Hallelujah. Matthew 4. Let's quickly look at our Savior here. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and uh, 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. That was his condition at that time. He was hungry. And you know what it means? Because Satan realized this. Knowing that Jesus was hungry, Satan tempted him with bread. Satan uses our situation to tempt us. What is your situation? Are you sick? Satan will now begin to talk to you. That sickness you have, remember that man died of that sickness. That situation you are in is a generational cause. Satan uses our situation to tempt us. Keep talking to you through that situation. Remember, no one has ever got to a certain position in your family. That is why you have not got there. You keep talking to you. I mean, Satan uses our situation to detract us from running the straight race with God. You want to be faithful to God. You want to be kind. You want to be nice. You want to be honest. But this situation does not allow you. You want to be a obedient child. You know the right thing. You know you are created for the glory of God. You know. You know the right thing is to live for God. But because of your situation, you keep lying. You have to lie. You know where you are working. You must do this, do that. Satan uses our situation to detract us from running the straight race. The straight race But because of your situation, you keep going this way, going that way. Today, you are born again. Hallelujah. You answer altar call. But next month again, when they call altar call, you come out. You say, I want to rededicate myself. Now you have done something. You know you are no more a child of God. <sighs> Jesus, forgive me. You are born again today. Another time, you want to rededicate yourself. That is not straight trace. In verse 4, but he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus said to him here yeah, that man shall not live by bread alone me I may be hungry but I am not anxious about food no doubt about that I'm very very hungry but I'm not anxious the problem we have now we are anxious when you are poor and anxiously in need of blessing, you will not mind the source of your supplies. Whether from God or from Satan, you will take it. This is God. My God forever and ever. 
and will show me my way until death. Tell your neighbor, this is God. My God forever and ever. And will show me the way unto death. Stand up and tell your neighbor, this is God. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. My God. Forever and, ever. forever and ever and he will show me will show the way, way unto death. Death. death you may be seated <laughs> Jesus said to him man shall not live by bread alone by what this is God by word of God. This is God. The step of a good man are led by God and is happy in his way. When you are poor and anxiously in need of blessing, you will not mind the source of your supplies, whether from God or Satan, you will take it. This is the problem you people are facing today. That's why you're wrong. Fail to understand that a man may be poor and yet be a friend of God. A man may want bread and yet be a candidate of heaven. A man may be sick in body and yet be a favorite of heaven. Tell your neighbor, you should not be misled. I can hear you. You should not be misled by your condition. Because a man may be poor and yet be a friend of God. The mind of a man plans his way, but the law shows him what to do. We should not be misled by our condition. The rich must not concentrate on his wealth, while the poor should not concentrate on his poverty. Tell your neighbor, the rich should not concentrate on his wealth. Why the poor should not concentrate on his poverty. <sighs> because you are sick. The sick should not concentrate on their sickness. If you want to serve God with truth and faith, poor should not concentrate on their poverty. Rich should not concentrate on their wealth. Tell your neighbor, the rich must not concentrate on their wealth. I can hear you. I can hear you. Why the poor should not concentrate 
on their poverty, the sick should not concentrate on their sickness. If they want to serve God in truth and faith, Let me quickly take you in conclusion to the book of Colossians 3, verse 1 to 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Are you there? Listen to what Christ is saying. If you claim that you are raised with Christ, mm, seek those things that are above. You say you are raised with Christ. Oh, yes, you are raised with Christ. Then seek those things that are above. That is, let your mind rise and seek things that are above so that you will be comforted under your present situation. If you seek those things that are above, no matter the situation you are in, that will not break your joy. Will not break your joy. Because the Bible says in the book of John 14, verse 27, it says, The peace I give, not as the world gives it. The peace that God gives is put for all good. That is, those things God gives is put for all goods. That is, everything about it is just too good. The back of it is good. The front of it is good. Left is good. Right is good. In the face of difficulty, that thing will stand by you. Not that kind of peace that will leave you in the face of trouble. Why the, the one that the world gives is time bound. I want to encourage you in this difficult time that Jesus is our hope. In this difficult time, Jesus is our hope. Yeah. If Jesus is your hope, let your mind rise and seek things that are above so that you will be comforted under the present situation. Whether your situation is this or when you seek When you seek things that are above, you will not base faith on your improvement after prayer. In the name of Jesus, 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 I want bread, I want bread. As a Christian, Jesus knows the best. The bread may not be the best for you. If I'm talking to you there, let me see your hand. It honors Jesus to believe in him, even why every sense contradicts him. I want to move, Lord Jesus. Help me to move this monte in the name of Jesus. Move this monte for me. And each time I open my eyes, the monte is still there. If truly I'm a fake man, whether Jesus moved this monte or not, is my God. Whether he moved this monte or not, is my Savior. 
Whether he move this mountain or not, is my redeemer. Whether he move this mountain or not, is my But what is happening to you? Each time your mountain seems not to move, you stop running a straight race again. You begin to look for alternative. You pray less. You fast less. Instead of praying the more, fast the more. Tell your neighbor it is never proper. To base faith on our improvement after prayer. I know you are prepared now to receive. These are things you need to know. If truly you are a Christian, your situation sometimes may be to preserve you, to prepare you for the challenges ahead. It may be to stop you a while. Cancer stop many from drinking alcohol. Cancer. And they get to doctor, doctor say, ah, you cannot spend two, two weeks. Eh? Doctor, you say what? Ah, this is it, look at this. If you live two weeks more, <laughs> I have never said anybody that still continue to live above two weeks with this condition. Doctor, well, well, tell me what to do now. What can I do? I, I, my children is there. My house, my money, I suffer. I'm the only person in my family. I'm the, I'm the only person, I'm the breadwinner in the family. Doctor. No, 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 take it easy. I suffer, I suffer, I suffer, I suffer. No, no. You suffer what? You say I will die two weeks time. I'm not the one that say you will die. I say this thing. Go and write your will. I should write what? Right we. You mean? Doctor, what will I do? Yes. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Eh? If that will solve the problem. If you stop it, that cancer will gradually, it will not increase again. Ah. Smoking, drinking, that is the end. That is the end. Let him call my, my child. Hello, hello. You just help me. I don't want to see even the carton of cigarettes every, everywhere. I, I, even right now, I hate the odor. I, I, did, I dislike it. This is what the West of God has been warning you every day, but death is now the one near here you will die brothers and sisters now you are here i want to say welcome we have different groups here today over my dead body i will never enter that synagogue thank you you are welcome your body is here today That man, that man, I will never have anything to do with the man. Me, I will never have anything to do with the man. Now, glory be to God, it's like the man is, seems to be your benefactor. Amen. You are welcome here, that man. Amen. Switch off that channel. 
I don't want to see the man. I don't want to see which one No, 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 no. Off it, off it. You are welcome. You are welcome. It is the Lord doing. It is the Lord that is nothing we can do. He who respects the power above him must be respected. So right now, what you are about to see, healing, deliverance, we have not done anything to bring about what you are about to see. All we are doing is giving back what we have been given from his generous hand. Everything come from him. Everything we have is actually only being borrowed from God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me first honor the great men of God, the servant of God here today. 오늘 하나님의 사람이 여기 계셔서 그분을 조금 높여 드리기 원합니다. And I, I thank God for their life for 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 giving their life to be used. 그분들이 하나님 앞에 쓰임 받도록 삶을 드린 거 감사드립니다. I also want to honor all the professional 그리고 또 다른 전문적인 사람들을 이 시간 존중히 대해 주시기를 원합니다. We know everything big, start little. Everything big. Start 우리가 little. 예, 우리가 이런 큰, 큰 것을 할때또 작게 시작합니다. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 감사합니다. I want you to pray for me. Just stretch your hand. Pray for me. 그래서 여러분 손을 내밀고 목사님을 위해 통성으로 기도하시겠습니다. I need your prayer. 여러분의 기도가 지금 필요합니다. 같이 기도하시겠습니다. 목사님을 위하여. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 감사합니다. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 예수님의 이름으로 기도합니다. Yes, I'm strong. Thank you. 감사합니다. Whatever situation you are going through. 여러분이 어떤 상황을 겪든지 간에. I destroy. 여러분 이것이 우리가 흙에 흙이 있습니다. Soil. On which faith grows. 그 어느 땅에 이것이 자라느냐. I don't know what you are going through. 여러분이 뭘 겪고 있는지 전 모릅니다. Has your faith been tested now? 여러, 여러분이 혹시 이런 상황을 통하여 믿음이 시험 받고 있습니까? You have been tested in the past. 그리고 또 과거에 어떤 시험을 받으셨죠? Cool down. 그런데 여러분 진정하십시오. And relax. 그리고 릴렉스 마음 편히 가지세요. The answer to your test. 다시 말씀드립니다. 여러분이 겪는 시험에 대한 해답은 is in the word of God. 하나님 말씀 안에 있습니다. Here is the word of God. 여기 하나님 말씀이 있습니다. The Bible. 성경 말씀. The answer to your test. 여러분이 겪는 시험에 대한 해답 is in the word of God. 하나님 말씀 안에 있습니다. The Bible. 성경 말씀. Is the food for your soul. 성경 말씀이 여러분의 영혼의 양식입니다. Your spiritual weapon. 그리고 여러분 영적인 무기입니다. It has healing power. 여기에 치유의 권능이 있습니다.
It has a purifying power. 아주 순결한 권능이 있습니다. It is enduring. 여기에 인내가 있습니다. It rejoices the heart. 그리고 여러분의 마음을 기쁘게 해 줍니다. It keeps us from error and sin. 그리고 이 말씀을 따라갈 때 우리의 죄가 빠지 빠지지 않도록 도와줍니다. It is profitable. 그리고 이것은 아주 유익합니다. This is the Bible. 이게 성경입니다. So this will lead us to our title today. 오늘 이제 말씀 내용을 다루겠습니다. Situation strengthen one's faith. 여러분의 상황이 여러분의 믿음을 강건케 합니다. The, the situation I went through today. 제가 오늘 겪은 상황도. We miss our road when we are coming. 우리가 오다가 길을 놓쳤습니다. We were looking for road. 그래서 길을 찾았습니다. That's strengthen my faith more. 그런 걸 통하여 저희 믿음이 또 자라났습니다. Situations strengthen one's faith. 상황들이 여러분의 믿음을 강하게 합니다. Whatever you do now, 여러분이 지금 무엇을 하든지, that is not in line with God's agenda. 하나님의 계획에 맞지 않는 게 있다면, that seems to prosper. 그것이 때로는 잘 되는 것 같아 보이지만 will probably 그러나 disappoint you. 나중에는 여러분을 실망케 할 것입니다. In your greatest time of need. 여러분의 큰 필요가 사건이 터질 때 말입니다. Because what I'm doing is God's agenda for me. 왜냐하면 제가 하는 것은 하나님의 계획 안에서 하는 것입니다. 지금. That is why we could share. And at the same time, my faith strengthened. 이런 걸 겪으면서 근데 동시에 또한 저희 믿음이 더 자라납니다. Because what you are doing is God's agenda for you. That is why your situation has not destroyed you before coming here. 여러분이 있는 상황이 하나님 계획 안에 있기 때문에 여러분이 지금 열망받지 않고 이곳에 왔습니다. The ups and downs. 여러분의 삶의 오르막과 내리막들. We see in the world today. 그리고 이 세상의 오르막 내리막들 여러 가지 봅니다. Are practical examples of no follow up on God's agenda. 네, 이러한 세계적인 문제 오르막 내리막들이 하나님의 계획을 따라가지 않기 때문에 나오는 증상들입니다. You are worried. 여러분이 걱정하고 있어. And upset. 그리고 짜증내고 화내요. About many things. 여러 가지에 화나요. Your business is not doing well. Your family is not doing well. Your health challenges and so on and so forth. 여러분의 집안에 어려움이 있거나 여러분의 건강에 어려움이 있거나 여러분의 직장에 어려움이 있거나 등등. Let me take you to this uh, book of John. 요한복음 말씀을 잠시 보시겠습니다. Are you there? John 16. 요한복음 16장. Let me just read the last text there. 여기에 마지막 내용을 읽어드리겠습니다. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. Take heart. I have overcome. 요한복음 16장 33절입니다. 이것을 너에게 이르는 것은 너희로 내 안에서 평안을 누리게 하려 함이라 세상에서는 너희가 환난을 당하나 담대하라 내가 세상을 이기었노라 That you are on God's agenda 여러분이 하나님의 계획 안에 있을 때 That you depend on God 하나님을 여러분이 의지하죠 To, to dependent 그리고 전적으로 의지합니다 Upon God 하나님께 That does not mean you will not be touched. 그러나 여러분이 그렇게 하나님을 전적으로 의지해도 어려움이 절대로 없다는 건 아닙니다. Sickness will test you. 왜냐하면 사단이 여러분을 시험할 겁니다. A ship will test you. 어려움이 여러분에게 시험을 줄수 있습니다. 
tribulation, but they cannot destroy you. 환란 등등 있지만 결코 그런 것이 여러분을 무너뜨릴 수 없습니다. They cannot destroy you. 여러분을 파괴시킬 수 없습니다. According to John 16 verse 33. 요한복음 16장 33절의 말씀에 의하면 In this world 이 세상에는 there will be tribulation. 환란이 있으나 cheer up. 그러나 담대하라. Cheer up me to have confidence. 담대하라는 것은 자신감을 가지라는 겁니다. Hope. 소망 가지라. Cheer up. 담대하라. I have overcome the world. 주님 말씀하시듯 내가 세상을 이기었노라. Mean tribulation will test you. 환란이 여러분을 시험을 줄 것입니다. It will test you. 여러분을 시험케 할 겁니다. Sickness, disease, whatever you call it, will test you. 질병이나 어떤 아픔이 무엇이든지 여러분을 시험할 겁니다. But cannot destroy you. 그러나 여러분을 멸망시키지 못합니다. Whatever that brought you here today. 여러분이 무슨 이유로 간에 오늘 여기 오셨든지 간에. Whatever that brought you here. 여러분이 무슨 이유로 여기 오셨든지 간에. I'm right by saying whatever that brought you here. That brought us here, including me. 저도 마찬가지에 무엇이든지 우리가 여기 지금 다 모였습니다. Because everyone has limitation. 왜냐하면 모든 사람은 한계가 있습니다. You are because I am. I am because you are. 내가 있는 건 당신이 있어서도 있고 당신인 건또 내가 같이 존재하는 겁니다. That is, there's something I cannot do. You do for me. You translate for me. 즉, 제가 지금 못하는 걸 자매님이 통역해 주고 있습니다. I cannot stand here talking and translate for myself. 왜냐하면 내가 말하고 내가 혼자 통역할 수 없습니다. That is my weakness. 그게 저의 연약함입니다. You, you are sitting down listening to me. 여러분은 거기 앉으셔서 듣고 계십니다. I'm talking to you. 저는 여러분께 말하고 있어요. I cannot sit down at the same time. 그런데 여러분께 말하면서 동시에 거기 앉을 수는 없어요 제가. You two cannot stand here talking. 그리고 여러분이 여기 와서 설 수는 없어요. So my weakness is I cannot stand here at the same time sit down. That is my weakness. 그러므로 제가 지금 갖고 있는 연약함은 제가 여기 서 있으면서 동시에 말하면서 거기 또 앉을 수는 없습니다. Everyone has limitation. 모든 사람은 한계가 있습니다. This is why I say whatever that brought you here today. 그렇기 때문에 제가 말씀드리죠 무슨 일든지 간에 여러분이 여기 오신 건. Whatever that brought us here today. 무슨 이유든 간에 우리가 여기 온 것은. I came here because I want to talk to someone. 제가 오늘 여기 온 것은 누군가에게 제가 말을 하고 싶어서 왔습니다. I want to talk to someone in Korea. 여기 한국에 오신 여러분께 말씀을 드릴 게 있습니다. Yes, that is what brought me here. 그래서 제가 여기 왔습니다. Whatever that brought you here. 네, 여러분이 무슨 이유로 여기 오신 것은. Is only a weapon God uses to preserve you. 여러분의 어떤 상황이든지 여기 오신 것은 하나님이 여러분을 더 지키시려고 주신 무기입니다. If I'm not here today, who know what will have happened to me in Nigeria? 만약에 제가 여기 오지 않았었다면 나이지리아에서 제가 무슨 일을 갈수 있지 누가 알겠습니까? So I'm here to be preserved. 근데 제가 여기 와 있습니다. Your sickness is made to preserve you. 그리고 여러분의 아픔도 그 이유로 여기 온거 여러분을 지켜주는 역할이 있습니다. To reform you. 여러분을 새롭게 할 것입니다. It may equally be to keep you for a new level in life. 여러분의 이런 아픔이 어떤 일을 왕 건지 여러분을 지켜주시고 아니면 하나님께서 그걸 통한 새로운 차원으로 가게 하실 것입니다. As a Christian, whatever level we find ourselves, we only believe the best is yet to come. 우리가 그리스도인으로서는 우리가 어떤 상황이든지 간에 최고의 것이 올 것을 믿습니다. So, situation strengthen our faith. 다시 말씀드립니다. 우리가 겪고 있는 상황이 우리의 믿음을 더 강하게 해줍니다. As a Christian, 크리스천에게는요. Don't despair. 
낙심하지 마세요. At all. 전혀. Unfavorable circumstances. 아니면 안 좋은 상황이 있더라도. I mean unfavorable situation. 아니면 안 좋은 어떤 환경 상황. Are the argument Satan uses to make people of God question their sonship. 그안 좋은 상황을 가지고 사단이 여러분이 하나님의 아들 딸인 걸 자꾸만 의심하도록 만듭니다. Just through the sister. Thank you. I'm happy. I discover you. Thank you. So I want to join you now. Okay. Unfavorable circumstances. 안 좋은 상황들. Are the argument. 그런 것은. Satan uses. 사단이 사용합니다. To make people of God. 하나님의 백성을. Question their sonship. 자기가 하나님의 아들이고 딸인 걸 의문하게 합니다. The devil wants us to curse God. 마귀는 우리로 인하여 하나님을 자꾸만 의문하게 합니다. Why on that pain? Trouble, temptation. Devil wants us to curse God. Yes, to look at God in a bad light. 그래서 우리가 어떠한 시험을 겪거나 어려움을 겪을 때 사단은 우리로 인하여 하나님을 나쁘게 보도록 유도합니다. Those who bless God in, in trouble, in tribulation, prove their sonship. 그러나 여러분이 하나님의 자녀라면 어려움 가운데서도 하나님을 속죽하십시오. Yeah. <웃음> Come on. Oh my God. I need to take my water too. Oh yes. Excuse me. 실례합니다. すみません. <웃음> Thank you. Thank you. So those who bless God. 하나님을 송축하는 자들. In trouble, in tribulation. 어려움과 환난 중에서도. Proof their sonship. 하나님의 자녀인 것을 증명하는 자들입니다. Yes. 그렇습니다. Proof their sonship. 자녀인 걸 증명합니다. 어려움 중에서도 주님을 송축할 때. Don't allow your situation to rule you. 여러분의 어려운 상황이 여러분을 다스리게 하지 마십시오. The rich must not concentrate on their wealth. 부유한 자들은 자신의 갖고 있는 부에 너무 주목하지 마십시오. Because a man can be poor and yet be a friend of God, a candidate of heaven. 왜냐하면은 가난한 사람이라 할지라도 하나님의 친구가 될수 있고 천국 가는 사람이 될수 있습니다. Stop thinking about your situation. Don't allow your situation to rule you because a man can be sick in body and yet be a friend of Jesus. 여러분의 상황에 너무 주목하지 마세요. 어떤 사람이 질병이 있다 할지라도 그 사람이 하나님의 친구일 수 있습니다. You see people lamenting complaining whining 어떤 사람들이 자꾸만 슬퍼하고 불평하고 자꾸 징얼징얼댑니다. and questioning their faith in the presence of others because of their situation 그리고 자기의 그 상황 때문에 사람들 앞에서 자기의 그 믿음이 의문이 간다고 합니다. instead of honoring god 그러지 말고 with their problem 문제가 빠르게 you honor God. 하나님을 높이십시오. See. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. 예수님 감사. Thank you Jesus. 예수님 Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. That is Christian. 이게 but 크리스찬. others. Uh, 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 uh. 근데 다른 사람들은 감사하지 않고 응. 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 이럽니다. Amen. <laughs> okay, you teach me this language. My God. That is Instead of honoring God, 하나님을 존중하기보다는 with their situation, 그들의 상황을 가지고 before men, 사람 앞에서 as Daniel did. 여러분 다니엘처럼 하십시오. As Daniel, 
Let him take you to the lion there and ask Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> ask Daniel. Daniel will tell you what happened in the lion den. Ask Paul and Sala. They will tell you what happened in the prison. They were singing, they were singing, they were singing, and they are chain hands and legs. <laughs> Thank you. They were singing, they were singing, they were crazy, wonderful atmosphere. Why the chain, leg, and hands? Because they knew there is something beyond their situation. Better. Even if God allows it as a trial, 하나님께서 어떠한 시련을 허락하실지라도. That is, if God allow your situation as a trial, we must not think it strange and doubt our God. Because of your situation, don't cut off your dependence on God. Your duty to God. Your communion with God. Yes. Because we are here with different situation. You are saved because of that sickness, you are not a child of God. No! Because you are poor, you say you are not a child of God, your prayer is not answered. No! These are the things Satan used to take you out of your position. Your enemy thinks they are hurting you. Not knowing that their hatred, their evil plan, their envy, jealousy are weapon God uses to preserve you. 여러분의 원수들이 여러분을 증오하거나 여러분을 힘들게 하거나 여러분을 시기할 때 미처 원수들이 모르는 건 뭐냐면 그거를 하나님께서 여러분을 강하게 만드는 무기로 사용하십니다. There is one person who can get you out of God's way. 그런데 여러분이 하나님의 뜻에서 벗어나도록 하는 한 사람이 있습니다. That is yourself. 그게 여러분 자신입니다. Sickness cannot get you out of God's way. 여러분이 질병이 있다고 하나님의 뜻에서 벗어나지 않습니다. Your enemy, Satan, demon cannot get you out of God's way. 여러분의 원수나 심지어 마귀, 귀신도 여러분 하나님의 뜻에서 벗어나게 할수 없습니다. There is one person. 그러나 한 사람. Who can get you out of God's way? 여러분을 하나님의 뜻을 벗어나게 하는 사람 한 사람. That is yourself. 그게 여러분 자신입니다. Let me take you to the book of Luke. 누가 보고 말씀 보시겠습니다. The book of Luke 22 verse 32. 누가 보금 22장 32절입니다. So here we end our message for today. And uh, we can now move around to attend to the sick. 우리가 이제 설교 내용을 이 말씀 읽고 마치고 아픈 사람들을 위하여 기도해 드리겠습니다. We believe God will give us the grace to continue. I should not talk as if I knew. We we'll continue. 하나님께서 내일 우리가 계속할 수 있는 은혜를 주실 것입니다. Oh yes. Let's go to the book of Luke 22 verse 32. But I have prayed for you, Simon, 
that your faith may not fail. Shimona, 내가 너를 위하여 너의 믿음이 떨어지지 않기를 기도하였다. What is good for Simon in the Bible is good for all, equally good for all. Simon Pedro의 기준 이런 말씀 우리 모두에게 해당될 수 있습니다. Yes, I say what is good for Simon in the Bible. Equally good for all. 다시 말씀드립니다. 시몬에게 주신 이러한 말씀이 우리 모두에게 해당됩니다. He said, "I pray you, Simon, that your faith will not fail." 주님 말씀하셨죠, 시몬아, 너의 믿음이 떨어지지 않기를 내가 기도했다. May there be something, something that will challenge our faith. 그런 의미는 뭐냐? 뭔가 우리의 마음에 믿음에 도전을 주거나 어려움을 주는 게 있다는 겁니다. Something that will test our faith. 우리의 믿음을 시험하는 게 뭔가 있습니다. This is what we are going through now. 여러분이 그런 것들을 겪고 있죠. It's a prophetic word that a time like this, a time for sickness to test, a time for affliction to test, poverty to test. 이럴 때 질병이나 가난이나 이런 것이 so why are we lamenting? 그런데 왜 우리가 왜 서글팝니까? When sickness come to test. 우리에게 질병 소리를 시험할 때. Why are we mourning? 왜 우리가 그때 불평합니까? When hardship come as a Christian to test. 우리는 크리스천으로서 그런 시험을 겪을 때. When the Bible say, I pray your faith will not fail. 성경 말씀이 기록됐습니다. 내가 너를 기여하여 기도한다. 너의 믿음이 떨어지지 않도록. He never promised to keep us away from trouble. 예수님께서는 한 번도 우리의 삶에 어떤 문제도 없다 하지 않으셨습니다. He never promised to keep us away from tribulation. 그리고 어떤 환란도 우리의 삶에 없다고 하지 않으셨습니다. What you are going through, he never promised to keep you away from it. 여러분이 뭘 겪고 있는 거 하나님께서 그런 일 절대로 없을 거다라고 약속하지 않으셨습니다. He never promised to keep us away from all this hardship, trouble. 이런... But he promised to see us through if we are with him. 주님께서는 우리에게 이런 아픔이나 어려움이 결코 없을 거라고 환난이 없을 거라고 약속하신 게 아니라 주님께서 약속하신 거는 너희가 이것을 뚫고 I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, I should go and attend to the sick one. Thank you. 성령님께서 말씀하시는 게 이제 설교를 마치고 아픈 분들을 위하여 사역하러 가십니다. 감사합니다. I think I, I need to chip in a word. Before we go for healing. 네, 우리가 아픈 사람들 치유 기도를 하기 전에 한 말씀 드릴 게 있습니다. Healing, deliverance, and all of God's blessing are hindered by the way and manner we go about issue of money. 이러한 치유와 이러한 축사는 우리가 돈을 어떻게 관리하고 대하느냐에 따라 이게 방해가 될 수도 있습니다. I repeat again. 다시 말씀드립니다. Healing, deliverance, and all of God's blessing. 치유와 축사 그리고 하나님의 모든 축복들. Are hindered today. 오늘 방해받을 수도 있어요. By the way and manner. We go about issue of money, 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 money. 우리가 돈, 돈, 돈에 대하여 어떤 자세로 가는지에 따라 방해가 될 수도 있습니다. No one can give money from his heart before healing. 어느 누구도 치유받기 전에는 중심에서부터 돈을 내지 않습니다. No one can give money from his heart before healing. 치유받기 전에는 어느 누구도 중심에서부터 돈을 내지 않습니다. Anybody that give money before healing is given that money 
on condition. Heal me. Have money. 누구든지 이렇게 치유를 받기 전에 돈을 낼 때는 조건이 있죠. 내가 이걸 낼 테니까 나를 고쳐 주세요. And the healing and God's blessing should not be exchanged by money. 하나님의 이런 치유는 돈으로 교환하는 것이 아닙니다. When we give freely. 우리가 거저 줄 때. As we have been given freely. 하나님 앞에서 거저 받았듯이. God will raise his people to bless us. 하나님께서 주의 백성을 일으키셔서 축복하게 하실 것입니다. Abundantly. 풍성하게. Anything that is not come from the heart is a sin. 왜냐하면은 이 마음에서 믿음에서 나오지 않는 거는 다 죄입니다. If someone give money before healing, it's not given it from his heart. It's given it to receive healing. 다시 말씀드립니다. 누군가 치유받기 전에 이렇게 돈을 낼 때는 마음 중심에서 내는 게 아니라 치유받고자 하는 조건적인 것으로 냅니다. And anything that is not from the heart is a sin. 그리고 마음 중심에서 나오지 않은 거는 죄입니다. So this is why it's so difficult to receive healing deliverance today. 그래서 오늘날 이러한 치유와 축사 받기가 어려워질 수 있습니다. All these God's blessings are hindered. 이러한 것 때문에 하나님의 축복이 방해받을 수 있습니다. By the manner and the way we go about money. 우리가 돈을 어떤 자세로 다루느냐에 따라 방해가 될수 있습니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to do my own without music. Without music, without drum. To show I'm rejoiced with you. Uh, no. Please. You are using your excitement to disturb me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Be wise all over the world. You can see me without drum, without uh, music. <laughs> no, I'm dancing to the viewers. You may be seated, thank you. Hallelujah. I know why you are dancing. And I know why you are happy. Yes, because there is food and everything on your table there. <laughs> Can somebody show me the table where there is everything you are looking for? Where is it? Where is that table here? Where? The table is in your heart. Ah, uh, table inside your heart. Does the Bible say the table is in your heart? It says it will set a table before you, not your heart. Why is that table? Because well, the way you behave, as if you know and you are even seeing the table before you, you are just waiting for go so that you start taking what is on the table. Hallelujah. You are happy. You don't mean it. God gave us faith to believe. It means that faith comes from God. He gives us faith to believe. If the faith from God has not come, there is no way you can't believe. So it's like a, in his faith, you are thanking him for a more glorious answer to your prayer. If I'm talking to you. That is the way. The way you behave. You are just in his fear. You are thanking him. For a more glorious answer. To your prayer. Than you can imagine. That is the way. 
The joy is still there. But you are quiet. Let me see you smile now. Mm. How can somebody smile when there is nothing? What are you smiling about? Tell me the table. Unless God gives you faith to believe. You can't just say, I believe. Mm. Believe without faith. You must be given faith to believe. Listen to what I say. In his faith, we thank him for a more glorious answer to our prayer. Tell your neighbor, in his faith, we thank him for more glorious answer to our prayer. In his faith, no, not your faith, in his faith, I thank him for a more glorious answer to my prayer than I can imagine. That is how it is. Yes, oh my God. You can know if you have made it. What you're standing on, not your feeling, but his way. You can know you are saved. People deceive themselves, I'm saved, and the child of God. You can know. Sometimes people just allow emotion to blind their reason. Emotion to blind what? Their reason. People say, ah, people are dancing, let them show, join them dance. If I'm not dancing, they will complain. Let them join them. No, you should not join them. You must have reason to dance. How many of you join them down? Ah, there are many. How many of people here join the people, join them down? Ah, there are many here. You are joined them. Oh my God. How many of us there join them down? Ah, there are too many there. Look at the many people that join them. Not that you re- dance, you join people dance. <laughs> Hallelujah. See? Lord, don't let emotion blind my reason. I can't hear you. Again, what you see, what you hear, what situation look like, feeling, what you see. Emotion feeling, what you see? Eh? Eh? People are done. <coughs> Let him join them. Ah, people are falling. I will not fall. I will not fall. Let them stand where. It's about to get to me. <coughs> even some people will even turn back to me. I keep turning their face. They keep turning back. Lord, don't let emotion. Blind my reason. What is the reason of coming here? Salvation. Jesus is the reason. What's the reason? Jesus is my reason of coming here. But emotion, feeling what you see, some people when they see it, they will begin to look at the style of attire people wear, the style of air, air line, the style of Spectacle, the style of tie. After during the break, they will go to the garage and look at this, the, the kind of beautiful car, flashy car. They say, oh, this car is latest. Let me just write the number, okay? Let me take the picture. I must get this car this year. Is that the reason why you are here? No. Mm. Lord, no. don't let Emotion. Blind my reason. My reason. Jesus is my reason of coming here. Jesus is our reason. Maybe while you are sitting down, your stomach just torn. You feel some sharp pain. Your neighbor will say, what's wrong? What can I do for you? Ah, I don't know what is wrong with me. Because of that, everything about you changed. Why should this thing happen to me in the church? 
Ah, these people have, they have traced me here. <laughs> Who are the people that used to trace you? Huh? The door is locked. They trace you. No, they have traced me. They come here again. This is how the thing used to do me. They have traced me. Oh. Lord, don't let emotion blind my reason. So rise up, let's offer a prayer to our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, and abide in our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. And abide in our heart. Teach us, Lord, the psalm of faith and restore our calm in Jesus Christ's name. Hmm. Listen to that. Restore our calm. Despite our doubt and fear. Mm, think about that. It's a word to think about. Sometimes they say, Jesus Christ, this is it, this is it, this is it. Oh, what you say does not have meaning. You just said to reason, think of what you are saying. Come, Lord Jesus and abide in our hearts. Teach us the sound of faith. Restore our calm despite our fear and doubt. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Remain silent. At this hour, listen with yourself what you need to continue at this moment. You need the gift of eyes that see. Of ears that hear what Jesus is telling us. Not just looking at me. I put on shirt with white, with red, with this. Look at the way he behaves. Look at, he goes this way, he goes that way. He says, Young man, I don't know. I thought he's an old man. Each time I see him on the man TV, he look old. But look at it. Oh my God, this is my first time. These are emotion. What you can see, what you hear. All you need now, the gift of eyes to see. Not these eyes. The gift of eyes that see, of ear that ear, what Jesus is telling us. Repeat after me. Gift of eyes that see, of ear, that ear, what God is telling us. Again. Again. In Jesus Christ's name. When you have this, you cannot begin to thank him for a more glorious answer to your prayer than you can imagine. Because it's not possible for you to begin to thank him for what you have not received. Thank him for answering your prayer when you have not offered the prayer. And you are thanking, thank him for answering my prayer. Whereas you have not even offered the prayer, you have not even seen, and you are thanking him for what? Unless you are able to know and see 
the one that is talking to you here, then you can obey what I'm saying. The man talking to you is different from God's talking to you. When God talks to you, you hear, you listen. But when a man talking to you, mm, mm, what is he saying? This is, you need now the gift of eyes that says, of ear that ear what God is telling us. Jesus must be honored. Think about us. It's not a man. It's a spirit. God is spirit, and His what you must do so in what? Not this eyes, not this ear. To honor Him, not this eyes, not this ear. You need the gift of eyes that see, of ear that ear what He's saying. This us must be honor. Can Jesus be honored when you are looking at him by his side, hear him by your ear? How can he be honored? You are waiting now to see him with your side. Only faith pleases him. Only faith sees him. Only faith, hear him. Now, I'm talking to your spirit. In your spirit, begin to thank him for a more glorious answer to your prayer. Thank him in his faith. Thank him in his faith. Ask in his faith. Begin to thank him. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own I speak I You are not here to begin to pray. Talk to the air. God has prepared you in advance. God prepare you in advance. Before he put you in the journey to come here. You cannot just wake up in the morning and say, Oh, I'm coming to the church, the church of Holy Ghost. 
a church that the foundation is the Holy Spirit, and you wake up, you start that thought in your heart, begin to think of, oh, I must go to this church, I must go to this. The moment you begin that thought, the fight between darkness and lies started. It's not the day you start the thought of coming here that you came. You have started, some of you start a year, two years, and you have been wrestled with the for against, for against. Immediately you have the, oh, I must come to this church. Trouble started. Fight between the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit. You will not go. You will not go. In your, ne- in your dream, nightmare, fight. <laughs> Just to stop you. Even the business you plan to go and do, hey, and a lot of things started just to stop you. But at last. How <laughs> uh, can you be here now and begin to doubt? After you have fought the battle, and you are here at last, and you are beginning to... Uh, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Uh, what is going to happen? Wait, you'll see. <laughs> hmm? After you have fought the battle, a lot of battle. Lots. When I have been fighting this battle for the past two to three, four years before finally come here. The table is there. The table has been set before you. So, if you are here at last, your prayer should be, thank you, Lord, for more glorious answer to my prayer. Right now, you open your list and say, in your faith, faith, I thank you you for more glorious glorious answer answer to my prayer. To my prayer. 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 Open your list. Open your list. In your presence, in your presence, I am content. In your presence, I am content. In your presence, there is life. Expressions of your Revelations of your power and might In your presence I can bring A love song offering I'm in the presence of my King In your presence your presence I am content Lord Jesus in your presence I am content I am content Lord in your presence there is life expressions of your Your power and mind, Lord Jesus, in your presence I can bring a love song offering. I'm in the presence of my King. 
In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 We was all over the world. Amen. Amen. We was all over the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. So, right in your heart, in his faith, begin to give thanks to God for a more glorious answer to your prayer. More than you can imagine. Not to begin to say, hear me, hear me, hear me. No, just begin to give thanks to him. For you to be here, the job is half done. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, the job is half done. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Mm, for you to just enter here and sit down, you have scored 50%. Yeah. I know what woman wants is unlimited. I know what you want. But I just assure you, 50%. So just 50% for you, because God prepare you in advance. For you to sit down, and those viewers are anywhere they are, watching this telecast, under the influence of our voice, 50%. The job is half done. Amen. So if the job is half done, the other fifty percent who will do it? God. Right now in his faith. In his faith. Say in his faith. I thank him for a more glorious answer to my prayer. More than I can imagine. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive a gift of eyes Amen. to see. Amen. Of ear Amen. to hear. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, there's need for awakening. There's need for awakening. Need to know, oh, yes, how, how do we approach it? This is uh, apostolic ministry that uh, you cannot touch anything without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost for your a moment, for your tongue, for your look, for your cough, for your grit. You need Holy Spirit to lead you. Hallelujah. So your attention, your attention, don't allow emotion to blind your reason. God has made friends. The relationship is about God. If you are here to make friends, please. There are many racing people are here, but reason we are here for the salvation of our soul. So please, emotion, feeling, out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Pay attention. Pay attention. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. That is why we need to hear about healing anointing. That is why we need to hear about blessing anointing. That is why you need to hear about delivering anointing. I take it again. Faith comes by hearing. That is why we need to hear about what? About healing anointing. Delivering anointing. Blessing anointing. Because the faith come by hearing. We all know Jesus always responds to those who 
put a demand on him. Always. Always respond to those who put what? Who put the mind on him. What a blessing. Teaching people who are hungry for the word. You know, when you have people that are hungry for the word and you are teaching them. What a blessing. So and I believe I'm in the midst of people that are hungry for the word. Are you one of them? I can hear you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now the job is half done now. You have scored 50%. I say you have scored 50%. If you even decide to live here now and maintain the one you have received, it's okay. So let's talk about maintainer. Hallelujah. What you have been listening to this morning, if you can meditate over it, over and over and over, this is what your enemy does not want you to hear. This is what your enemy does not want you to hear. Even many a time when you are at home and you are listening to the money TV, a lot of distraction. So the time you have to pay attention to what you hear now is always difficult for you out there. Because there are so many things to attend to. So I want to say congratulations once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us pray for the viewers. We want them to have the right focus. Because you know what it means if you are out there, a lot of, in the midst of confusion, distraction. Here you switch off your set. You don't want to hear anything. You have so much grace. But in the, over there, our viewers are at home, anywhere they are. We know the situation they are in. So many distractions. So let's pray for them and ask God to give them the right focus. In the midst of all oh, right focus, stretch your hand. Let's pray together. Viewers all over the world. We want to be like Jesus in our hearts. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is disturbing you right now, you know, our heart is always going up, down, up, down, up, down. Think about this, think about that. Leave it for God. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. Right focus in the name of Jesus. Begin to receive a healing heart. 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 In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Faith comes by hearing. That is why we need to hear about what? Healing anointing. And once you hear it, put a demand on it. When the healing is going on, put a demand on it. If you are sick, you'll be healed. Blessing anointing, when you hear it being pronounced on a person, you immediately, you need blessing, put a demand on that blessing anointing, you'll be blessed. How do we put the demand? That is, get connected. Just believe. If this actually go in a true processing, true processing means free we are given and free we shall give you. Without money exchange. Though, deliverance cannot take place without God's processing. 
Healing cannot take place without God processing. Blessing can never. If somebody says, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Are you sure God's blessing or you are talking of man's blessing? If it is God's blessing, it must go through God's processing. There's a process for everything. You know, processing is more important than resorts himself. You say you are rich, okay? Rich man. How you become rich is bigger than that your rich, your resource. Processing is bigger than resort himself. How you get there is bigger than get there. This, this is the problem with people. Everybody wants to be big, want to get there. And uh, follow any way, any processing. No, the processing will help you to maintain the resource. If the processing is tampered with, if the processing is not God's processing, you will not be able to maintain that resource. So you say, oh, yes, you become rich. What processing take you to that riches matter because to maintain that riches you need that processing if it is not God processing and you get there you cannot maintain that riches it will disappoint you at the dear time you need it this is why you see people today very rich but today is poor very very rich at the time of need, the money is gone. I say, ah, the money is there. It's just it all about processing. Healing. It must go through God's processing. So processing is greater than research. What matter is processing? Tell your neighbor, what matter is processing? I can't hear you. I can hear you again and again. It's processing. It's processing. It's processing. Processing. So the manner we process our life is what is working against us or working for us. You want to get married? What is the processing of getting married to that man? Is it very in the very in line with God? Or the man is handsome, that is why you marry the man, or the man has money. If it is in line with God, you get married, that processing will stand for any challenges you have in that marriage. What can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. If processing is of God. What can separate me from the marriage? If that marriage followed God's processing, nothing can separate you. Nothing you hear from that your husband have done, your wife have done, you will examine, you still ask God. You want to know God, opinion. No matter what happened to the marriage, I still want to know God's opinion. Because God can use any foolish thing to strengthen the marriage. Your business today, you know, you jump from one business to another because of crisis. When you invested to the business and it's not yet coming, you abandon the business. You cannot, because of lust, abandon business. You can't just because of... Uh, even sickness, abandon business. You lost, you have spent money, you run bankrupt. Because of that, you can't because of those things abandon your business. You can only abandon business when God say quit. The same thing marriage. You cannot because of crisis abandon your marriage. You cannot, because of challenges, abandon your marriage. 
no matter what happened to this marriage, you cannot, because of that, abandon your marriage. Unless God say, quit. Because if the processing of your marriage is in line with God, nothing can separate you. Because sometimes God can allow foolish things in our way. Those foolish things, they are college, they are school. You need to go to school of embarrassment, school of praises, school of persecution, school of progress, school of failure. Many of you that are here today, if I have not graduated in persecution, I would like to be telling you about persecution. If I have not graduated in accusation, I would like to be telling you about accusation. If I have not gone into school of hatred, I know much about hatred. People hate me so dearly. If I have not gone through that and graduated in that, I would like to be standing to counsel you about hatred. It's just like that. Processing, tell your neighbor. It's very important. This is what Paul means. He said, what can separate me from the love of God? Can death, sickness, disease? He's talking about processing. If his love for God is in line with Scripture, you say, I'm a Christian. In line of, with Scripture, you become a Christian. Nothing can separate you. Let's say again. If your marriage is in line with God, Scripture, nothing can separate you from that marriage. Trouble will come. Disappointment will come. Failure will come. No, it will come. It will just come and strengthen the marriage. Evil sickness will come. It will just come. After that sickness, marriage will be strengthened. Disappointment will come. They will come and tell you that, ah, we saw your wife in so 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 play. Your wife is going out with this so 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 so. This so 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 so. Oh, do you see the phone number? You even see the phone number. You still need to ask God, God's opinion about the matter. You just need to ask God opinion about the matter. If God brings you to a relationship, the same God will quit you. But if you bring yourself to the relationship, you quit yourself. How you come about the marriage? You come, about, you come to the marriage by yourself, not by God. You quit when trouble comes. But when God brings you to the relationship, no matter what happens, it's the same God that will quit you when it is time. If you have not seen God, no matter what happens, you have to go through it. God's processing is the mind of God. Now you can say now that processing is greater than results, he said. If you follow the right processing and you are not getting results, don't worry. Don't worry you are about to get the mother of results. You know, that's what we call mother of miracle. You do the right thing, but yet no results. Don't be disappointed. If you have done the right thing and you're expecting the result to come, all you need to do is be patient. Look at Anna, look at Simon. You are about to get the mother of result. So look at your case. Sometimes you, are, you feel sick as a Christian. You run to God for prayer. And the more you pray, you seem the sickness is still there. You keep praying, the sickness is still there. Not that God does not hear you. God may realize that that sickness will strengthen you better. You strengthen your desire for him better than healing. And he will allow you to go through that sickness so that he can strengthen your desire and your determination for him. 
when we are sick, we keep seeking his faith, seeking his faith, fast more, fast more. But the moment we are here, relax. So when God realizes that uh, leaving you to go through the sickness will strengthen your desire for him better than when you are here. Or God may realize that uh, your situation may strengthen your desire and your determination for God to move closer to God when you have challenges, trouble. He will leave you till you are very, very strong. Too strong, then you get here. It is only concerned about the relationship. It's our relationship is what matters. Many of us are here today, what you have been asking God to do for you. Your business, you want it to prosper. It's not that God does not hear. God hear. But God realizes that uh, when your business is prosperous, you will likely not be able to sit among your people. You allow this word to start controlling you instead of the source of that word to control you. You know, when you have so much money, money will now begin to control you. You need to go to the meeting. I need to go to sign the contract. I need to do this. Instead of the source of that, the, the one who gave you the money to control you. Look at, okay, look at. Where you live today is what your possession can purchase. When you live in a village and you have money, you, you abandon the village to the city because your money has come. It's, in, it's nature, it's natural. That is human being for you. That if you are living in a village, Later, you have the business and money come. You abandon the village to the city. Me, it is this money that controlling us, not the giver. You can be very rich and still remain in that village and develop the village and give them light and be, rebuild your house and live among your people. But today, we abandon our people once the money come. We go to a better place. We look for our colleague. If you are less privileged and you are rich, you move to the privileged people. It is the, the money that controls us. We, we go into our state tour. That is it. Some churches, you see, we have to arrange for the different seat. When you just enter a place of worship, you can see that, oh, this is where big people sit. This is where privileged people sit. This is where less privileged people sit. Who is privileged before God? Who is less privileged before God? Who is rich before God? Who is famous before God? God is concerned about the soul that are saved. No matter the situation you are, you can begin to feel the presence of God by begin to have it in your mind that you are not alone. Now, like I'm here now, I am not alone. So, as I'm, if I want to say something, check me. I will not want to say anything that he will not want to hear. You have to engage him. To show that you know him that is with you, you have to be talking when someone is talking to you. When someone is addressing you, don't remain silent. Talk so that you can arrest whatever that is not pleasant. And on the phone, when you are receiving a phone call, hello, you too, that hello, you say it, you say another one in the spirit to arrest any situation, any message you want to hear. Hello, how are you? Fine. Where are you now? Mm. You, you say your prayer before you respond. That is to show you are not alone. So like you are watching me, you have to be saying your prayer. Say, this is how you will start. When you start here, 
you continue to do that. You start here, you continue to pray like we, I'm talking to you, you have to say something, begin to say something. Don't keep silent. If you are silent, your God will silent. If you talk, your God will talk. And if you are silent, we cannot place you. Mm. T.B. Joshua, how are you? You cannot place me, whether I say fine or not fine. Mm. You have to place me. I have to talk. It's still processing. We should cherish processing. Let me give you a good example of this world of processing. I want to pray for you now, but in my heart now, I'm coming to you. I begin to doubt. Will God hear this woman? I don't know. And I'm a liar. I don't think God will hear this woman. Will God hear this woman? I don't think God will hear this man. Be he, be he. God cannot hear. Because processing is wrong. The processing is wrong from here to over you. What's going through my heart? What's going through my mind? It, they are processes, we call it ingredient to make soup. If you don't have a good processing, those ingredients you put together, you can have a wonderful soup. But when you put those ingredients together, pepper soup or whatever you want to make, good one, by the time you finish cooking it, people will enjoy the soup. In the same way with prayer, the same way with your life, with the same way with whatever you will become in future. Let's say one say processing. Process. I can't hear you. Process. I can't hear you. Process. I can't hear you. Process. The processing of your life is what is affecting you today. The processing, how you started. At the beginning of those days, you say, oh, if I finish university, I will settle down, I will get this, I will get that, I will get this, I will have wife, I will have children, boy, girl, it's okay, I will settle down. But after you have had all this, yet, what you are looking for, you have not yet getting it. Say, if I travel to America, I stay there, and I walk, you walk, processing which will cherish processing than resort. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. And this processing we are talking about that are not in line with God is the food of witchcraft. When you go by a processing that is not in line with God. That is what witchcraft eat. And when you have something witchcraft will eat, it will come to you and attack you. They eat unfaithfulness. They eat disobedience. They eat hatred. They eat pride. And you are very proud. You are a proud person. Witchcraft will come to you because that is their food. Lying, you know how to lie. Witchcraft will come to you and afflict you because the food of witchcraft is lying. Disobedience, unfaithfulness, pride, self center. These are the food of witchcraft. And when you go by that processing to build your life or build your business or build your career, whatever you build with this in line with all this, you are given food for witchcraft. Witchcraft will be part of you. Let's not want to say processing. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. That's all. Cherish processing more than resort. Tell your neighbor. I can't hear you. That you are in line with God to build your career. In line with God to build your business does not mean you will not be attacked. But each attack, promotion. Take note of that. Because if I don't put that one now, you will just, hey, what this man is saying, I'm in line with God, but I'm being attacked. If you are in line with God, follow God's footstep, foothold, 
to do whatever you are doing, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, self-control, and uh, I mean humility, to build your life, to build your marriage, to build your children, there will be big attack. The bigger your attack, the greater your improvement. That is why today, when you learn that uh, ah, something happened to this man, something happened to this man, the, what you hear from people is, ah, if it is God's position, if it is God that called him, you prevail. I know last time when the accident happened in this church here, the mind of everybody is that, uh, ah, if he's called by God, no Jupiter the whole world cannot stop him. But if it's not called by God, the incident will bring him down. This is what Gamaliel said. This is a professor. He said, look, leave this man, leave this man. If what he's doing is from God, you will not be able to bring him down. Whatever you do to him, you are doing it to yourself. Oh. Leave him alone. But if what he's doing is of man origin, you will get rid of him. So that you are in line with God, you follow God step, step by step, to be your life does not mean attack, challenge it, will not come. But when they come, in challenge it, take you high. Once again, processing. Cherish processing more than, more than result. Tell your neighbor, when you want to achieve something, what you do to achieve it is better than achievement. Look at your education today. You say you're a, you're a professor, you're a graduate, you study, you face challenges. If you know what you went through to achieve the position you achieve, it is the processing that is working against us, we get it and left God behind. Because we can read and understand what we are reading. And we don't know that education is not the source, but to help us get the sources. There is what we call supernatural gifts. Human natural gift. When you have it, this human natural gift, you can come out first class, best student in the, in the school. But there's a difference between supernatural and human natural. You can be the most intelligent, the most brilliant student in the world, coming out first class, human natural. It is a supernatural that takes us to places with peace of heart. That is why it's possible today in the world to be the best in your career. Are you a, a footballer? Best footballer in the world? Uh, whatever you are doing, speaking skill, ability to inspire, you can be the best in the world and yet not believe God. Because they can do all this without God because all this can be achieved by human natural gains. How you process your document will determine the outcome. Cherish processes than results. Somebody may sit for exam for you, and you will not be the one that sit for it, and somebody will do it for you, and you come out first class. Processing, you are not the one that did the exam. You carry the certificate. Somebody have done it for you. That is wrong processing. And the processing is better, greater than the result. This is challenging we are facing today.
you say you are a Christian. Christian has a process. If all these processes are not right, and you say you are a Christian, you will confess Christianity, but you will not live life of Christian. What is the life of Christian? To be a Christian is to be content. That is not Baba. The moment you know you are not content, agree with me, you are not a Christian. Contentment. Whatever anybody become, that will not bother you. Whether you have little or you are not eat, you'll be content. Whether you have little money, you don't have money to go there, and everybody has money to go there, you'll content. The contentment is processing of a Christian. It's not how much wrong. When wrong comes, how do you handle the wrong? As a Christian, when you are wrong, your soul, your spirit will be disturbed. You are not content. You always can't day by day Tomorrow, I'm, t I'm so so here, I'm so so that I have not achieved this, I'm schooling day to day. You're always complaining. You are not content. You believe that you are being cheated. You believe there's a wishes and wizard that after you. And uh, by your prayer, when you are praying, one can know whether you're a Christian or not. If I want to know whether this man is a Christian, if I call him now to pray, through his prayer, I will know he's a Christian, he's not a Christian. How do we know Christian? Through prayer. Christian, because he's content, he may be sick and will say, thank you, Jesus. I glorify your holy name. I thank you for today. And I will continue to thank you for all what you're about to do and what you have done. Thank you. And we will begin to sin. Whereas he's sick. Because he has left everything for God. He know God know him more than himself. But when you are not a Christian, immediately they ask you to pray, God, thank you. I'm sick. Hear me. I'm sick. Hear me. Please hear me. My brother yesterday was he. And I'm better than my brother. Hear me, Lord. I've been coming to shore for the past many years now. And this man just come today and he was he. Lord Jesus, don't leave me. Hear me. If you don't hear me, I may not come to this church again. <laughs> and indeed, you will not come again. Look at. If the processing of this carrot is wrong, when you taste it, you know. If it is built by fertilizer, not natural soil, give me the one that actually built by natural soil and the one of fertilizer. When you taste it, you will know the difference. If I the one with fertilizer I fed the heads, the same thing those chicken you rare, fishes you rare, water, everything, processing. Let's almost say processing. Many of us are here today for the first time and you have forgotten yourself and when you think back, you realize that in every one hour you must take your draw. If you don't take your tablet, you have feet. But today, you are sitting down for the past six hours, you have forgotten your tablet. You are just forgetting yourself and nothing happened to you. Many of us are here. If you are not here, you will have gone to toilet up to six, seven, eight times because of diabetes. But for the past seven hours now, you have been sitting down, no toilet. Because Jesus has taken more of you and give you more of him.
What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that means you have forgotten yourself. When you forgetting yourself, this will take over. When you live here now, by the time you just move outside there, you start remember yourself. Ah, I have diabetes. I've not taken my drug today. And the moment you remember, you ring, you are pressed. If you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. Tell your neighbor, if you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. To forget yourself is to forget your challenge, your situation, your predicament, your worry. Tell your neighbor, if you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. Remembering yourself, following Jesus, is serving two masters. You are serving two masters. You follow Jesus, at the same time, your challenge, you remember. Your trouble, you remember. Your worry, you remember. And you are following Jesus. It's serving two masters. You must forget yourself to follow Jesus. A sample of forgetting yourself is when you sleep. My brother, when you sleep, your sickness sleep. Until when you wake up, you start feeling the pain. When you wake up like this, you start feeling the pain. Ah, edic, edic. But when you are sleeping, you don't feel that pain. This is why the scientists decide to be given you painkiller. When they give you this tablet, you sleep off. At that moment, no pain. But when you wake up, the pain started. That is a sample of forgetting yourself. In the same day, when you forget yourself, you have ability to follow Jesus. Because with Jesus, no worry, no anxiety, no challenge, no everything, no, in him, there's nothing like that. That is why when you are following Jesus, Challenging your truly, I mean, challenge is not there in Him, in Jesus, no challenge, in Jesus, no worry. So it's not possible for you to follow Him with worry, with challenging, with your situation, because in Him there's nothing like that. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. We were at home, wherever you are, we salute your faith. Thank you, Lord. We continue to move according to the spirit of God, wave. When he wave this direction, we follow, that direction we follow. That is uh, the message you are receiving every week, like with the issue of Holy Spirit. The spirit of Father, hallelujah, Amen. knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. That means if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. I know Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. So this is an issue we are going to talk about today. Our title, Knowing Jesus. Knowing the Holy Spirit. Let someone say. If you say you know Jesus, we don't know the Holy Spirit. That is not Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a spirit, and its worshiper must do so in spirit and truth. What kind of Jesus are we talking about? Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So we take our test from Vera's book, 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. And I'll take my reading from the beginning to the end. And the John 16, you can take your reading from the beginning at your time. So that 
John 3, verse 27 also, will give you some clue of what we are about to talk about today. And in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, about faith. And then take it back to the Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. That one too will help you. Thank you. Let's take our reading from the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. Verse 2, for I resolved to know nothing why I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive way, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Verse 5, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Hallelujah. When you now go down, you find God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit. This is verse 6. We do ever speak a message of wisdom among the mature. That is, among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. So you take your time to read to the end. Like many other books have been given to you. Hallelujah. Taking your reading from verse 1 to the end, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You will find that the spirit is the organ by which we apprehend divine things. Man's spirit is dead because of sin. The natural man, that is, the man of mind and the intellect cannot understand nor receive things of the spirit. Where there's no vision, people perish. And this is what is going on now. This is what is happening in our generation. Things have perished. You cannot see Satan in the natural. I do not see Satan in the natural. I see Satan on the other side. Spirit world. This is where, where there is no vision. Perish. Destruction. Killing. Tell your neighbor, I do not see Satan in the natural. I see Satan on the other side. The spirit world. That is why the Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. Satan. Tell your neighbor, where there is no vision, people perish. What can you see here? It's impossible to see what is here with your sight. With your sight, it is impossible to see what is here with your sight. Everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's word. If this thing control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian yet controlled by Satan devices. If these things control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian, no doubt. Yet, controlled by what? Satan's devices. Tell your neighbor, I do not say Satan. In the natural, I see Satan 
on the other side. The spirit war. Tell your neighbor again. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit because that is where I can hear Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. Tell me, Joshua. Yes, sir. In the spirit. But in the natural. Can hmm. you say the life you live today? I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. God gives us a spirit to apprehend him. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Don't forget. There has been a great miss up in the church. It is the erroneous assumption that spiritual truth can be intellectually perceived. It is possible to grow up in the church as a baby. Your father is founder of this, founder of that church, founder of that church, and learn all rights, but not know Jesus. Because Jesus is not known by those external things. Jesus is not known by those external things. In that John 16, it is perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that revealed Jesus to us. Perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Jesus to us. You can read your New Testament and still never find Jesus in it. You can be convinced that Jesus is the Son of God and still never find Jesus. You can be a publisher of the Bible. The publisher of the Bible. You can know about Christ dying for you. You can hear this, that religious organization. You can be the founder and general overseer and still never know Jesus of Nazareth in the power of Holy Ghost. In the church, there are two Christs. You need to know the one you are worshiped today. There are two Christs. The Christ of story and of history and son, the baby Jesus. Then there is this Christ which the Holy Spirit reveals. Many people know about Christ, but they don't know Christ. There is a difference knowing about Christ and knowing Christ. In that John 3, verse 27, no man can receive except it is given from above. No man can receive except it is given from what? Above. From above. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. 
if you are risen into Christianity, some wise fellow can raise you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit, because knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit, if you are risen into Christianity, Without knowing the Holy Ghost, and you become a Christian, you claim you are a Christian without the Holy Ghost, some wise fellow can reason you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit. Knowing Jesus is knowing the Holy Ghost. This is why you see people today, I'm a member of this church today, I don't want to go to church again. I used to be a Christian, but uh, no, I'm this, no, I'm this, no, I'm a pastor, no, I'm no more. I'm an evangelist, no, I'm no more evangelist. Some wise fellow can raise you out if you are risen to Christianity. Why? Because Christianity falls or sounds on Christ Jesus. Sounds or falls on the illumination of the Holy Ghost. It is either the Holy Spirit or darkness. It is either the Holy Ghost or darkness. The Holy Ghost is God's imperative of life. Imperative of life. If our faith is to be a New Testament faith, if Jesus Christ is to be the Christ of God, rather the Christ of history or story, the illumination of Holy Ghost will tell our heart that we are learning at Jesus' feet, not at man's feet. Are you? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is not, it's not, it's not the mind for applause. It's the mind for crying. So bad reflection because I don't see Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down. So why, why are you clapping? I cannot see Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down as it should be. The way your forefather serving God, the way your father pray, the way your father fasting, this is the way you are going about serving God. The Christ of history, of story, of some baby Jesus. Who is Christian among us? Okay, if you are a Christian, can you tell me who is talking to you? Are you seeing beyond me? That is what we call Christian. If you're a Christian, you live by Holy Ghost. You'll be able to see beyond me. You can't see beyond me. You only see me talking to you. That is all you see. That is why you can go out. That is why we can do everything. That is why tomorrow you may not be able, you may not come to church if you are not here or if you are not blessed. Because you are risen into Christianity. If today is your last day, where are you going? Is there any kingdom for religious? The kingdom come, that will be done. Where are you going if today is your last day? You tell Jesus, I'm a member of this church, I go to church. Is that the excuse you are going to give? I can't see Christian among you. I can't see Christians. Hmm? We we'll continue the journey. This is the message God has me to give you. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. So thank you. If you have not filled with the Spirit, you cannot obey the written word. That is the painful part. So you may you are just carrying Bible, and you are just reading the history part of it, because there is no way you can obey the word of God if you are not filled. That is the most painful part of it. 
Where's your Bible? See, this one, you cannot obey it. You will just be reading it as a religious man. You read to preach, to teach it, but to live it is not possible. And if you cannot obey the scripture, you quench God. You quench him. <laughs> you quench him. That is the most painful part. There is reading the Bible, the carry Bible. Me, the word here is not just history. The Holy Spirit carry the writers along. That's the most painful thing. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. And many of you have read this Bible for five time. We have many publishers here, publishers of the Bible. You know, there are among you that publish Bible for daily bread. Where are we going? That's the most painful part of it. Most painful part of it. Me, Bible, is irrelevant to you. Now, I will be stretching her now. You see people checking. You see people checking, but you don't know what is checking them. The resurrection power that flow within me to them, you cannot see, but you always see people checking, falling. It becomes a magic to you. Ah, what is it? Without touch, what is falling people? You can't see because you are not free to die. It's blasphemy. Your heart, you will not say it all, but your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is blaspheming. Your heart is, is no rest. You keep blaspheming. You keep seeing what you do not understand. Your heart will blaspheme. This is the problem we find ourselves. I will stand here to tell you don't go to that church. Don't go to that. Why should I say you should not go there? If you go there, You'll be able to see more. Seeing more will help your history. It will make you adequate, serving God. If that church is not good, go there. See with yourself. If you have not seen enough darkness, you cannot appreciate light. That is it. Please. You are not serving God without the Holy Spirit. If you are serving God without the Holy Spirit, you are serving God you do not know. Tell your neighbor, if I serve God without the Holy Ghost, I'm serving God I do not know. It is the Spirit that makes us know him. Serving God without the Holy Spirit, serving God you do not know. And this is the God our forefathers served. And this is the life you are living today. Someone keeps telling you what God says. Someone keeps telling you God says you should sleep. That is the life you want to live throughout. God says you should sleep. God says you should wake up. God says you should know. God says you should fast. God says you should peace. God says you should go to London. God says you should. Is that the life you want to live throughout? It means you are still serving God you do not know. Someone is telling you what God says. It means you don't know that God. That's why someone is telling you. For how long? Very, very painful. Tell your neighbor, very, very painful. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. That is the way I see it. Very, 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 very painful. Intellectually perceived. Spiritual truth. We can intellectually perceive it. Very, very painful. You have to get out of it. Forget about your problem. You don't have problem. That is the only problem you have. Every other problem are no problem. The greatest problem is for you to serve God you do not know. Tell your neighbor, the greatest problem, the greatest problem. all other all are not problem. The greatest problem is to serve God you do not know. Imagine your age today. How old are you? You have been serving God that you have dream, you have to consult somebody to tell you the meaning. 
You have a job, you want to know whether it's a good job. You want to marry, you carry it medically to know whether it's good. Spiritually, you run from one place to another to know whether it's a right thing. This is the life you have been living. And those lives are not profitable. A man cannot receive except it is given from above. But you can receive, receive from people, receive from people, receive from people. Where are we going? You say you, you are poor. You are not poor. You say you are sick. You are not sick. You are only serving God. You do not know. If you are blessed today and you still continue serving God, you do not know, you will still come back poorer. Unless you serve God, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Yes, as it should be by divine way. Let me wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So you know we are dwelling on the, your faith will not fail. I think that is uh, what we are actually dwelling on. Some of us, uh, our action, we, sometimes we thought is faith, but it's not biblical faith. I think it is very important to look into those faith that are not biblical. So there are faith. We have faith in faith and faith in yourself and faith in others, like I have mentioned last time, by looking at uh, those things that are not biblical faith, but we see it as faith, but are not biblical. When you know those things that are not biblical faith, you have a better understanding of what biblical faith is. So I will take you to the book of Acts 14. So let's quickly look at just a snappy healing that took place when Paul was addressing a congregation. In the city, there sat a man who was lame. That is, a man was there who was lame, could not walk. He had been that way from birth that he was born with it, lame, and uh, had never walked. That is, the man had never, never walked. He was born lame right from birth. He listened to Paul. This man was listening to Paul as he was speaking. A lame man right from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, a lame man, listen to that. So that he had faith to be healed. Mm. Listen to that. A lame man who was born lame, he was in the meeting when Paul was addressing the congregate. Paul looked at him directly 
and saw that he had faith to be healed. Do you have faith to receive? That is the question. What faith are they talking about here? Do you have faith to be set free? It may all this demand for your faith. It is not all up to Jesus. Certainly, it is not all up to you. Your genuine willingness plus Jesus' ability, it demands for your faith. Paul saw in him faith to be healed. Do you have the faith? Here I stand as Paul. Can I see faith to be healed? Faith to be blessed? Faith to be delivered? Can I? A you? It's cause for question. Paul looked directly at him and saw that the man had faith to be healed. If I look at you, can I see faith? Will I see faith? What you are calling faith today is mere feeling. You are disturbed. Your heart is not at its best. That is why we allow you to dance, to wipe those trouble. You ask, why dancing in the church? Why so much time dancing, 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 so that you can forget where you are coming from? Because where you are coming from is full of debt, trouble. Your heart can only be at its best when you are happy, peace of heart. And God can only attract you, the Spirit of God can only attract you, attract your heart. John himself to you, to bless you when your heart is at its best. So much trouble. We find ourselves in a generation without peace, without patience. There's no patience. Hurry. Hurry. You time yourself. Imagine you are coming to God and you time yourself. You have given a lot of appointments that I'll be living here in five, three to four hours. God is not one of those things. You can time yourself to do business. You can time yourself to visit a friend. You can time yourself to visit anyone. You can time yourself to do anything. But when it comes to God, it's only. You don't time yourself to meet God. This is where you miss the mark. In our various places of worship, we have time, we should leave, time to worship, time to sing in, to sing out, and time to do this, time to do that. We don't time God, because it's all about inspiration from heaven. We don't instruct God, we don't tell God when to start, how to start, when to stop, when to start, when to begin. This is where you miss the mark. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to be healed. I'm here to be blessed. This is bargain. You are bargaining with God. You pay God. I'm here to be delivered today. This is bargain. Simply a bribe. So whatever we now give, seem to be a bribe 
That is corruption. We take that corruption to the house of God. Whatever you now give, because you are here for a purpose, whatever you give is a way of saying this, give me this. We are all sitting as if we really mean business. But because we don't have so much to do today, today is free day. That is why you give it to God. You only give God what you do not need. Time you do not need. Your quality time, you can't give it to God. You don't have any appointment today. That's why you are here. You don't give it your quality time to God. If God continues to give you what he himself do not need, as you are given change, you know what you want to give your offering? These are things you collected from petrol station chain, the money you collected from conductor, those money you collected from where you buy and sell. Those are the change you, stop, you give to God. Is God continues to give you those change back in return? What God do not need, what you do not need, Will you say it's blessed? So because you believe you are serving God. Are you serving with your quality time? Your quality strength? Let's look at what are not biblical faith. We say faith, we have faith, but you need biblical faith. You deny everything. When they ask you, what is your problem? You prefer to say different things. You don't tell people until you're about to die. Get you to the point of death, you can say it out. Or uh, when the doctors reject you, say, no, this is above us, then you run to God. You deny existence of a problem. Faith is not denial. Faith does not deny the existence of a problem. There's a problem. Even the Bible says, in this world, there will be tribulation. Cheer up, I have war. This problem, what should you deny? You can't deny it. Everyone has limitation. Faith is not denial. Faith does not deny the existence of a problem. There's a problem. Everybody has a medical report somewhere, your medical records. But when you are getting to the point of death, you run to God. You are ready to say, this is what I have. This is my problem. You say, you are a Christian. A person has to recognize he is sick before getting healed. A person has to recognize he is sick before getting healed. He is sick and run to the healer, the savior, before getting healed. But at what point you recognize you are sick? When all hope has lost, when you have spent all your fortune, at what point you recognize you are sick and run to Jesus? When all hope has lost and everything is Confessing or not does not change the fact. Knowing fact about God does not change your relationship with him.
when you put the word of God to work, eventually your circumstances are subject to change. Put to work the word of God. Put to work. Like last week, when I was moving around, if not the gift of prophecy, meeting some people, they will come here and say, I have fever. By the time I, I'm praying, I realize that this is HIV 1 and 2 until they get to the point of death before they say, Jesus is Lord, is my healer. Faith is not imitation, which is common among God. Faith is not imitation. It cannot be imitated. It must arrive in each person's heart based on the word of God. Based on the word of God. It cannot be imitated. But today, what is happening? You see? Everybody, the same. Sometimes God deals with people in different ways. God will not meet you. Because you imitate what someone else did. This is why it's, it's a bit dangerous when you pick a textbook and you read how to pray. The Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer. When you take a textbook and begin to read how to pray, pray for deliverance, pray for this, pray for that, no. God will not meet you because you imitate what someone else did. Tell your neighbor, God will not meet you because you imitate what someone else did. That is, someone else prayed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, after watching the way the person prayed, you to get there and say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Remember, this one is being inspired to do so. You are not inspired to do so. You are only copy, you are only imitate. Some of you will pick a textbook and begin to read seven points of way to pray. You want to fast for three days because you read this so somewhere to, to do so. The person is being inspired to do so, not you. God will not meet you because you imitate what someone else did. God will meet you when you obey what he told you to do by the Spirit based on his will. When you take action in obedience to God, you prosper. When you take action in obedience to who? You will. You get it. You prosper. Tell your neighbor, God will not meet you because you imitate what someone else did. Like prayer, like fasting. You say somebody has me to fast, somebody, this is her. It's a standard, this traditional way. This song to sing, this how to sing it out, this how to sing it in, this is the, this is that, this is that. This is what they ask us to do. This, this, this a lot. God will meet you when you obey what himself told you to do. And he can only say that by his spirit, based on his will. That is 
taking action in obedience to God. Today, faith is not an issue of ordering God around. You know, today, our prayer is to instruct God. We always instruct God. I need this. In the name of Jesus, give me, give me, give me, give me. You don't mind whether he says way to give you. You don't even bother to know God's way before you ask. And if you ask according to his way, he gives. Faith is not an issue of ordering God around. So we pray, we instruct God, we instruct God what to do, what to give out. And when that is not given out, we feel bad. It affects our faith. Who knows what will have happened to you if your prayer for better life had been answered? A better life to buy the best car a better life to build a beautiful house, a better life to become a governor, a minister, a senator. Who knows what will have happened? Who knows what will have happened? We are talking about those things that are not biblical faith, and we practice. We say it's faith. With many things you do, like many testimony today, people came out to say, Yes, I minister my money water four times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You quickly write it down. Why writing it down when you get your own? Eh? You now say, oh, that man ministered three times. Jesus, Jesus. You will not blow your own stool. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Nothing happened. But the man that is talking may be inspired by the Holy Spirit to do so, but you are not inspired. You are only imitate this man. You are imitator. Like many of our has book, we read prayer, prayer for deliverance. Turn this way, Jesus, Jesus. Another side, Jesus, Jesus. Another side, Jesus, Jesus. It gets frustrated when you do that and the prayer is not answered. But you are imitating. The man, somebody wrote it, the person is being inspired to do so, but not you. You will not meet Jesus because you imitate what someone else did. What someone else did is what you are reading. Unless you, you receive from God yourself, you will meet God. When you obey what God told you, that is instruction. May God bless his word. Emmanuel, if God is with us, if God is with a nation, if God is with me, you, Hallelujah. If God is with us, no matter the situation you are passing through, if God is with you, he will comfort you. The Bible says, the Lord will see you through. He does not promise to keep you away. He does not promise to keep you away from trouble, from trial, from foolish things. He never promised to keep you away, but he promised to see you through. That's God's promise. No matter the situation you are passing through, as a Christian, if God is with us who can be against us. And if God is with you, he will see you through. Tell your neighbor, if God is with me, 
he will see me through. He will comfort me. Hallelujah. Let me see your copy. Hallelujah. Just look at the message. Our confession gives us possession. Our confession gives us what? Possession. As your confession given you possession, ask your neighbor. Again, ask once again. Our confessions gives us possession. I would like to take you to the book of Matthew 21, verse 21. So Jesus answered, said to them, Assuredly, I said to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, take note of that, you will not only do what was done to the fifth tree, but also you will say to this mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea, and it will be what? It will be done. Can you see? What a God we have to worship. What a son we have to praise. What a foolish world. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man confesses in faith, he shall receive. Can you see? It is natural as a Christian to fortune in faith because that is the nature of our life. Because that is the nature of our world. I can hear you. That is the nature of your life. You have to speak. Speak out. Say, that is the nature of my life. You say you are a child of God. God's title for us is a believer. In, from Genesis to Revelation, where God refers to us, he calls us a believer, not doubter. That is the name God knows as a believer. That is God's title for me. Tell your neighbor, God title for me is a believer. That is the name. Did God know me? If God wants to call me, I will say, believer. That is the name. What is the position of faith here? And what is the position of confession? This is what we are going to talk about. Faith works in the direction of genuine confession. Faith works in the direction of genuine work. What do I mean? Faith follows in the footprints of our confession. Faith and confession cannot go opposite direction. Faith and confession cannot go opposite what? Opposite direction. The far your faith goes, the far your confession goes. It landed there. Your faith also will land at the same point. When the bed of confession is well laid, faith will lie secure on it. You say, as you lay your bed, you lie on it. This is where I'm going. The far faith goes. The far confession goes.
goes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here. If that declaration comes from faith, I will be healed indeed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah. If that declaration comes from faith, I will be healed. I will be blessed indeed. When the bed of confession is well laid, faith will lie secure on it. Whatever you receive from God is a portion of your confession. When your confession is strong, your faith is strong. When your confession is weak, your faith is weak. This means your confession is your faith. When my confession is strong, my faith is strong. When my confession is weak, my faith is weak. This means my confession is my faith. Because many don't know the difference between confession and faith. And this is the fundamental, the foundation. Before you begin to talk of Holy Spirit, these are the things you need to know. <laughs> so that you put padlock in your mouth. You will not just open mouth and talk. Your confession is your faith. Your faith is controlled, is ruled by your confession. The far your confession goes, the far your faith goes. If your confession is weak, your faith is weak. Because your confession is your faith. Because the far the confession goes, the far faith goes. Hallelujah. Unbelief grows with negative confession. A confession of failure puts failure on the throne. I don't know. It cannot be possible. A confession of failure puts failure on the throne. If I confess weakness, weakness dominates me. By my confession, I am saved or lost. By my confession, I have plenty or lack. By my confession, I am strong or weak. If your confession is strong, your faith is strong. If your confession is weak, your faith is weak. When the bed of confession is well laid, faith will lie secure on it. I am healed. If that declaration comes from faith, 
I will be healed indeed. Your confession is your present attitude towards the Father. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. Your, your neighbor it seems it's not here, you clear. So that you'll be very careful of what you say. Say, awake. awake. Your confession is your present attitude towards the Father. Say, awake. You will not just open your mouth and begin to say, eh, I don't know what is happening. Eh, mm, I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. Your confession is your present attitude towards the Father. If your confession is negative, your attitude towards the Father is negative. Tell your neighbor, if my confession is negative, my attitude towards the Father is negative. If my confession is positive, my attitude towards the Father is positive. You begin to say, ah, what's wrong? You have to be very careful of what you say the Bible says. You are what you believe in your heart and what you confess with your mouth. Tell your neighbor, I am what I believe in my heart and what I confess with my lips. You are what you confess with your lips and believe in your heart. My confession it's my faith. When I say, I'm healed, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's all about now. Let someone say, now. 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 Faith acts now. Faith believes now. Faith confesses now. Say, now. Now. Faith acts now. Faith confesses now. Faith receives now. Your confession is your present attitude towards the Father. If your confession is negative, your attitude towards the Father is negative. If your confession is positive, your attitude towards the Father is positive. So when you live here, you have to be very careful of what you give your attention to. Let me give you a test. The first sermon. 17 verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your hair from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the bears of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That is David. Here, David confessed that victory was already on his side even before the battle began. Here, David confessed that victory was on his side even before the battle began. Be careful of what you say, what you confess. You cannot live above your words. When your declaration comes from faith, your word becomes prophetic. When your declaration say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, go there, you will see. If that declaration comes from faith, the word you speak become prophetic. All David said came to pass. The life you live is as a result of your confession. 
it is a pity that you never confess failure and you find yourself in a failure end. It is a pity many never confess failure, but they are living in a failure realm because their confession never in harmony with their belief. Ask your neighbor, do you ever confess the life you are living now? Ask your neighbor. <laughs> Ninety percent here will say no. If not, ninety-nine percent will say, if you have to be sincere, you will say, no, I never confess the life I'm living now. Because the life they are living is not pleasing to them. Because you see people putting on beautiful dress, follow them home, you will see opposite. Because you see people packing jeep, Lesser jeep, whatever jeep, whatever vehicle you pack out there, follow the owner of the vehicle home. You will see, just live with the person two days, three days. You will know that that vehicle is under, under, under loan. Because you see the body big or whatever stature or whatever face, brother, ask your neighbor. Do you ever confess the life you live now? Ask your neighbor, do you ever confess the life you are living now? Yes. Tell those who are under the influence of this silicas. Yes. Tell them, tell them. Yes. Once again. I can hear no. When you meet people, they will tell you that, look, <laughs> this is the life I plan, this is what I, the kind of life I would have loved to live. But some will say, if maybe God will send me back when I, <laughs> maybe in another world, I would like to be like this, I would like to be like that. Okay, the question you need to ask yourself, when you get home, ask your children, do you like to be like me? <laughs> when you get home, just ask your children, if you cannot provide answer to this question, ask your own children, say, look, come, come, would you like to be like me? He will first of all say, when you are facing him, he will say, yes. When you turn back, say, no, I cannot be like this man. want to inherit Wahala. <laughs> Don't you then know that it's better life than the life you live? If I'm right, raise up your hand. Your little children, you think they don't listen to your prayer. It's time, it's, it's time to pray. They will move close to their parents. Peter will say, Lord, Lord, I don't like the life I'm living now. I don't like the life. <laughs> They will put that one down, say, I don't like it, Lord. Change my life, change my soul, change my... If you don't pray at home, when you come to church, your children, they normally, they, will, they want to hear your confession. Say, Lord, what is happening? Lord, do it for me, do it for me. Everything for you, do it for me. The children will just say, eh. <laughs> because what you cannot discuss with them, they know when it is time for prayer, you open up. Here we are. Here I am, send me. Here, Here I, I am, send me. If the Lord, if the Lord wants somebody, here I am, here I am. Thank you. Let me take you to the book of Romans 5. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
through whom also we have access by faith. Take note of that. Through whom also we have what? By faith. What does this mean? This means it is natural for you to function in faith because that is the nature of your life as a child of God. It is natural for you to function in faith because that is the nature of your life. Your confession is your faith. If it is negative confession, it is unbelief dominating your spirit because our spirit always responds to our confession. Tell your neighbor, my spirit always responds to my confession. It is positive, clear cut confession that wins. It is what? It is positive, clear cut confession that wins. I think I am here. It's not a clear cut confession. It will be better tomorrow. It's not a clear cut confession. I know. This sickness did not enter into my life one day. It will take three days. I, I need to pray it for three days for the sickness to be over. It's not a clear court confession. It is positive, clear court confession that wins. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. If that declaration comes from faith, I will be healed indeed. Many of us are not confessing failure, but we find ourselves in failure realm. It is surprising what faith people have in wrong things. Many of us never confess failure, but we find ourselves in failure realm. And confession solves problem and gives possession. Like the test I've given you in that book of First Samuel 17, in that verse 46, David confessed that the victory was already on his side even before the battle began. All David said came to pass. Ask your neighbor, do you ever confess the life you are living now? That's why we always go with uh, almost 20 business cards. You are the contractor. You are the, you are the, you are the, you are the, anywhere they call engineer, you bring out the cards. <laughs> because the vision is not clear. Tell your neighbor, the vision is not clear. Where there is no vision. If the Lord said to me, TV Joshua, you, you're a fisherman today, I would just tell my member, praise the Lord. Where is fishing net? I'm going. Because I know if I continue fishing, I will prosper with it. But here I am. The Lord said, TV Joshua, continue. This is your job. If you, your declaration comes from faith, your struggle will make you stronger. 
If your confession concerning your situation comes from faith, you will embrace the truth. If your declaration comes from faith, you will have God's hand performing all things for you. Rise up, rise up, and declare this to your life. If my declaration comes from faith, I will have God's hand perform me all things. Si ma déclaration est de la foi, j'aurai Dieu qui vient derrière cette déclaration. Face your neighbor and think about what I'm saying now. It's a voice of wisdom. Eh? My declaration, whatever I say, I say I'm an engineer, I'm a prophet, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that, whatever I declare now that I am. Oh, if that declaration comes from faith, I will have God's hands perform me or tea. Where God guys. Tell you anymore. If my declaration comes from faith, I will have God's hand perform me. Not something. Somebody is saying something there. Can you hear what you got to say? I, listen, listen. I derive this from the song you sing every day. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. All things are possible. So now, I know many keep asking themselves, what does he say? Now you can understand what I'm talking about. If I'm saying I'm a cleaner in office, and that declaration comes from faith, that is, it's my divine call to be a cleaner. <laughs> and I receive anointing to do the cleaning of the office. <sighs> I will have God's hand. For me, oh. this is why you see cleaner today becoming so rich and famous. Why you, managing director, chairman of many companies, you are living under the poverty level with your degree and whatever. This is why we see the lame, disabled, so famous and rich, wealthy, and you able to live under what? Live under the poverty. If you receive anointing to be a servant, you will have God's hand performing all things for you. Ask your neighbor, does your declaration come from faith? You may be seated. When your declaration comes from faith, your word will become prophetic. This is why when David was telling the Philistines, he was telling them that I will cut this man head, yo, and the man head has never been caught already. The battle ever begins at all. And he was telling them I will beat this man and I will cut his head and I will kill him. And the whole world was looking at David that what are you saying? The man you say you will kill is still standing. He was prophesied to his life. 
when your declaration comes from faith, your word will become prophetic. Your preaching will become prophetic. Your message will become prophetic. Your thinking will become prophetic. Your looking will become prophetic. Your dancing will become prophetic. Everything you do will become prophetic. Your greeting will become prophetic. Your hallelujah will become prophetic. Amen will become prophetic. Anything at all, everything will become prophetic. Ask your neighbor, does your declaration come from faith? Once again, ask your neighbor, does your declaration come from faith? What do I mean by declaration? Everything that has to do with you, you're looking. Are you look a look of faith? Work a work of faith? The job, what are you doing? Your professional job. Do you have anointing for it? Everything that has to do with you, your word. My head, my shoulder, my knee, my toes, my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. Everything, your faculties belong to Jesus. You should carry it where Jesus will be honored. Jesus must be honored. Must be honored. Must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life. Jesus must be honored. Must be honored. Must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life. You may be seated. Your declaration. I'm a pastor. Does that declaration come from God? If that declaration does not come from God, it's a matter of time. Don't fight for God. God will fight for himself. This man is a demo. This man is the... That is nonsense. Don't fight for God. You cannot fight for God. If this man does say, I'm from God, it's not from God. Leave it for God. When you see people fighting for God, you know they are fighting for their pocket. <laughs> How can you? You too. We are a tooth in the hands of God. When you pick a tooth, this is it. This is, you are just like this in the hands of God. When you finish writing, you drop it. You can use, how can you now fight it? A tooth fighting for you. Your pen fighting for you. This is possible. Soon you will finish this book and you drop it somewhere. For this book fighting for you. We cannot fight for God. God fight for us. We have two people in the world today. Those who fight for God and those who God fight for. Tell your neighbor, we are truths in the hands of God. When you begin to see ministers of God begin to say, that man, that man is a demon, is a demon. Knowing that he is fighting for his pocket. Salvation is his pocket. That is not our job. 
we are tools in the hands of God. If your declaration does not come from God, you will not be able to stand the test of time. In that first Psalm 17, verse 46, here David confessed that victory was on his side even before battle began. Tell your neighbor, make sure your declaration comes from faith. Tell your neighbor once again. I can hear you. Sois sûr que ta déclaration vienne de la foi. So that you have be God on your side. And you will think a majority. When your declaration comes from faith, like good example I was given to you, you and him are lifting the load together. Be God. Baba God. I have a very big God. It's always by my side. A very big God. Oh, by my side. By my side. I serve a very big God. Oh, who is always by my side. A very big God. Oh. Where are we going? Our failure to give Christ his proper position, his proper place in our heart is actually responsible for the crisis of our confession. There is crisis in our confession. What you speak out, we seem to be lying. I'm here, I'm there. Man of God will say, in Jesus' name, we say, amen. He only say amen because man of God say, in Jesus' name. Not that he believe, oh. Show your excitement. Some people say, hey, I'm blessed, yo. Oh. It's only dancing, not that he believe, oh, because man of God say they should show their excitement. For how long? We keep conventional. We fast 40 days, 49. At the end of the day, it is true Jesus fasted 40 days, 49. But the Spirit led him to do so. But if also Jesus asked, fasted 40 days, 49, see, Jesus turned water to wine. Why can't you two turn water to wine? Jesus walk on the sea. Why can't you walk on the sea? But you keep selecting those you can do. When it is 40 day 49, say, hey, it is time. Lent time. Jesus was led by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit to fast. We must also be led by the Spirit to do so. How do we give proper place? How do I give proper place? 
we give proper place when our mind is concentrating upon the things in the spirit. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. You may be seated. Yes. Our mind must be disciplined to concentrate upon things in the spirit. You know, many Christians today, 90% of us, we are controlled by outward needs. When we want to pray, we want to buy Jeep, we want prosperity, we want healing, We want job, we want promotion, we want blessing. These are the things that control us. This is the problem we are having today. Church is not fun and game. It is warfare. This is the battle of the ages. Prosperity, there is nothing bad about that. You want to buy a car, Jeep, this, that. If you don't have all this, there's no evidence that really you are prosper. No. A Christian that are controlled by outwardness, prosperity, blessing, this, that. When those things are affected he will not have anything to rely on or to rest his faith this is why many of you uh, you are not coming to church to the, to the last week you say uh, because my engine vehicle knock because the engine of your vehicle knock that is why you you cannot join a mobile or public vehicle and come to church can you see now? Why you did not come to service last Sunday? Hey, because uh, one of my friends was seriously sick. I need to be there. Who is the healer? Whatever situation you are passing through, is it poverty? Let your mind seek things that are above so that you may be comforted in the circumstance. This is what I mean when I say Emmanuel, God with us. If God with us, you will be comforted. No matter the situation you are in, you will be comforted. Let your mind seek things that are above so that you may be comforted in the circumstance. When we are controlled by outward things, beautiful things, cars, property, prosperity, money, this, that, 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 those things, if you are controlled by this, Anytime there's trouble with those things, there will be trouble in your relationship with God. No matter the situation you are passing through, is it poverty? Let your mind rise and see things that are above. Is it disappointment? Let your mind rise and see things that are above. So that you may be comforted in the circumstance. That is the way out. You know, 
we talk of faith, confession, there are two things you must consider. Confession and testimony are articles of faith. As a man of faith, whenever you are facing difficult situation, you should learn to use the weapon of testimony and confession. Tell your neighbor, whenever you are facing difficult situation, you should learn to use the weapon of testimony and confession. This was what David used when he was brought to king. King said, you small boy, you say you will fight the giant, giant will kill you. He said, no, king, listen to me. I once used my hand to kill the bear. That was testimony in the past. King now say, ah, you mean you kill bear? Yes, if that is the case, bear and Goliath. Which one is more powerful? King now resorted to, yes, beer is more powerful. If you can keep beer, definitely you will kill this man. You are afraid to go. Whenever you are facing difficult situation as a Christian, remember to use your weapon of testimony and confession what the law has done in the past and what the law is able to do in the circumstance. So David was able to tell the king that, look, the most high God on my side was able to help me to kill the bear. Eh? You kill bear? He said, yes. We don't know. So whenever you are facing difficulty, facing difficult situation, use the, your weapon. It's your weapon. You have that weapon. What the Lord has done in your life in the past, you know, if I tell you mine, right from my mommy womb, the Lord has been protecting me. When I was an embryo, the Lord has been protecting me. Look at what embryo has become today. I am not used to woman weapon. Tell your neighbor, I'm not used to woman weapon. I'm not used to woman weapon. I'm not used to propaganda. I'm not used to insult. I'm not used to persecution. I'm not used to him. I'm used to God's hammer. I'm used to God's hammer. I have been using it and it has been working for me. God's hammer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm not used to propaganda. I'm not used to fake. I'm not used to insult. I'm not used to persecution. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to I'm not. You cannot use the weapon you, you never used before to fight war. You use the weapon you used to. I'm used to God's hammer. And any time my enemy come, that God's hammer, I'm used to. I'm not used to propaganda. And I'm not used to insult. I'm not used to that. I'm not used to that. When you come to me, I'll say in the name of Jesus, God's hammer. You know what David said? He said to Philistine, You come against me with sword and weapon. I come against you in the name of God. Rise up and face your neighbor now and say to your neighbor, 
whenever you are facing difficult situation, learn to use your weapon of testimony and confession. What the Lord has done in the past and what the Lord is able to do in the circumstance. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Thank you. Viewers, thank you for your time. Turn your Bible to the book of St. John, chapter 21, number 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? Jesus asked Simon Peter, do you love me more than this? Me, there are more to this? Just a word, do you love me? I want you to look at the expression, more than this. If I ask you, do you love me? More than this. What kind of love am I talking about? So that will take us to the title. Your love for Christ. Do you love me more than this? Three times Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than this? Hmm. The expression, more than this, take a look at that. If Peter did not love him more than this, definitely he would not give him a commission. Remember, three times he asked Peter, do you love me more than this? Before giving Peter the responsibility to shepherd his sheep. Not just do you love me. Remember that is human love. With this human love is but a shadow of God's love. Do you love me more than this? Nothing can compare with the power of this word spoken from the heart. Remember, a man can profess to be a Christian and not such in heart. A man can profess to be a pastor, a prophet, and not such in heart. If I now say, I love you, and I'm not such in heart, it means I'm talking of shadow. Three times Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than this? Three times Peter answered, You know that I love you. You know that I love you. Jesus was referring to words spoken from the heart. I love you. The word I love you, spoken from the heart, can change your destiny. Love can make a king abdicate his throne that is resigned. Love can make poor boy, poor man, beggar, become a prince. If spoken from the heart, nothing is as strong as love. That is, nothing is stronger than love, greater than all, because God is love. And God is greater than all. 
Let me quickly take you to the book of Levitical 19. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God. Verse 3. Everyone of you shall reverence. Verse 4. Do not turn to idols, nor make yourself image. I'm the law your God. Verse 9. When you reap the harvest of your hand, you shall not walk reap. The corner of your feet, nor shall you gather. Verse 10. And you shall not glead your vineyard, nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger, and I'm the law your God. You shall not steal, nor do falsely, nor lie to one another. Verse 12. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profile the name of your God, and I'm your law, your God. Verse 13. You shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is higher shall not remain with you at all night morning. God is love. He is without peer. That is love. Without equal, equivalent, equivalent. There is nothing to compare. Richer than any minerals. Love. Warmer than any sun. That is love for you. God is love. God loves the orphans, the strangers, the widows, the needy. Just name them. Therefore, man, if he loves God truly, is under obligation to love his fellow man. In this verse, as we have read here, God loves the strangers, the widow, the orphan, the needy. Therefore, man, if he loves God truly, is under obligation to love his fellow man. God is concerned about justice and righteousness. Therefore, man, if he loves God, he must be concerned about justice and treatment of his neighbor. If truly you are a Christian, you must be concerned about your neighbors. You must be concerned about the widow, the orphans, strangers, needy. If truly you are a child of God. Because God loves the strangers, the orphans, the widow, the needy. It's right here. God's people to be known for their sympathies. For those people on low social economic rung, God people, they want to help the needy, they want to help the poor, they want to help the widow, they want to give scholarship to the orphan. But today, Every one of us want to be ministers of God. We want to preach the gospel. We want to stand in the presence of crowd. We want to talk. We want to be seen. 
but we abandon the initial ministry, which is the ministry of giving, helping the needy raise the standard of living. These two ministries cannot be separated because what comes from the ministry go to the ministry of giving for the help of widow, needy, strangers. But when you have the ministry which preach, teach, and there's no ministry of giving, where does those money you realize going? Can you see why there will be always a limitation in everything you do in the ministry? When you are a father to the orphan, when you call his name, in the name of Jesus, he will answer you. When you are a father or a benefactor to the needy, when you call his name as a pastor, he will answer you. Because he knows when you call his name, whatever dividend that comes from it, you return it to these people. Those who are exploited and oppressed in society, you sympathize. God's goodness will continue towards us if we respond by loving him. Tell your neighbor, God's goodness will continue towards you if you respond by loving him, by loving your neighbor, by loving others, God's goodness, God's favor, God's healing, God's deliverance, God's salvation will continue towards you if you respond by loving your neighbor as yourself. God's love is expressed, it's revealed in our prosperity. Tell your neighbor, God's love is expressed, it's revealed in our prosperity. Protection from disease and sickness, continued mercy, that is God's love. Where there is no love, there is neither mercy nor grace. That is hell. Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. Love cannot exist without relationship. It can be manifested only where there is an object to be loved. Relationship is personal. That is why salvation is personal. The Synagogue Church of All Nations started from the given ministry. Right from the beginning of this ministry, it had been the church the given ministry. What comes from the church goes to the ministry of giving to raise the standard of living. Help the needy, help the widow, help the orphan, give scholarship. Man dare not credit himself with success. Tell your neighbor, man dare not credit himself with success. I can hear you. Man dare not credit himself with success. If it is uh, honor, people begin to respect you because you say something and it happens. You should know that honor is for God. That should not make you to change your ways. That should not make you to change your shoe. That should not make you to change your vehicle. That should not make you to change your friend or people you are moving with. That should not make you to start changing your way of moving. When you pray, those proceeds that come, 
give it to the stranger, widow, risk standard of these people. Please. When you do this, God's goodness will continue towards you. Because through his love, we love. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. Through his love, we love. God's love is first love. God's love is first love. You can't love without God's love. It is overflowing of God's love. Through his love, we love. You can deny God. You can ignore God. You can ridicule him. But his law remains constant and unchanging. Tell your neighbor, you can deny God. You can ridicule him. You can ignore him. But his law remains constant, unchanging. It rains on believers and unbelievers. Some unbelievers and unbelievers. Let me address the war concerning the ministry of God. Ministry of God is more than full crowd. Healing, deliverance, prophecy is more than that. Ministry of God is all about where you are coming from. By what authority are you doing all this? That is what ministry is all about. So I want to advise every one of us, you can easily discover yourself if you start this. The little you have, you can still give out of it to the needy. If you say you love God, God love the stranger, love the widow, love the orphan, love the needy. You should be under obligation to love your fellow brother, to love others, to love neighbors. You should be under obligation. You must be concerned about the jaws and treatment of your fellow brothers. All the apostles we read about, it started from this. If we are not armed for battle, we will fight the wrong battle. Before I thought you heard about T.B. Joshua, I was in the ministry of giving for many years before the Lord raised me to the level I am today. Apostolic ministry started from where? Given ministry. Through his love, we love. By his love, we are a new man. In his love, we have newness of life. God's love centers in his will. And what is his will now? Let's define it. It is his will to give. It is our will to give back and also to receive the gifts freely given. We ministers of God, including T.B. Joshua, let us come to understanding. For lasting ministry, given ministry must follow. It is the given ministry that services ministry. Tell your neighbor. Now, that is the ministry of God. You yourself, you know you need to service your life and to service your professional job. Are you a lawyer? Are you an accountant? Whatever you are doing. Without this given ministry, where your money goes, determine the supply. So please let us service our life. Tell your neighbor, service your life. Tell your neighbor again. Knowing God's love, 
will enable you to press on to tomorrow. Tell your neighbor. Will enable you to press on to tomorrow. No matter what stands before you, when everything around you seems to suggest that there is no way, there is no hope. Knowing God's love will enable you to press on. If your faith is lifted up, let us see your hand. Thank you. Our focus. This is part two. The word focus, you determine your own focus. You can complain. You can blame others. But you are responsible for what you pay attention to. Whatever you are feeling is produced by your focus. Tell your neighbor, whatever I'm feeling is produced by my focus. That is what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 4, verse 7 to 8. Whatsoever things are true, just, honest, pure, of good report, think of this. Your focus is your personal decision. Stop and take time to change your focus. Pay any price to protect your focus. Let's take our proof reading from the book of First Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has seeked you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up on diet. We want to use this as illustration. The journey to the throne is not a bed of roses. Are you there? Yeah. The journey to what? To the, to the throne is not a bed of what? Roses. It's not a bed of roses. Trouble does not require any invitation before it comes. The Bible says there must be troubles. They are not unto death. There must be what? They are not unto all. They are not unto death. To the man of faith. The one whose focus is on God. When we look at the road to the throne, we see persecution. We see intimidation. Blackmail. Campaign of cannoning. We see slanderous remarks. Name calling. Trouble is designed to advance our cause. Tell your neighbor, trouble is designed to advance my cause in life. Through troubles, God speaks strength and courage into our lives. Through what? Through troubles, God speaks courage and strength into our lives. As we struggle to overcome our troubles, we are making history. Remember, each day has its own destiny. Yesterday is history. 
Today is opportunity and tomorrow is mystery. Today is the center of yesterday and tomorrow. What we do today becomes history the next day. What are you doing? As a man of faith, the one whose focus is on God, each trial, each obstacle we encounter advances our cause. As we're trying to overcome our obstacle, we are doing two things. We are making history. What people and children yet unborn will read about us. And the fulfilling of our destiny that is marching towards the throne. The case of Joseph is a good example of this saying. In his marching to the throne, the march started from his father's house. From his father's house to the dry pit, from dry pit into slavery in Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to the prison, and from prison to the throne. Each time you encounter obstacles, remember the more difficult and trying situations God has taken you through in the past. As a man of faith, member of the household of faith, when you are facing difficult situations in your journey to the throne, in which it seems there is no hope, there is no future. We should learn to use our weapons of testimony and confession of what God has done in the past and what he is able to do in the circumstance. Testimony and confession are articles of faith. Remember the more difficult and trying situations God has taken you through in the past. God is not far from those who worship him in truth and faith. The Bible says he delivers his faithful servants out of trouble and put honor upon them. When we look at the road to the throne, we see tongues, snakes, scorpions, pointing to persecution, pointing to intimidation, pointing to Black male pointing to campaign of cannony and slanderous remarks. When we're trying to overcome our obstacles, we are making history. What people and the children yet unborn will read about us? Ask yourself, what can people read about you now? If today is your last day on earth, your property, your house, your money in the bank, is that what they will read about you? Is that the supreme price they are supposed to pay? His power and majesty are enough to support his authority. 
because God's government and authority are incontestable. You have come a long way, full of troubles and others. Are you making history? Because to a man of faith, each trouble he encounters advances his cause. The book of Exodus 14, verse 10. Take your time to read. To the carnally minded, Moses was simply telling them impossible because he was telling them to be calm in the face of threat to their life. Consider the attitude of Moses as he stood between the Red Sea and the pursuing Egyptian armies. Consider the attitude. Moses was calm and focused on what God had to say consigning the task at hand. When your focus is on God Almighty alone, you will be calm, calculated, and determined even when everything around you is unquiet. Today, our prayer is to instruct God in the way he should go. When you read your Bible, Moses was never seen or heard to be engaged in desperate prayer of casting and binding. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. Lord, do it. Lord, finish Egyptian. Lord, destroy them. Lord, turn the Red Sea to fire. No. He was never heard or seen to be engaged in desperate prayer of casting and binding. Today, our prayer is to instruct God in the way he should go. When we are facing unpleasant situations, without bothering to know whether or not the situation is meant to glorify God. The situation you are facing today may be for the glory of God. Who knows if your prayer for a better condition had been answered, a better condition to ride in the best car, a better condition to build a beautiful house, a better condition to become president, senator, governor. Who knows what will have happened to you? Tell the obstacle, you obstacle, I will not be cause of you. Change my position. I will not be cause of you. Change my decision. I will not because of you change my direction. You headache, you sickness, you poverty, whatever situation you are in, I will not because of you change my direction. I will not because of you change my position. Because I know God is still saying something through you. It may be to preserve me, to stop me a while. It may stop you a while in order to preserve you. 
He may stop you a while in order to prepare you for a challenges ahead, in order to keep you for a new level in life. He may stop you a while in order to strengthen your desire for God. In Daniel 6, when you take your reading from verse 10, when Daniel was facing hard times in the hands of his adversaries, he did not instruct God in the way he should go. He simply left all to God. Daniel knew that asking God for specific needs will amount to limiting him to certain answers. If Daniel was asking God, please, victory, 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 he will receive victory, but what Daniel later received was more than victory. Is God became state God. Moses was neither moved by the regrets, murmuring, grumbling, rebellion, and loss of faith of his people. Why can't you allow us to go and die in Egypt? What is all this nonsense? Moses, what are you doing now? Are you with yourself? You fake prophet. You are a fake man. He kept his focus. The Bible says his heart was engaged with God. Let's not want to say his heart was engaged with God. Relationship is all about mind. It's all about mind. When your mind agrees in relationship, what is seen cannot change your direction. It's power and majesty are enough to support his authority. Tell your neighbor. When you succeed, you honor God and advance the cause of your people as well. You cannot afford to fail. Tell your neighbor, I cannot afford to fail. As a man of faith, on your journey to the throne, when it seems there is no hope. There is no future. We should learn to use our weapons of testimony and confession. Rise up for prayer. You can now begin to discover where your problem lies. Your problem is not issue of this or that. As I have said, God has given everyone the measure of faith. With faith, we act with him. But when the faith is bland, can we act? When faith is bland, the next thing, someone will be the one to be telling you about God. Go to TV Joshua. Don't go to TV Joshua. Go to John. Don't go to John. John is, is, a, is Satan. John is not Satan. Go this way. Go that way. My father, my spiritual father, spiritual mommy. Go here. Go this way. That is when faith is blind and we cannot see. Satan does not want us to live a life of faith. Let alone see the other side. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So we lift up our voice. In all situations, ask the Lord to open the eyes of your faith that you may see his protecting hand. Prayer. Demande au Seigneur d'ouvrir les yeux de ta foi afin que tu puisses voir la main puissante de Dieu qui te protège. In 
the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, as a man of faith, you are working with the Lord. I am working with the Lord. Therefore, the battle for survival is not a personal challenge, but the Lord's. Why do you now take the battle as if it's your battle? That is why you have problem today. This is what Joseph said. I am working with the Lord. Therefore, the battle for survival is not a personal challenge, but the Lord. My journey to the throne, I cannot afford to fear. If I succeed, I honor God and advance the cause of my people as well. This means I am a representative both of God and of my people. We see our problem as if it's our personal challenge. That is why we are bothering about it. If you do not see the fight as a personal challenge, your heart will be deeply engaged with God. The battle for survival is not a personal challenge, but the loss. If Joseph's heart was troubled, he would not survive the situation in the prison. But your heart is troubled. There was inner joy in him. That was why he was able to survive. Joseph knew that the security of God was beyond the prison. Joseph knew that the security of God was beyond the slavery. Right now, lift up your voice. Ask God, open the eyes of my faith that I may see your protecting hand. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. viewers all over the world, whatever medium you are using to view us, all you need to do is to use your faith to put a demand on the anointing. Your healing is on the way to you. Your deliverance is on the way to you. Get ready to receive your blessing. Get ready to receive your freedom. In the name of Jesus. It is time now to receive your blessing. Right now, get ready to receive your deliverance. Deliverance means free spirit. Many be just believe, believe deliverance is delivered from the from the no free spirit. You need to be free. You need free spirit to act with God. Being delivered is being given dominion over Satan. Dominion over evil. Dominion over devil. Viewers all over the world. Listen, 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 listen. Tear your heart. This is instruction from above. My heart. This is instruction from above. Right now, I press in. To touch you, Jesus, deliver me, Jesus, deliver me. I press you to touch you, Jesus. I can see the seraphim presently in the house. Are you ready for touch? Open your lips and let your seraphim touch me. Touch me. Let your seraphim touch me. Pray
answered woman you have great faith your request is granted thank you Jesus and Jesus said who touched me somebody touched me for I perceived power going out from me now when the woman saw that she was not hidden she declared to him the reason she touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace Thank you. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a message from the heart. When you look at the whole thing, Christianity has become just a surface. Human wisdom. Christianity seems to be human wisdom. There's no difference any longer between Christianity and religion. So even when you listen to the news or whatever, the comment, they classified them as religion. Christianity is not a religion. Jesus came to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man. He came to restore this relationship. Christianity lies in the heart. It's all about the word of God in our heart. Tell your neighbor. 
I can hear you. Look, but today, Christianity has turned to the word of God in our mouth. People really just confess, I'm a Christian, simple. Your neighborhood knows you are coming to the church. And consequently, that you are a Christian, you are a believer. Are you searching heart? That is the question we need to ask. Because you carry Bible, you carry cross, you bear Joshua, you bear Timothy, you bear Deborah. Are you searching heart? If you are searching heart, that is work of faith. The Bible is talking about. Amen. Are you searching hearts? In the name of Jesus, are you searching hearts? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you searching hearts? That is what Christianity is all about. That is what Jesus is interested in. That is what pleases Jesus. You are in the church. Are you searching hearts? Are you telling me your spirit is inside the church? Let's quickly look at the book of Colossians, chapter 3. Living as those made alive in Christ. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly. Take note of that. Not on what? Not on earthly. Let me take you to verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Take note of that. Whatever you do, work at it with all all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human master. As working for the Lord, not for human master, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as what? As a reward. You take your time to read that Colossian book and the first Chronicle 28, verse 9, and James 4, verse 3, and the book of Luke 16, verse 15, where you get home. Here you are. In the church, are you searching heart? Because Christianity lies in the heart. Jesus looks at our motive behind our action. Jesus looks at our world. Motive behind what? But men look at the action. You are sitting down. You are laughing. That is all one man can say. But Jesus looked at motive behind your seat. I mean, Jesus looks at why you do what you do. He look why. But men look at what you do. TV Joshua. But the motive behind it, that is what Christianity is all about. You believe God, it will rain. And you go ahead and plant crops. That is what Christianity is all about. That is what Christianity is all about. I believe it will rain. And I go ahead and plant crops. 
without waiting for the rain. That's people see you as Christian because you are called Joshua, you are called Timothy, you are called Deborah, you are called Esther. And you go to church as a pastor, as a Christian, as a bishop, as a prophet. And you have sound knowledge of the scripture. But don't forget, a man may be a Christian, but not such in heart. A man may have a sound knowledge of the Bible, and not searching hearts. In that first Chronicle 28, verse 9, the Lord searches all hearts and understand all the intent of the thoughts. If you are not searching heart, how do you speak to God? How will God speak to you? Because the Bible says. The word of God in our heart is our contact with God. Let someone say, the word of God in our heart is our contact with God. It is his contact with us too. You want to speak to me? The word of God in my heart will contact. I want to speak to him, the word of God in my heart how do you speak to God when you are not searching hard? You have been dancing since morning. Are you searching hard? Whatever your heart engage on influences your conduct and your character. Whatever your heart engage on influences your conduct and your character. If your heart does not contact the word of God, nothing can be achieved. Nothing and nothing can be achieved in God if your heart does not. You can be seen as a Christian because you are often seen with the Bible. Big cross. But God does not see you as such because of the motive behind your being Christian. The new year is about. You cannot continue this way. Because if you continue this way, without God's word in your heart, people see you as a Christian, whereas you cannot contact God, and God cannot contact you. What kind of Christian is this? You cannot contact God, and God cannot contact you. The only means, the only grace to contact you is that word in your heart. But where is that word in your heart? The next year, It's not going to be this year. In attitude, in character, in challenging, in trial, in condition. Tell your neighbor, man has the power to testify, to witness about Christ. A man can say, oh, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Redeemer, Jesus is Healer, Jesus is this. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish shall have everlasting life. Man has that power. But the Holy Spirit testifies, witnesses. Knowing fact about Jesus does not change our relationship with him. Knowing fact about Jesus does not change our relationship with him. 
So read your Bible with devotion. Discover what God has to say to you each day. Discover what God has to say to you each day. Tell your neighbor, no fact about Jesus does not change our relationship with him. Again? So, read your Bible with devotion. When you see someone who is doing good, very nice, don't be in haste to see him as good. Because you don't know his motive. This is what they have been using to deceive you, you politician, all over the world. When they say, hey, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, they give you money, they give you food, they give you everything, they do the campaign, they do, they do, they do. But when they get to the position, they change. Hey, I will do this. I will do this. You follow them. You rally. You follow them. Hey, 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 hey. You will build the school. You will do this. You will train. You will, train. You will improve the school. You will improve the improve economy all over the world. You see, hey, hey, it's good to do the food. Bring money out to the city. Share money. Give everyone. But you follow. By the time they get there, story change. When you see someone who is doing good and loving, don't be in haste because you don't know his motive. When you see someone who is preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, claiming to witness for Christ, Let us take our time before call him pastor or Christian because you don't know his motive. Jesus' focus is the motive behind what we do, what you do, and why you do it. That is his focus. His focus is what? Motive behind what? What we do, why we do, what you say, why you say. That is his focus. So many of us have been deceived when it comes to relationship because a man is very nice, a woman is nice, care and loving. He says, oh, you forgot him. You say, hey, this is nice person. But as time goes on, story change. Man has the power to decide. You can decide to just walk out of this place. The Spirit of God will not grab you and say, no, don't go, don't go. You can decide, no, as we are talking, say, no, 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 what this man is saying, I can't, I can't be, I, I can't stand it. And walk out. And the Spirit of God, Jesus will not say, No, come back, come back. He will leave you to go. That's discretion given to everyone. That is why Jesus asked the man at the pool of Bethesda. He said to him, What will I do for you? What do you want me to do? He said, No, I have been here for many years. No one to carry me to the pool. What do you want me to do now? If the man says, no, 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 don't talk to me, walk go your way, this is, mm, it will leave him. That is discretion. The man says, please help me. Man has the power to decide. You can decide to pray, which many of us have been doing. Just when you have problems, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can decide to pray early morning. It's, your, it's a normal routine. You wake up in the morning, early morning. You say, oh, 
Children, let us pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of, you are the one praying. Jesus does not know. Exercising the will through the mind. Exercising the will, the will through mind. But Holy Spirit has the power of choice. Jesus tests our heart to reward us. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Mm, all this gara 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 running let us get her. I'm a pastor and a Christian and this carry this carry this hey, 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 hey. All this appearance, all this shouting, hey, hey, pray, fasting, hey, my, my God. Go to the mountain. Hey, hey. They say, oh, this man is a prayer warrior. Is this that? Jesus tests our heart to reward us. The question remains Are you such in heart? What is your motive? Jesus tests our heart to give us according to our effort. Tell your neighbor, Jesus tests our heart to give us according to our effort. I can hear you. What is the state of your heart? Your heart must be at its best because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Father, expresses himself through your heart. The Spirit of God expresses himself through your heart. Now this, in the name of Jesus, are you searching heart? Amen. Are you searching heart? Let us pray. Are you searching heart? Are you searching heart? This is why it's always difficult to go through trial. No one can go through trial without the word in the heart. No one can say Jesus is Lord without the word in the heart. Tell your neighbor. So, where are we going? And I'm very, very sure. That's why I'm saying this. A lot of percentage in our mission are not searching hearts. That is why I'm bitter. For you to go New Year with trial I'm seeing, with tribulation I'm seeing with situation that is coming hmm. you need the word of God in your heart to contact Jesus <laughs> tell your neighbor I need the word in my heart to contact who? It is the word Jesus also used to contact you. The word in your heart. The word in your heart. But I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking around. If you are my neighbor, I will know. If you share the same inheritance, I will know. If you are my family, I will know. I can see. This is just celebration. Percentage of us here. For how long shall we continue this? Trial, persecution, tribulation. No one can say Jesus is Lord genuinely without a word in the heart. 
genuinely, anybody can say Jesus is Lord. You don't need last says for that. But genuinely, genuinely. So, rise up and let us pray. I say to your heart, awake. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is at the door of your heart. Say, my heart. Awake. The Holy Spirit is at the door of my heart. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit is there knocking. Say, awake, awake, awake. That is open the door. The Holy Spirit is at the door of your heart. Right now. I say to your heart, awake. Awake. In Jesus' name. Committing the word of God to memory is valuable, but does not bring Jesus to the sea. Tell your neighbor, committing the word of God to memory is valuable, but does not bring Jesus to the scene. Learning the history of the book of the Bible is valuable. You learn, you can be a lecturer, you can teach, you can get your daily bread, you get your money, it's valuable, but does not bring Jesus to the sin. Apprendre l'histoire des livres de la Bible est valable, n'a même pas Jésus Christ sur la scène. You say, in the name of Jesus, where is Jesus? Because the way is not from your heart. My heart, hear the voice of God. My heart. Hear the voice of God, my heart, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, my heart, hear the voice of God, my heart, hear the voice of Holy, say my heart, my heart. Hear, hear the voice of God, my heart. Hear the voice of Holy Spirit, my heart, my heart. Hear, hear the voice of God, my heart, my heart. When you pray, you do not receive. When you ask, you do not receive because you pray, you ask with wrong motive. That is why you don't receive. I'm not surprised. I know many of you just let it's a, it's a, it's a normal life. We have to pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the evening. 
You just pray, not that you pray, you do not receive. You ask, you do not receive. Because you ask with wrong motive. Wrong motive could be there's no word in your heart. And the word in our heart make us Christian. The word of God in our heart make us Christian. The word of God in our heart is our contact with Jesus. It is his contact with us. So, now you need this word. Now you are about to enter the new year. By the time you leave here, you, you know the next thing to do is not to go to the party. You are to work on your spiritual life. Because you can see reason now. For someone to be saying he's a Christian, whereas Jesus himself does not know. It's not in the record that you are a Christian, you are a religious person. Nothing makes us a Christian, the word in our hearts. The word in our heart is our contact. Hello. And the Lord will say, Hi, what do you want? The word in your heart. The word in your heart. That is why you must have freedom, a free heart, a heart without a crutch. We have damaged our heart. Not seeing a grudge, not say bad feeling towards other, damage our hearts. Tell your neighbor, not seeing a grudge, not seeing pain of the past, not seeing bitterness, not seeing envy, not seeing jealousy, not seeing bad feeling towards others, damage our hearts. And the same heart is a contact point. The Bible says the spirit of Father expresses himself through our hearts. And the heart we are talking about is damage. We have to begin to repair your heart. The spirit of Father expresses himself through our heart. And the same heart is damaged. Not see pain of the past. Not see grudge. Not see bad feeling towards others. You say, no, I don't know, I will not agree, I will not agree. Not see unforgiven spirits. Damaged hearts. So you can see now. So you have to work now. You have a lot of work to do. Because I don't want you to enter a new year with all this. And you continue to say, it's a wishes and wizard. Wishes and wizard. Wishes and wizard. Your partner is the one that attacking you. Nobody attack you. You are the one that made your heart. There is no landing for God. There is no point for God to talk to you. There must be point. Hello? Hello? Through what? Heart. The word in the heart is our contact with God. It is his contact with us. But heart is damaged. Tell your neighbor, forgive them. Tell your neighbor, forgive them. I'm not saying forgive him. I say forgive them. Say forgive them. That's all. And move forward. So let us pray for our nation, your country, your continent, your flag. You have any contact? Raise it already, so Ask God to redeem your nation, your leaders. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
notre pays et vos leaders. Ahora mismo levante una oración por sus líderes y su nación. Open your lips. Ask God to redeem your country. Demande à Dieu de racheter votre pays. Redeem your nation. Dile a Dios que redima su nación. Your leaders. De racheter votre nation, vos leaders. Que redima sus líderes, su su país. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. I can hear you. Right now, commit your journey of righteousness. Ask God to continue to strengthen you because when you live here, you continue the journey of righteousness. With the message you have received today, journey of righteousness, journey of uprightness, Journey, journey, journey of holiness. Ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to strengthen you in your journey of righteousness, uprightness, holiness, faithfulness, obedience, humility, love. Demande à Dieu de vous fortifier dans votre parcours de justice, de fidélité, de sainteté, d'obéissance et d'amour. Pidele a Dios que continue fortaleciendo en tu viaje de justicia. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Santidad y fidelidad en el nombre de Jesús. Don't forget, Christianity lies in the heart. Whatever you do, whatever you say, must be such in heart. I pray the Lord give you obedient heart. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Emmanuel. Our message today. What God requires. Let someone say, what God requires. Once again, I know everyone will want to hear this. You really want to know what God requires? That is what God wants from me. What God wants from you. Amen. Go now, we worship you. values in man is beyond human discernment. What God values in me is beyond human discernment. And this is planted in the heart. The book of Colossians 3 verse 10 says, In our heart we are made to be like Jesus. You may have oblong fish, round fish, fat, thin, short, tall. In our heart we are made to be like Jesus. When mice agreed in a relationship. What is seen, what circumstances look like, what people say or what people do concerning the relationship cannot affect it. What God requires of me, of you, 
does not consist in the fat of rams, burnt offerings, costly sacrifice, praying and fasting, or waving of hands in worship without a thorough reformation of heart and life. What Jesus requires is planted in our heart. In First Samuel chapter 15, I take my reading from verse 22. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Samuel said to King Saul, it is better to obey the Lord than to sacrifice the best chick to him. Costly sacrifice to him. Rebellion against God is as bad as witchcraft. Arrogance is as sinful as idolatry. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with You may be seated. Many who will readily part with their sacrifice will not be persuaded to part with their sin. It is easy to part with our belongings, but it is very difficult to part with sin. To part with your trillion dollars, your estates, your money, your property, but very difficult to part with sin. What then does God require of us? Ask your neighbor. I can hear you. Let me take you to the book of Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contract heart. A broken and contract what? That is a repentant and penitent spirit. I mean to be very sorry 
around there. Foolish people don't care if they sin. Good people want to be forgiven. Each time good people commit sin, they are troubled in their mind. Troubled because it is not their way to sin. When you get home, open your Bible to the book of Psalm 40, verse 12. Psalm 38, verse 4. Romans 7, verse 15. And uh, Proverbs 14, verse 9. In other words, those who will come to God must do so with humility and sincerity of mind. Not confession in the form of waving of hands in worship without a thorough reformation of heart and life. Man may do much by outward restraints, but only God can help them to stop sin. My pastor is coming. I don't want to smoke. I'm a Christian. I don't want to lie. I am born again. I don't want to drink alcohol. Without God being involved, you will fail. We get up in the morning determined To get it right, before we know it, we have sinned. Every time we determine to do what is right, before we know it, something else, something contrary, crosses our mind. This is what Paul meant. In that book of Romans 7, verse 15. My desire is to do good, but I find myself doing what is against my desire. This is my desire.
Thank you, Lord. Every time we determine to do what is right, something else, something contrary crosses your mind. This shows that sin is a spiritual thing. Unless God is involved, no one can say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Tell your neighbor. Paul was quick to confess, acting against his own way. I want to eat apple, but I find myself eating what? Carrots. Can you see? I find myself eating what? Acting against my own will. Sin is a spiritual thing. No one can say no to sin or yes to righteousness unless God is involved. Draw me close to you. Thank you very much. Never Papa. let me go. I lay it all down again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful. To see you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. Lord Jesus, no one else will do. Let us see your hand. Let us see your hand. What's your been? It's a wonderful song. Because nothing else can take your place hallelujah hallelujah to feel the warmth of your embrace thank you lord help me find a way help me find a way bring me back bring me back to you
This is the air I breathe, Lord. This is the air I breathe. Hallelujah. We really enjoy your message. Tell your neighbor, we are all weak. In that message, man may do much by outward restraints. I want you to know that it is not a matter of combining strength. This is God's strength. This is your strength. It is not a matter of Johnny's strength. Combining our own strength with God's strength. It is a matter of exchanging Our strength with God's strength. Forget about yours. Mm. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke. Mm. No, no. Look. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't remind me born again. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Mm -mm -mm. Man may do much by outward restraints. Only God can help them to stop sinning. It is a matter of exchanging our own strength with God's own. You are my strength. When Thank I you. am weak, Hallelujah. you are the treasure that I seek. You are my only oh, Lord. Seeking you as a precious you, love to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my own.
may be seated. Glory be to God. What then does God require of us? Do not think that your crying <laughs> and complaint can force him to become sentimental. And complaint can force him to become sentimental and then come to a level so cheap. Jesus' objectivity is based, is founded on commitment and genuineness of faith. Of all graces, faith honors Christ most. Let's want say, of all graces, faith honors Christ most. Therefore, of all graces, Christ honors faith most. Whichever way you show your action, your complaint, whether you cry aloud, like blam back nail, son of David, have mercy on me, oh, son of David, have mercy on me, son of David, have mercy on me, or you sit hopelessly. Before your mountain, before your trouble, like a man at the pool of Bethesda who sat hopelessly. One thing is clear if your action is genuine, Holy Spirit affected. If your crying is genuine, Holy Spirit affected. If your complaint is genuine, Holy Spirit affects your worship must be pure. Your worship, hallelujah, must be pure. The requirement of purity must be kept. Sacrifice are to be Offered from a pure heart. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice are to be offered from a pure heart. A heart that is pure. A heart that does not bear grudges. A heart that is humble and sincere. Not a rebellious one. Let someone say what God requires. I can hear you. Rise up. And I want you to speak to yourself now. What God requires of me? A heart that is pure. A heart that does not bear grudges. A heart that is humble and sincere, not a rebellious one. Right now, 
I want you to stretch your hand. Let's speak to those who are under the influence of this telecast. What God requires of you? A heart that is pure. A heart that does not bear grudges. A heart that is humble and sincere, not a rebellious one. For those who are under the influence of this telecast, anywhere you are, receive a heart that is pure in the name of Jesus Christ. A heart that does not bear grudges in Jesus' name. A heart that is humble and sincere, not a rebellious one. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May God bless his way. What God requires. What God values in me is beyond human design and this is planted in the heart what God requires of me of you does not consist in the fat of rounds bond offerings costly sacrifice praying and fasting or waving of hands in worship without a thorough reformation of heart and life rebellion against God is as bad as witchcraft. Arrogance is as sinful as idolatry. It is easy to part with our belongings. Your estate, your money, your property, but very difficult to part with sin. What then does God require of us? A broken and contract what? That is a repentant and penitent spirit. Foolish people don't care if they sin. Good people want to be forgiven. Each time good people commit sin, they are troubled in their mind. Troubled because it is not their way to sin. Sin is a spiritual thing. Unless God is involved, no one can say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Man may do much by outward restraints, but only God can help them to stop sin. It is not a matter of combining our own strength with God's strength. It is a matter of exchanging our strength with God's strength. Forget about yours. Jesus' objectivity is based, is founded on commitment and genuineness of faith. Of all graces, faith honors 
Christ most. Therefore, of all graces, Christ honors faith most. Your worship, hallelujah, must be pure. The requirement of purity must be kept. Sacrifice has to be offered from a pure heart. Tell your neighbor, sacrifice has to be offered from a pure heart. A heart that is pure, a heart that does not bear grudges, a heart that is humble and sincere, not a rebellious one. What God requires of me, a heart that is pure, a heart that does not bear grudges, a heart that is humble and sincere, not a rebellious one. What God requires. Good morning, church. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Viewers all over the world. We recognize you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Today we shall look at the practical side of Christianity. When we say practical side of Christianity, we talk of the Spirit of God Himself, that is life through the Spirit. Turn your Bible with me. We take our reading from the book of Romans 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, law, L-A-W, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You see, where you see sin, you see death. Because they are synonymous. Sin, S-I-N, and death. They are synonymous. I mean, the same father, the same mother. The same family. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. Let's now go to our proof test. I'll take this proof test from verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Mm. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. It means if you are not worship God in spirit, you are not one. Because God is spirit and his worshiper do so in spirit and what? I can hear you. If you are not worshiping him in spirit, you are not one of the children. God is spirit, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Think about that. Mm. You can judge yourself. 
You can know whom you are serving if you are one of them. This means God is spirit. If we do not worship God, who is in the spirit, you will be led by your emotion. That is intellectually. That is what you see, what you hear, what and how you feel. If there is no money in your pocket, you say, Jesus, because. If there is money, you say, Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Many of us are here today because you have some money with you. Sometime in the past, when there were no money, you were not here. Because you are not led by the Spirit. When there's no food on the table, you say, oh, why? No church, no prayer. When there's food on the table, you say, oh, hallelujah, man. What our circumstances look like, if it's good, when you want to pray, you say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm sick. My leg is paining me. Because you know there's no time you will not have one or two things. What man wants is unlimited. So when are you going to say in your prayer, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Seeking miracle, miracle, miracle. Salvation is there. Seek first, kingdom. Oh, Lord. If we do not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit, can we hope to obtain his favor and acceptance? Can we hope to obtain his what? His favor and acceptance. Can we hope? So we miss the end of worship. May we worship for ourselves. This is why you say, mm, you pray, you pray, you pray. So frustrating. Viewers all over the world, wherever you are. I know you are listening to me. My message is in your bedroom, it's in your room, wherever you are. Where can you go from this person? If you are under the influence of my voice, listen to me. There is no difference between here and where you are. Believing is our connection. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Act on His guidance. Act on His what? On His guidance. Because man has ability to look. Holy Spirit looks as He wills. Man has ability to talk. Holy Spirit talks as He wills. How will you know who is talking to you? Whether it's TB Joshua or Holy Spirit himself. When you are not in the spirit, you can't know. This is why our life is epileptic, up, down. We don't know the true ministers of God. You don't know. You only listen to the eloquence. Power to speak, friendliness. No, these are man natural games. You know, the Holy Spirit has a mind. The Holy Spirit has a mind. When you read the book of Acts 16, verse 6 to 7, Holy Spirit has a mind. In that book of Romans 8, verse 27, the mind of Holy Spirit. A person has the ability to decide. No, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. You, you have the ability to decide. That is, exercise the will through the mind. To exercise the will through the mind. Holy Spirit has the power of choice. When the pastor is talking, you need to know who is talking. Don't go by the ability to present or to deliver. 
No. Anybody can deliver without the power of Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit has the power of choice. But you has the ability to decide. That is, exercise the way through the mind. Tell your neighbor, commit yourself to the guidance of the world. I can hear you. I can hear you. Viewers all over the world, say to your neighbor or say to yourself, commit yourself to the guidance of the world. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Yes, commit yourself to the guidance of the world. Because God's word refreshes our mind. And his spirit renews our strength. Where can we go from his presence? When one does not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit? The worship is defective. Are you with me? When one does not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit? The worship is defective. It's defective. That is carnal. Dealing only in the letter. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Dealing only in the letter. And referring to the spirit and the sign. Which are at a distance. By types and ceremonies. No, I want to read, just read what is here. Okay, Jesus is not sorry, said it. No, 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 whatever we read, we need to examine it in the light of God's word. Because Holy Spirit gives us the word. That is, the word is the tool in the hands of Holy Spirit. This word is tool. Look at it. This is two mic. This is me. If I'm not talking to this mic, mic cannot joke. So, in the same way, the word is the tool in the hands of the Holy Spirit. He gives us the word. If the word does not pass through him, you are speaking to yourself, you are speaking of yourself. It is easier to say what God is not than to say what God is. I take it back again. It is easier to say what God is not than to say what God is. We oftentimes say, the Spirit of God said this, the Spirit of God said that. When our worship is canon, where do you see the Spirit of God? How do you manage to hear from the Spirit of God when your worship is carnal? When we know this, when you are not called, you should be made sure Jesus says, Jesus says, it's not. I'm talking to your church. We must depend upon God's Spirit for strength and assistance. Laying our soul under his influences and oppression. We must worship him with fitness of thought and a flame of affection. You know, with all within you, with all within me, my heart, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my hair, my shoulder, my knee, my toes, my hair, my shoulder, my knees, 
my toe, they all belong to you. Sit down, sit down. Worship him with fierceness of thought and a flame of affection. I mean, with all that is within us. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, is the honor of my soul. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, he is the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the owner, he is the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the This is a call from the book of Romans 1, verse 9. When you start reading from verse 1 to the end, that's the message of Paul. Worship him with fierceness of thought and a flame of affection with all that is within you. Or commit yourself to the guidance of the world. No one can obey the word of God without being led by the Holy Spirit. You must be led by the Holy Spirit to obey the word of God. If not, how will you? Because the Holy Spirit gives the words. The word is a tool in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Tools. With this, our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. Obedience is. Tell your neighbor, our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. I mean, it's not the issue. Obedience is. You must read, study to live, not just read to teach or to preach, but to live. Our knowledge of the scripture is not the issue. Obedience is. You can master and quote the chapter and verses in the Bible for years. and hear thousands of sermon and read many Christian books. But still, we're spiritual dappers. That is, spiritual baby? Yes, still, we're spiritual dappers. Upon your knowledge of the scriptures, the second Timothy chapter 3 verse 7. We are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Hmm. That is, you are, you are good in listening to sermon. They say everyone listen to me. You can leave here today and go to another crusade from another crusade to another crusade, from another crusade to another crusade, you are good in that. 
we are very, very good in that. Even as we are talking now, many came from one church to this church. They attend one church and to another church. After this play, they go to another church. This is our job. We are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. We can pay tight four, five, six churches. You are a membership of almost four, five, six, seven churches. That is our job. Many of us here, we have finished this Bible three to four times in a year. We take it as a duty to read Bible from Genesis to Revelation three to four times in a year. But yes. Jesus does not know you because he's in spirit and his worshiper must do so in spirit. Talking to him in spirit, relate with him in spirit. We must commit ourselves to the guidance of the word. We so much believe that once you are a member of a certain church, you are a Christian, and when you die, they will bury you as a Christian. It does not mean you go to heaven. This ceremony. On the last day, Jesus will say, No. Give only in the letter and refine to the spirit and the sign which are at a distance by types and ceremony. I want you to think about this because I don't want us to miss ourselves on the last day. Hey, because there is another fellowship. Do you know there is another fellowship in heaven. No, there is another fellowship in heaven. So you think the fellowship is saying, yeah. This is just a reflection. But you know when you point a light, so see this light, we see the reflection here. That is the earth. Where the light come from? Heaven. Heaven. No matter how many years you spend on earth, it's like turning back to heaven. If you spend 100 years here on earth, it's like turning back. It means home. Our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. It's not the issue. Obedience is. You find time to read the book of Second Timothy, chapter 3. You take your reading from verse 1 to end, and the proof test to be 7. God bless his well. God's word is his gift to mankind. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that Christ and his word are one. Learn to dream again as we look to God through his word by his spirit. Get ready to open your heart to God's word, faith and spirit as we listen to what God has to say in today's standard for life. And where? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And hallelujah. You know, People conscious of their problem, not God. You know, to be conscious, to think. 
hey, 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 I would like to get out of this. If you are now begin to be conscious of God, you can never be conscious of your problem again. Because you are conscious of your problem, you can never be conscious of God. And when you are conscious of God, you can never be conscious of your problem. It's not possible to be conscious of two. It is one thing that goes through your heart. You see, at the time you are thinking of joy, your achievement, the success you make, at that moment you forget about your failure, your setback. But when the issue of failure now take over your heart and begin to think about it, then you forget about the success you have made. In the same day, when you are thinking of your problem, you cannot also think of God, unless you drop that problem and begin to think of God. So it is time now you should now begin to be God's consciousness instead of your problem. And when you are conscious of your problem, you are not in fear. And two does not go. It is your problem and Satan that go together. They are synonymous. But God and your problem cannot go together. So I'm sure that when you are conscious of your problem, you are conscious of Satan. Because your problem and Satan are synonymous. But you may not know. You say you are a Christian, but you may not know. You just think, ah, I'm having this pain. It's paining me. It's paining me. Where I'm going to church. I'm having pain. I have pain. You are conscious of pain. You are conscious of Satan. But because he's the one responsible for it. The same thing when you say, ha, glory be to God. They have paid me the money. <laughs> oh God. I'm happy now. Yes, yes. You are conscious of joy. You are conscious of God. Because God behind it. You may not know that indirectly you are watching Satan. Indirectly you are confessing Satan. And that nullify your confession of God. Tell your neighbor, that nullify your confessing of God. Indirectly, you are confessing Satan when you are conscious of your problem. Indirectly, 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 you are confessing Satan. Because Satan is behind your problem. When you are conscious of your problem, that nullify your confession of God. So what are you thinking about now? Turn it over and over and over. Don't just begin to meditate it. Meditation cannot solve the problem just like that. You have to meditate and turn it. Your constancy. When you say it's an achiever, it means it has been consistent in what he's doing. It's not because uh, he jumped once. He said, ah, the man knew how to jump. He will have to jump many times. Jump many times. Yesterday he jumped where? Well. Yesterday he jumped where? Well. Three days ago he jumped where? Well. Four days ago he jumped where? Well. Who do well? You can see his consistency in what he's doing. It will be too soon to say someone, oh, the man is, is wonderful. It's wonderful. The consistency is what we call a shiva. This is why the Bible says the beginner is not the owner but the finisher. A shiva needs to pass through the valley of shadow there before you can be an shiva. We call shadow there recitation. R E A L, recitation. A situation that beyond human. You cannot run to God's Father to help you because it's beyond your God's Father. Only God. That is achieved if you pass through it. So, 
What are you thinking about? Don't just stop thinking. Don't just stop meditating because you are here. After living here, you stop meditating. What is happening on the outside overwhelms you. You forget your inward man. Your inward man needs to eat. In the same way your outward man eats. Inward man eats through meditation. He eat through what? Meditation in the word of God. Tell your neighbor, when you live here, you feed your outward man. I can hear you. When you live here, you feed your outward man with food. Don't forget your inward man. Need to eat. He eat through meditation in the word of God. And uh, remember you feed your outward man morning, afternoon, evening. So in the same day, you have to feed your inward man morning, afternoon, evening. That is to feed your inward man morning and afternoon, evening. You have to turn it around, meditate over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over to feed him constantly. That is what I mean by turn it over and over and over in your heart. Some will say, what will I think about? What will I meditate about? There is a word anointed for you to flush out and to make your way sharper. There is a word anointed for you. Take more of me, O Lord. Give me more of you. Take more of me, give me more of you, O oh Lord. That is what you begin to meditate. Meditate, meditate. Med- that is the summary of the whole Bible. I told you that the way builds the nature of Christ. When you say, Take more of me, if you take more of you, you are more of yourself. When you are more of yourself, it has to do with unfaithfulness, hatred, pride, greed, food of flesh. That is you. That is you. And God is food of spirit, faith, obedience, humility, kindness, goodness. These are the things you are saying. Take more of me. That is my unfaithfulness. Give me your faithfulness. That is what you are saying. Which is the summary of the whole Bible. Take more of me. That is your disobedience. And give me your obedience. Oh Lord. Take more of me. I want you to say it aloud with me. Take more of me. me. Give me more of you. you. Oh Oh Lord. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Yes, sir. So these are the where that would be turning over and over and over and over in your heart. God's word is his gift to mankind. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that Christ and his word are one. Learn to dream again as we look to God through his word by his spirit. Get ready to open your heart to God's word, faith and spirit as we listen to what God has to say in today's standard for life. Right, so let's offer this prayer. You ask God to give you the grace not to be ignorant of your faith under pressure of temptation, pressure of temptation of sickness, disease, or whatever. Ask God to give you grace. Give me grace, Lord, not to be ignorant of my faith under the pressure of temptation, pressure of tension of temptation of sickness, disease, hardship, set by 
de maladie, de la grâce, de ne pas être ignorant de ta foi face à la pression de la tentation, de le, des épreuves, de la maladie ou des difficultés. Pídele a Dios que te dé la gracia de no ser ignorante de tu fe, bajo tentación, bajo problemas. Whatever you are facing under that temptation, ask God, Lord Jesus, give me the grace not to be ignorant of my faith under the pressure of temptation of your situation. What is your situation? Because when the situation comes, we seem to forget that we are Christian. Demandez à Dieu de vous donner la grâce d'être conscient de votre foi, même face à l'adversité ou aux difficultés. In Jesus Christ's name. You know, you seem to forget when you are facing a challenge, when you are facing a situation, you seem to forget that you are what God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. You seem to forget you have what God says you have with God, with you, all things are possible. You seem to forget when you are facing situation. You and God together, you seem to forget that you and God can move mountain. You seem to forget when you are facing difficulty. You have to come together, you and who? You and God must come together, join hand together. There's no monte, and there shall be no monte. You and God. But you seem to forget this when you are facing what? Difficulty. You need to remember the more difficult and try up time you have been facing in the past. The key to succeed in life, if you're a child of God. Anytime there's difficulty, quickly remember the more trial and difficult time you faced in the past. This will impart strength to face the present difficulty you have. have. Just take your time to remember. This is what happened to, to Defi. Defi walked majestically to King and said, King, I'm going to face this gladiator that has disturbing my brother and country. The king looked at him, who are you? He said, yes, I used my bare hand to kill the bear. And then when this man came to disturb their country, he quickly remember the difficult and trial time he overcame. And he now look at Bear to Goliath. He said to them, let me face this man. So in the same day, that is the key for you. To defeat your present situation. Tell your neighbor, this is the key to defeat my present situation. Yeah, you can use the same key to open and to lock. Remember, David remembered, and he walked majestically to the king. Take your time. Sit down. Anytime you are facing a challenge or situation, remember the more difficult and trial time you had in the past and you overcame. So that will impart strength to face your present situation. I don't know what I can face now that could be greater than the one I have faced in the past. 
Can you see? In the same day, I don't know what you can face now that can be greater than the one you have passed through in the past. Once you remember this, that will impart a strength to face your present situation. You remember half of us here came from village. If not 90% of people here came from the village. You should remember those days when you are drinking dirty water. But today you are drinking pure water and yet yellow fever. Now you are drinking pure water. Where does the fever come from? Tell me. You, you are from the village. You remember in those days when you cook soup, this soup can spend 10 days. You keep warming the soup. Keep warming the soup. And the more you warm, the more it's sweet. Can you warm the soup today? When you cook soup today, can you warm it tomorrow and eat it again? But in the village, these are the things that brought you up. Remember how you were born. Many of you were not born in the hospital. The people you call your enemy now, you know you were a little baby in their prayer. They are the one feeding you when you are a baby. Your mommy alone cannot take care of you. They will leave you, you'll be roaming about, moving around, moving around. You move around them, but today you have seen them as someone who can kill you. So this is the key I'm giving you today. That any time you are facing a difficult challenge, remember the more difficult and trial time you had in the past. This will impart what? To what? To face what? To face your present situation. You need strength. Are you talking of your career? Remember the kind of school you attended in the village? School without roof. School without what? You study there under the rain, under the sun, but today look at what you become. And if you don't know the kind of school you attended in the village in those days, go back to the village, go and see where those children are studying now. So these are the things you put together. When you think about all this, you know no one can stop you. Say, only me can stop myself. No one can stop me. No one can stop you. You can only stop yourself. If you could not be stopped then, now no one can stop you. So you need strength to fall down. This is how I nurture myself. No matter what comes to me now, when I just remember, when I just sit down and look at my antecedents, my antecedent, where I am coming from, what I've gone through, and whatever happened now, I smile. I say, you are a baby. I smile. Once you don't trade your joy with your situation, you overcome. Tell your neighbor, stop trading your joy with your situation. Once you stop trading your joy with your situation, you will always overcome. Because you need joy to overcome a situation. No matter how big the situation, if you don't trade your joy with that situation, you overcome it. But once joy is gone, you cannot overcome the situation. This is what situation wants to take away from you. You want to take away your joy? <laughs> My God.
He wants to see you sad. Situation wants to see you what? He wants to see you sad. And once the situation comes and you are sad, I will let go over this. Oh my God, this is too much for me. Then under that situation, you cannot pray. Under that situation, you cannot think of God. Under that situation, oh, immediately you lose a sense of reasoning. Anybody around you is your enemy. You will not be able to give your best. There's a phone call. I pick it. And I, <laughs> I pick it. I say, hello, your house is, is on fire. You mean my house? Yes, it's serious. Firefighter, they are there. You know I was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> People around me will say, what happened? What happened just now? What happened now? I'm coming, I'm coming. I have traded my war with war. <laughs> Look at you, you are happy now. Satan knows what he can do to stop that happiness. He knows. As you are dancing, 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 they just... Somebody want to see you. Huh? Where? You know, see me. Where? <laughs> Don't make it very easy for Satan. Somebody is fighting you, fighting you. Just your strength you have that to fight by. You just relax. You, make, you just make it cheap. You are dancing. Somebody just say, somebody want to see you. Just, somebody want to say, where? Where? Somebody want to say where? Okay, there, I'm coming. You want to feel it dancing? <laughs> How many of you can do that? Have you ever finished dancing before you attend to somebody want to see you? No, I know you. So please, stop trading your joy with your situation. If you have serious pain in your hand, you can choose not to trade that pain with your joy. Serious pain. <clears throat> How are you? Fine. The pain is there. Fine. <laughs> I have not been seeing you. Fine. I'm, I was not around. Okay. <laughs> you know, that pain is inside me. The pain does not want to hear joy. When there is pain and joy is there, the pain will not last. Where there is sorrow and joy is there, the joy will not last at all. They don't see. It's like cat and rat. You that are looking for a job, if you can choose to be happy, you will soon get a job. You that are sick, if you can choose to be happy, the happiness from the heart, with that sickness and you choose to be happy, that sickness will not last long. Your marriage is under threat and somebody trying to, to turn it upside down, choose to be happy and see what will happen next. Do you know it is the situation that meets joy? It's not joy that meets situation. Tell your neighbor, situation meets joy. Joy never meets situation. If you study your life, it is situation that makes joy. In one's life, situation come to joy. It is joy that owns you. Situation never owns you. Situation meets joy. When snake is coming to your house, you close the door. You don't run away and open the door for snake. So stop trading your joy with what? If you can do this, the situation will come, but it will not last. And you will learn a mighty lesson that will help you.
take my antecedent from beginnings as you know me. The name of this ministry is supposed not to be Church of All Nation. When church was just 80 in number, the Lord said, this is Church of All Nations. <laughs> How many ministry you know in your country that bear Church of All Nations? <laughs> if it is not a ministry of vision, and a mission. First church was destroyed, the second was destroyed. How many of business you have done and you still remain in that business? I don't think anybody still remain in the business you begin with right from the beginning of your life. After so much challenges, if you don't know where you are going, you cannot continue. You will not be able to wait for God release if you don't know where you are going. It is when you know where you are going, you will wait for God's release. Tell your neighbor, when you know where you are going, you will wait for God's release. You will wait patiently for God's release. But when you don't know where you are going, you will release yourself. You have been releasing yourself. You release yourself in business, in marriage, in churches, in everywhere. You just, ah, this embarrassment. How can you be lying against me? You walk away. You walk out of the community. You walk out of the business. You walk out of the church. You walk out of marriage. What kind of insult is this? This is embarrassment. I can't believe what you are saying. How can this pastor be lying against me? Eh? You walk out of the church. In marriage too? How can my husband be lying against me? How can my wife do this to me? You walk out of marriage. Business. Oh my God, I'm supposed to be promoted. Look at my junior. I trained this man. Look at him. He has been promoted above me. You walk out of the business. This is the life you have been living. Situation has been releasing you. Challenge has been releasing you. You hear what Joseph said when he was dropping the pit, he said, I know where I belong. Because you don't know where you are going. He was in the pit where there is no water, no air. There, he said, I know where I belong. This is not where I belong. So you may be seated. Thank you. When you are laughing, Satan is crying. When you are crying, Satan is laughing. Are you with me? I said, when you are laughing, Satan is what? And when you are crying, Satan is what? So stop trading your joy with what? With situation. No matter what happens, hold your joy. It is by joy you can overcome your situation. If you lose your joy, situation will overwhelm you. Situation does not want to see joy. When situation see joy, he sees. When situation see joy, he what? Immediately. That is, he stopped. Thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning. I'm joining you under the same atmosphere. God's way has the ability to quicken us spiritually. Tell your neighbor, God's way has ability. Ability to quicken us spiritually. Because God's way is spirit. Because it's spirit, that is why he has that enablement. It's not just a matter of the year, Jesus. No, no, no. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. When you speak it, it goes. It cannot stay in your lips. It goes and do it. Say, let there be lie. You see the lie. Because it has ability to quicken us spiritually. Let's quickly look at the book of uh, John 6. The book of John 6, 
Let's quickly look at the verse 63 there. He said, The Spirit gives life, and the flesh counts for nothing. The Spirit gives life, and the flesh counts for what? For nothing. The words I have spoke to you, they are full of the Spirit. This means the Word of God has the ability to cooking or spiritually. The word of God is a spirit. It's a spirit that has the ability to develop a force, spiritual force, within our hearts called faith. The spirit gives life the flesh counts for nothing. That is, the spirit gave being, the flesh counts for nothing. And the way I have spoke to you, they are full of the spirit and lie. This means the word of God is not just where. That's Bible language and the, the language of today. The word of God is spirit has the ability to develop a spiritual force within our hearts called faith. What we call faith is something that develops within our hearts. Take note of that. It's not just faith in faith, faith in this, faith in that. We talk of faith in the word of God. Faith in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we call faith in Christ, faith in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, is something that develops within our hearts. What we call faith, because there are faith, faith in faith, faith in this, faith in that, faith in yourself, the word we use out there, we use the word faith, just like a literal word. Oh, there are more to that. And say, oh, no, no, I'll do the job by faith. No, 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 that is not the kind of faith we are talking here. By faith, it will, it will work. No, that is not the kind of faith we talk about. What we call Bible faith is something that develops within our hearts, a spiritual force that develops within our hearts. How does this develop? If you pay attention, to the word. That is, if you pay attention to God's word, I mean, if you pay attention to God, you will find that faith comes spontaneously, that is, naturally. If you pay attention, when I say attention, not this kind of attention. They say attention. No, not that kind of attention. The attention I'm talking about with all your heart. If you pay attention to God's will, how do we pay attention? By looking at God, by looking on God, by meditate on, on the world. By looking at God. By looking on God, by meditate on the way. How do you meditate on the way? If I say, the more you think, I'm talking of meditation. The more you think, it's more than thinking. When I say the more you think, it's no longer on your situation, on God. The more you think about what you read, what you see around, what you hear, the more you become familiar to his voice. Take note of that. When I say, the more you think, I mean meditation. The more you think, I'm talking of meditation. Before you can get to meditation, it must be think, 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 think. That is meditation. Think, 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 
Tin ting. Not mm, ting. Sutation. Martin is no longer your situation. Martin is no longer your situation on God. Faith. Comes spontaneously. That's naturally. This is why you cannot have faith when you read your Bible the way you read your literature. When you read your Bible the way you read your chemistry, physics, you cannot have faith. Because faith comes spontaneously. This is why you cannot have faith where you commit what you read on memory. You memorize your Bible. It's good to memorize, it's valuable, but it must be part of you, an integral part of you. It's good to memorize. When you memorize Bible, it's like store water in your mouth that you want to drink, you store the water in your mouth without swallowing it, it's waste. If water remains in your mouth without swallow, it's waste. So in the same way, when you memorize the Bible without allowing this to be part of you, to be integral part of you, it's waste. You read your Bible, you begin to memorize the verses. We memorize our Bible to preach it, to teach it, not to live it. But to live the Bible is to allow this to be integral part of us. Faith originates from God. It originates from who? God. It does not originate from ourselves. This is why when you look around, look at yourself, look everywhere, you can't find faith. You just look around, look at yourself. Where it's, you can't find faith. Once you realize that God is reliable, faith comes. Ah! God is great. It brings faith. A slot of faith. Ah, how does this happen? Oh, God, God is great. Me, God is reliable. Hmm, it gave you a slot of faith. You begin to develop that faith, and faith begins to grow more another time. I'm he. Glory be to God. It can only be God. Another plot of faith. Your faith is growing gradually. It comes spontaneously. This is why the theologian, many authors of the Bible, they have no faith. Many Bible you have, their authors have no faith. They are educated, well educated. They are the author, but they have no faith. That you have Bible does not mean you have faith. That you are a Christian, as you claim, does not mean you have faith. That you are a bishop does not mean you have faith. That you are a prophet does not mean you have faith. That you know Jesus does not mean you have faith. Until Jesus know you. Tell your neighbor that you know Jesus does not mean you have faith in Jesus until Jesus know you. Yes, that you know Jesus, you preach Jesus, and people can see you are a good preacher. You know Jesus, you preach him, does not mean you have faith until Jesus know you. Jesus can only know us by his faith, not by our faith, by his obedience, not by our obedience, by his humility, not by our humility. You see people very humble, 
very humble, very simple, but it's not of God. You can see people very faithful. To you, it's very faithful, but not of God. People can be very obedient, very, very obedient. To you, it's very obedient. Yeah, it's an obedient child, but not of God. The Bible said it. It said, this I have given you, not as the one gave them. It means everything Jesus has given, the work can also give the same, but with condition. But if you don't look at it very well, you may not know the difference. This is why today we don't know the difference between this and that. When it comes to things of the Spirit, we are ignorant. This I have given you, not as the word give them. It means all what Jesus has given us to, the word too can also, but with difference. What is different? The different is the end. Beginning may look similar. The middle may look similar. But the end always different. The end proves different. The beginning some look similar. You may ignorantly not know the difference. The middle at the same time, you may ignorantly not know the difference because we are desperate. Because of our desperation, we don't know the difference. Desperate to be this, desperate to be that, desperate to get there. We don't mind how it come, how it low, since he gave you the same thing. If what you are doing, the end is not going to be good, it has no meaning. It's better not to do it at all. We have seen the end of many. Beginning, flourish, middle seems to flourish, but the end, crying, lamenting, sorrow. Our end should not end when we pass on to glory. Our work should not end when we end the journey. If not, no one will remember you. You are living, but the children are yet unborn to remember that someone lived before. But when there's no record again, once the journey ends and your record ends, of what value? If all the efforts of apostles end at their time, people like me will not be here today. They pay supreme price to bring the gospel. Because the gospel was not end at their time, at the end of their journey. This is why people like me stay here today, to preach the gospel. What are you doing that you're sure and you believe it will not end when your journey ends? What are you doing? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing now? that will not end when your journey ends. What are you doing? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing that children yet unborn will live to see? Ask your neighbor again. That is the question for you to answer. What are you doing that children yet unborn will live to see when you end up your journey? The children yet unborn, just like opposed to, we are children yet unborn at their time. Today we are seeing, we are enjoying the price they paid. The word faith led us to this, that faith comes spontaneously, not the work of reading, or the work of righteousness, the work of sweat, or whatever you have done that brings faith. It comes spontaneously, naturally. This is why you cannot receive that faith when you read your Bible, the way you read your literature. This is why it's difficult for someone to acquire faith 
after finish the theology school, it's very difficult. You acquire that knowledge, but that faith is always difficult to acquire. When you read your Bible, the way you read your literature, you cannot mind the faith we are talking about. Because, like I have said, what we call faith is something that has ability to develop a spiritual force within our hearts. It's beyond ordinary reading. It must be reading with devotion. It must be reading with what? With devotion. Tell your neighbor, it's beyond ordinary reading. It must be reading with devotion. Quality time is what we call. When I say read something with devotion, me read with quality time, good time, not waste time. You know, we read our Bible at wasted time. We don't have anything to do. A time we don't value when we are tired. But the Bible must be read quality time, your best time, cherished time. Not time you are tired, you don't have anything to do, you are about to sleep. No! So that your spirit can be at its best. When your spirit is not at its best and you are reading your Bible, you are wasting your time. Your spirit must be at its best. Because when your spirit is not at its best, you cannot meditate. You can only think. We think when our spirit is not at its best, but we meditate when our spirit is at its best. You understand the word spirit be at its best? When there's no burden, you know, when there's so much burden on us, you are worried, so much burden weigh on your spirit. If your spirit is not at its best, it cannot attract the Spirit of God. If your spirit is not at its best, it cannot attract what? It cannot attract the Spirit of God. Your spirit must be at its best to attract the Spirit of God. That is, when your spirit is free. That is what I mean. For our spirit to be at its best means free, free spirit. When you don't think of anything, you are relaxed. You just look at yourself, you smile. Not looking at yourself and crying. You know, oftentimes you look at yourself, you cry. You may not necessarily cry, but you feel so disgusting. You hate yourself. Free spirit. Let someone say free spirit. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you tell me? When often you have free spirit? Do you actually have free spirit before? Oh, because it's difficult. Because you have so much to think about. So much. So much. You can only have free spirit when you start your thinking by this. If today is my last day on earth, what is? Start your thinking from there. Start your thinking from where? To have free spirit, you must start your thinking by this way. If today is my last day on this earth, what would they remember me for? Once you start your thinking like that, you find yourself think the more, the more, the more. Now meditation comes. That thinking alone you will never ever think of your situation. It does not attract your situation. So when you now come to that understanding that if today is your last day on earth, what is? You will so come to understand what free spirit means. You need free spirit to have faith. When your spirit is at its best, yes, you are smiling faith of God. Mm. That is, so when your spirit is at its best, 
mean free spirit, then you can attract the spirit of God. He joined himself to our spirit to declare us we are child of God. He joined himself to our spirit to heal us. He joined himself to our spirit to deliver us. I'm sick, I'm sick. In Jesus' name, be healed, be healed, and you are healed. It means the Spirit of God joined himself to your spirit to heal you. For the Spirit to join himself to your spirit, your spirit must be free. And when it's free, then it attracts the Spirit of God. But when it's not free and it's in bondage, trouble, then it attracts this evil spirit. Tell your neighbor, will you allow free spirit? It is your duty to do that. Jesus will not come to do that for you. It is your role to do that before the Spirit of God comes. Jesus will not come to give you free spirit. It is your duty to allow this. You just have to put everything behind you. Let your past pass and move forward. And know that there is no one without limitation. No one without limitation. If you say you have problem, there is no one without limitation. You may have problem, you may have sickness. Other people too, they have another problem. There is no one on this earth, even including T.B. Joshua. No one without limitation. When you know that there is no one without limitation, you have allow free spirit. There is no one without limitation. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can't hear you. Yes. This limitation makes our journey more valuable, more interesting. More interesting. Limitation makes our Christian life more interesting, more valuable. I'm a Christian. Without limitation, you are not a Christian. Limitation will continue to draw you closer to God. Fast the more, pray the more, seek His face the more. Limitation make us pay attention to God. Tell your neighbor, my limitation make me pay attention to God. The more I pray, the more I seek His face. Without limitation, <laughs> there is no need of. Attention, what brought you here today? I'm very sure your coming here is not out of comfort, out of pleasure, out of abundant blessing. Without limitation, your faith is not real faith. Tell your neighbor, without limitation, my faith is no real faith. So faith work on limitation. Limitation make our faith more valuable. What is your limitation? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. You can be kind enough to tell your neighbor your limitation. Can you be kind enough? Can you be kind enough to tell your neighbor your limitation? Tell your neighbor, can you be kind enough to tell me your limitation? Ask your neighbor, can you be kind enough to tell me your limitation? Let me tell you, if any of your neighbor tell you his or her limitation, that is not limitation. Limitation is something you will never discuss with anyone. When you tell your neighbor, this is my limitation, it's not limitation, it's your situation. If anybody says, no, limitation is there. It has not tell you the limitation, it's only telling you situation. Limitation is something that when you are praying to God to remove that limitation, you'll be looking around. <laughs> if somebody knocked the door, you know, <laughs> Can you be kind enough and tell me your limitation? You will tell me your situation. Eh? Limitation is what actually limits you from eating with Jesus on the table. 
from kissing Jesus, you can kiss him. From understanding his voice, you don't understand his voice. When you dream, you don't know whether it's a real dream or nightmare. We don't understand his voice. We are not familiar to his voice. If you're familiar to God's voice, you know when Satan is talking and when God is talking. Voices is always in your heart. You know, I say faith has ability to develop a spiritual force within our hearts. Like you are listening to me now, the world will continue to develop a force within your heart. Within your heart, you just find that uh, you find yourself being transformed. That is faith. It has ability to develop a spiritual force within our heart called faith. There are more when the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. It's not end by saying faith come by hearing. To hear the word of faith, one must pay attention. To pay attention is to look at God, look on God, meditate on the word. Look at God, look on God, meditate on the word. How can we look at God? I mean when you are listening to the ministers of God, all attention with all your heart. You have to pray along. Like you are looking at me, you have to pray along to understand. It's not just looking at me to understand. You have to begin to pray along. God, give me a hearing heart. Give me a hearing heart. Lord Jesus, give me a hearing heart. Why you listen to the word? Give me a hearing heart. A hearing heart. When the ministers of God is preaching or you are right at home, listen to the Christian channel. You just turn and say, Lord, give me a hearing heart. A hearing heart. A hearing heart. A hearing heart. Because what you hear must go to your heart. Because the word of faith you hear it's a spiritual force within your heart. You hear any heart? You hear any heart? When you pray along like that, when you listen to the word, you have a breakthrough. It comes spontaneously. It just comes. But this very body cannot hear the word of faith. There's so much to think about. Body. Our spirit is in prison. Our heart is in prison. You need a free spirit to hear the word of faith. Give me a hearing heart. Give me a hearing heart. Give me a hearing heart. That should be your prayer now. You begin to fire on. Give me a hearing heart. Give me a hearing heart. So don't wait until we say, let us pray. No, your life should depend on that. Give me a hearing heart. A hearing heart. May God bless his word. Amen. Hallelujah. God's word is his gift to mankind. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that Christ and his word are one. Learn to dream again as we look to God through his word by his spirit. Get ready to open your heart to God's word, faith and spirit as we listen to what God has to say in today's standard for life. Good morning, church. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Viewers all over the world. We recognize you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we shall look at the practical side of Christianity. When we say practical side of Christianity, we talk of 
the Spirit of God Himself, that is life through the Spirit. Turn your Bible with me. We take our reading from the book of Romans 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, law, L-A-W, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You see, where you see sin, you see death. Because they are synonymous. Sin, S-I-N, and death. They are synonymous. I mean, the same father, the same mother. The same family. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. Let's now go to our proof test. I'll take this proof test from verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Mm. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. It means if you are not worship God in spirit, you are not one. Because God is spirit and his worshiper do so in spirit and what? I can hear you. If you are not worshiping him in spirit, you are not one of the children. God is spirit. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Think about that. Mm. You can judge yourself. You can know whom you are serving. If you are one of them, this means God is spirit. If we do not worship God, who is in the spirit, you will be led by your emotion. That is intellectually. That is what you see, what you hear, what and how you feel. If there is no money in your pocket, you say, Jesus, because. If there is money, you say, hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Many of us are here today because you have some money with you. Sometime in the past, when there were no money, you were not here. Because you are not led by the Spirit. When there's no food on the table, you say, oh, why? No church, no prayer. When there's food on the table, you say, oh, hallelujah, Iman. What our circumstances look like, if it's good, when you want to pray, you say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm sick, my leg is paining me. Because you know there's no time you will not have one or two things. What man wants is unlimited. So when are you going to say in your prayer, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Seeking miracle, miracle, miracle. Salvation is there. Seek first, kingdom. Oh, Lord. If we do not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit, can we hope to obtain his favor and acceptance? Can we hope to obtain his what? His favor and acceptance. Can we hope? So we miss the end of worship. May we worship ourselves. This is why you see mm, 
you pray, you pray, you pray. So frustrating. Give us all over the world, wherever you are. I know you are listening to me. My message is in your bedroom, it's in your room, wherever you are. Where can you go from this person? If you are under the influence of my voice, listen to me. There is no difference between here and where you are. Believing is our connection. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Act on His guidance. Act on His word. On His guidance. Because man has ability to look. Holy Spirit looks as He wills. Man has ability to talk. Holy Spirit talks as He wills. How will you know who is talking to you? Whether it's Stevie Joshua or Holy Spirit himself. When you are not in the spirit, you can't know. This is why our life is epileptic, up, down. We don't know the true ministers of God. You don't know. You only listen to the eloquence. Power to speak, friendliness. No, these are man natural games. You know, the Holy Spirit has a mind. The Holy Spirit has a mind. When you read the book of Acts 16, verse 6 to 7, Holy Spirit has a mind. In that book of Romans 8, verse 27, the mind of Holy Spirit. A person has the ability to decide. No, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. You, you have ability to decide. That is exercising the will through the mind. To exercise the will through the mind. Holy Spirit has the power of choice. When the pastor is talking, you need to know who is talking. Don't go by the ability to present or to deliver. No. Anybody can deliver without the power of Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit has the power of choice. But you has the ability to decide. That is, exercise the way through the mind. Tell your neighbor, commit yourself to the guidance of the word. I can hear you. I can hear you. Viewers all over the world, say to your neighbor or say to yourself, commit yourself to the guidance of the word. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Yes, commit yourself to the guidance of the word. Because God's word refreshes our mind. And his spirit renews our strength. Where can we go from his presence? When one does not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit, the worship is defective. Are you with me? When one does not worship God, who is a spirit in the spirit, the worship is defective. It's defective. That is carnal. Dealing only in the letter. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Dealing only in the letter. And referring to the spirit and the sign. Which are at a distance. By, by types and ceremonies. 
Oh, I want to read. Just read what is here. Okay, Jesus is not sorry, said this. No, 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 no. Whatever we read, we need to examine it in the light of God's word. Because Holy Spirit gives us the word. That is, the word is the tool in the hands of Holy Spirit. This word is tool. Look at this is two mic. This is me. If I'm not talking to this mic, mic cannot go. So, in the same way, the word is the tool in the hands of the Holy Spirit. He gives us the word. If the word does not pass through him, you are speaking to yourself, you are speaking of yourself. It is easier to say what God is not than to say what God is. I take it back again. It is easier to say what God is not than to say what God is. We oftentimes say, the Spirit of God said this, the Spirit of God said that. When our worship is canon, where do you see the Spirit of God? How do you manage to hear from the Spirit of God? When your worship is kind of. When we know this, when you are not called, you should be made sure Jesus says. Jesus says. It's not. I'm talking to you, church. We must depend upon God's spirit for strength and assistance. Laying our soul under his influences and oppression. We must worship him with fierceness of thought and a flame of affection. You know, with all within you, with all within me, my heart, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, my heart, my shoulder, my knee, my toes, my heart, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, they all belong to you. Sit down, sit down. Worship him with fierceness of thought and a flame of affection. I mean, with all that's within us. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, is the honor of my soul. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, he is the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the owner, he is the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the owner, he is the owner. This is a call from the book of Romans 1, verse 9. When you start reading from verse 1 to the end, that's the message of Paul. Worship him with fierceness of thought and a flame of affection with all that is within you. Or commit yourself to the guidance of the world. No one 
can obey the word of God without being led by the Holy Spirit. You must be led by the Holy Spirit to obey the word of God. If not, how will you? Because the Holy Spirit gives the words. The way is the tools in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Tools. With this, our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. Obedience is. Tell your neighbor, our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. I mean, it's not the issue. Obedience is. You must read, study to live, not just read to teach or to preach, but to live. Our knowledge of the scripture is not the issue. Obedience is. You can master and quote the chapter and verses in the Bible for years. And hear thousands of sermons and read many Christian books. But still, we're spiritual dappers. That is spiritual baby. Yes, still we are spiritual diapers. Upon your knowledge of the scriptures. The second Timothy chapter three verse seven. We are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. That is, you are, you are good in listening to sermon. They say everyone listen to me. You can live here today and go to another crusade. From another crusade to another crusade. From another crusade to another crusade. You are good in that. We are very, very good in that. Even as we are talking now, many came from one church to this church. They attend one church and to another church. After this play, they go to another church. This is our job. We are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. We can pay tight four, five, six churches. You are a membership of almost four, five, six, seven churches. That is our job. Many of us here, we have finished this Bible three to four times in a year. We take it as a duty to read Bible from Genesis to Revelation three to four times in a year. But, yes, Jesus does not know you. Because he's in spirit, and his worshiper must do so in spirit. Talking to him in spirit, relate with him in spirit. We must commit ourselves to the guidance of the word. We so much believe that once you are a member of a certain church, you are a Christian, and when you die, they will bury you as a Christian. It does not mean you go to heaven. This ceremony and the last day Jesus will say no dealing only in the letter and referring to the spirit and the sign which are at a distance by types and ceremony I want you to think about this because I don't want us to miss ourselves on the last day. Hey, because 
there is another fellowship. Do you know there is another fellowship in heaven? No, there is another fellowship in heaven. So you think the fellowship is in the air? is just a reflection. But you know when you point a light, so see this light, we see the reflection here. That is the earth. Where the light come from? Heaven. Heaven. No matter how many years you spend on the earth, it's like turning back to heaven. If you spend 100 years here on earth, it's like turning back. It means home. Our knowledge of the scripture is not the key. It's not the issue. Obedience is. You find time to read the book of Second. Timothy chapter 3, you take your reading from verse 1 to end, and the proof test will be 7. God bless his word. Thank you, you may be seated, thank you. Thank you, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. Uh, let's quickly continue the, the message about faith. So take your Holy Bible to the book of uh, Galatians, chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. I take it again. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, do not be entangled again with yoke of bondage. Verse 2. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumstant, Christ will profit you nothing. Verse 3. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. Verse 4, you have become a strangle from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Take it to the proof test. Verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Hallelujah. The works of faith. Pass 4. Hallelujah. The on renewed mind is always waging war against unbelief. The unrenewed mind is always waging war against unbelief. I'm talking to you. Let me speak what is going in your heart and what's happened to you every day you confess faith i'm a faith man i have faith in god 
denying it in action. Are you with me? Confessing faith in the word, denying it in action by your word. You say, I'm a faith man, I have faith in God, blah, 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 blah. Me, you have faith, you have no work. Faith without work is dead. Confessing faith in the word. Denying it in action. Trying to believe, yet never acting on the word. Trying to believe, yet never acting on the word. Oh, my God. Yes, it happened to that man. The testimony today is so great. I'm having a similar problem. But the man came out to testify it. This show, my problem will be over today. Because you have seen someone confessing or testify. Now, that is what you base your healing on. That is the basis of your healing. That the man said, I had a headache. After minister the anointing water, the headache disappeared. I too, I have a day. I know when I get that anointed water, my headache, that is what you base your healing on. Trying to believe, yet never acting on the well. Tell your neighbor. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm trying to believe. Yet, never had in, on the word of God. God does nothing without his word. He does nothing without what? Without his word. I have seen, I have heard, I have seen it happen, and I've had so many testimonies. It's sense, knowledge, evidence. That was all right in the early church, but it is not all right in the churches today. In the early church, that was all right in the early church. Paul continued in Galatians 5, verse 19. We read 18. He continued. Now, the works of the senses the works of flesh, senses, are manifest. He gives a long list of them. We are all familiar with it. When you read through, you see those long lists, long lists of those things Paul gave. We are all familiar with it. Long list of them. This, that, 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 smoking, green, adultery. But in verse 18, if you are led by the recreated spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by what? You are not under what? Under the law. In that 19. In verse 18. Gives a very graphic picture. I call it graphic picture. Of the senses and of the spirits. The word flesh should have been translated senses so you will understand it better. So don't get yourself confused. When you see flesh, put senses. When you see senses, put flesh. So you quite understand it. 
what we call the sins of flesh are sins of the senses. Don't get yourself confused. It's the same meaning. Flesh senses. I mentioned of five senses. But there is no way we go into detail without mentioning these five senses. Because all are physical door that lead to the world, to the brain. All are physical door that lead to the brain. Smiling, tasting, hearing, seeing, feeling. Are all physical door that lead to the brain. They are all seen connected with the physical body, this body. They are what? They are all seen connected with the physical body, this body you are seeing. This body of ours is the laboratory where we have learned all we know of circular knowledge. This body is a laboratory where we have learned all we know of circular knowledge. You know what I mean by circular knowledge? That is gift, talent. I was giving you a good example about these senses. I know this thing is hard because I struck it. As unbelievers, without hit it, I will still doubt whether is it hard or no, is it iron or what. That is unbelievers. Those who live under senses, knowledge. Oh, is it iron or what? They want to touch it. But as someone who is led by senses, oh, I know it's hard because I hate it. I know it is sweet, very sweet, because I tasted it. Because you live under that, you demand to see because you live by the senses. You demise to see because you live by the senses. That is your lie. Like I have said, I have had, I have seen so much is senses, knowledge, evidence. Hmm. It's fragile. How manage because of smile. Smile it. Your spirit must govern your senses to conquer. To conquer, your spirit must govern what? Your senses. How? Your mind must be so renewed by knowing the way and acting on it. Your mind must be so renewed by knowing the way and what? And acting on it. There are where hearers, mere listeners, go talkers, but not doers. Tell your neighbor. There are where hearers, mere listeners, go talkers, but not doers. You see, Jesus is law. Yes, Amen. Go talkers. And you see, my brother will listen. Yes, 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 sir. May I listen now? 
but not do us. The battle that we fight in our daily work is with our senses. That is the battle. The battle we fight in our daily work is with our senses. That is the battle. I want the thing I see. I may eat it. I may drink it. Feel it. That is the battle. Listen to our Lord Jesus Christ here. In that book of John 11, 39, Jesus said, take away the, the stone matter. The sister of him who was dead said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. Smile. For he has been dead four days and you are asking me to remove the stone imagine how a body that has been dead for four days you ask me to remove the stone now when you go to the verse 40 Jesus said to her did I not say to you that if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God what does this mean to you Jesus asked Martha here. He asked of all who desire to see the glory of God. He asked of all who desire to see the goodness of God. Who desire to see the goodness of God. We must believe that we will see we do not see first, then believe. But we believe first, then see. Take note of that. Faith comes before what? Before sight. So when you take a look at the book of um, Psalm 27, yeah, let's take a look at verse 13 there. That says, I will have lost heart unless I had believed. Are you with me? He said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. What does lost heart mean? Despair. Despair. If you cannot believe that you will see the goodness of God, you will despair. The thing that keeps us from despairing is not what we see, but what we believe. The thing that keeps us from despairing is not what we see, but what we believe. Now, like I have said at the beginning, that in Galatians 5 verse 18, Paul gives us a very graphic picture of the senses and of the spirit. Let's talk of the spirit now. The new kinds of knowledge. Let's someone say the new kinds of knowledge. I can hear you. Remember the commandment in John 13? 34, love your neighbor as yourself, which is the greatest. We have a new kind of knowledge, revelation knowledge. Let someone say revelation knowledge. So it comes by revelation, not by senses. Now, let me, oh, I carry it to know the weight. Oh, yes, I can carry it with my hand. That is senses. Oh, because I carry it. But by revelation, I can tell you the weight of this thing without carriage. 
we have a new kinds of knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Let someone say. I can hear you. Look, go the sample again. If I live under the senses, I need to know how many people can carry this. Yes, I can push it. I can push it. Yes, I can push it because I push it to know the weight. But by revelation, I will tell you there the size, the weight. So we have a new kind of knowledge, revelation knowledge. It is spiritual. It is knowledge that has come to us by acting on the word and living in it. You want to say, oh, how come you are able to see the vision, the prophecy? How come you know this man will be here? And you say, in the name of Jesus, be here. How come you know this man is a wizard, is a witch? How come? Is it just come from heaven? Or how come this come? But you live by senses. You demand to see because you live by the senses. In the name of Jesus, you pray by idea, by imagination. Because you see people pray, you too pray. You don't know whether the person is here or not, whether God is answering you or not. You don't know whether it's a witch or wizard. You don't know the sickness is how you cannot say much about it. Can you see? That the spirit prayer demand for revelation. But when you practice prayer, you read book, you confess Jesus, deny him in action. By revelation, it is spiritual. It is knowledge that comes to us by acting on the way and living in it. We do the work, we live the way, we act the way, we trust implicitly in the way. Because we know God and his throne are backing of every word. This gives a quiet and restful confidence. We have talked about senses. Now, as children of God, you say someone is a pastor, someone is a bishop, someone is a Christian, you are a Christian by revelation. You can only become a Christian by revelation. You can only become pastor by revelation. And uh, this revelation, like I have said, it is spiritual. It is knowledge that has come to us by acting on the well and living in the well. We do the well. We act the well. We live the well. We trust implicitly in the well. Because we know God and His throne are backing of every well. This gives us a quiet and restful confidence. Like I have said in that Galatians 5 verse 18, that Paul gives a very graphic picture of the senses and of the spirit. Now we talk a little about the senses, now back to the spirit. Your mind cannot be renewed by studying the word only. Tell your neighbor, your mind cannot be renewed by studying the word only. And you know today we study the word. We have the great PhD on the Bible. And uh, that could not make us pastors or Christians only. Listen to what I say. You must do the word. You must live the well. You must act the well. You must trust implicitly in the word. 
Because God and his throne are backing of everywhere. This gives us a quiet and a restful confidence. The way must become part of your very being. The way must become what? Part of your very being. Because it lives in us, the word of God. Just as our blood is a part of us. Just as our moksu are a part of us, so the wear must become an integral part of you. Can you separate your moksu? Huh? Just as your moksu are a part of you, just as your blood is a part of you, so it word must become an integral part. Because it lives in us. I hope your faith is lifted up. Thank you. I salute you. God's word is his gift to mankind. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that Christ and his word are one. Learn to dream again as we look to God through his word by his spirit. Get ready to open your heart to God's word, faith and spirit as we listen to what God has to say in today's standard for life. A life full of choices. A life full of what? Choices. The book of First Corinthians, chapter ten. I will take my reading from verse one. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. Verse 2. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Verse 3. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That is the rock of ages. I'm taking verse 5 now. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Let's go to that proof text, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who would not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? Beyond what you are what? Take note of that. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape. With the temptation, it's also a blessing. That's what they are saying here. That you may be able to bear it. A life full of choices. Ah. You can choose to walk away from here. As I'm talking now, you can choose to walk away. A life full of choices. Viewers all over the world, right in your home, you can choose to switch off Immanuel TV. Then you can also choose to do a switch on. A life full of 
choices. You can choose to walk away from wrong opportunities. You are a free moral agent. You can yield to either God or the devil. You are a free what? Moral agent. Mind you, serving the Lord, our Savior, is the only road to comfort and peace. Why serving the devil is a sure way to bitterness, pain, and death. I believe that one of the greatest gifts God has given us is the freedom to make decisions. The freedom to make what? To make decisions. You can choose to sleep. Now, as I'm talking to you, you can choose to stand up. You can choose to turn back to me. You can choose to turn to me. All of us who have fallen made a decision. And all of us who have not fallen face similar temptation. But made a different decision. Similar what? Similar temptation. Temptation to do this. Temptation to do that. Temptation to walk out from wrong opportunity. Good opportunity. Similar temptation. But made a different decision. You can choose to let the one who created you help you. Like I have said, serving the law, our Savior, is the role to comfort and peace while serving the devil is a sure way to bitterness, pain, and death. The wisest decision is what you do with Christ. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. The wisest decision is what you do with Christ. Colossians 1 verse 15 to 16 is the image of the invisible God. The first born over all creation. Verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible, invisible, whether throne or dominion, or principality or power, all things were created through him and for him. What are we saying here? Jesus created you. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. Jesus created you. Yes. You can choose to let him 
help you in all you do. If you rely on the strength of our Savior, he will not allow the enemy of your soul to give you more than you can take. Are you with me? Tell your neighbor, if you rely on the strength of our Savior, he will not allow the enemy of your soul to give you more than you can take. He will not allow that. He will not allow the enemy of your soul to give you more than you can take. Yes. He will not allow. The way through your fear of failure now you have the fear of failure fear of sickness fear of this fear of that fear of death fear 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 the way through your fear of failure or the extreme discouragement that comes because you have failed. I call it extreme. Uh, well, because of extreme discouragement. Uh, let him go to the club. Let him go smoke. Let him drink. They started drinking. They started it. You see them going to club. You say, ah, what are you doing here? Uh, forget about that, girl. The extreme discouragement that comes because you have failed. Turn it around and look at it as a life lesson. Turn it around <laughs> and look at it as a life lesson. What lesson? What you are going through now, many successful people in society had once passed through them before they were promoted to the level they are. That is life lesson. Has done it, he will tell you. Ask David, he will tell you about the weakness. Ask Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, they will tell you what they passed through in the furnace. We fight through our failures and fear we fight through our failure and what and fear by maximizing our forward motion remember our warfare is not carnal that is we pray the more fast the more the situation I'm talking about always prepare through Christian for extraordinary service. You fast the more, you pray the more, you love God the more. We fight through our failure. What is your fear? What is that failure? We fight through our situation by maximizing our forward motion. When discouragement 
comes, we don't stop, we dig deep and fight it through. What could lead to discouragement when you have problem with your head and the doctor is telling you that, look, it is incurable and begin to give you a sample of people that have the same problem and you have count number of them and you know there is no way, sooner or later, death. Ah, my God. Or when you look at debts you have or your business collapse. You look around everywhere. You look at your family, limitation in every area. You want to achieve what no one in the family have ever. You can see it's a great task. If someone has achieved what you're about to achieve in the family, you say, wow, I will achieve it. But no one has ever achieved it. You are just trying to achieve it. It means you see what no one has ever seen. When discouragement comes, we don't stop. <laughs> I would like grab at it. Ah, no. No. When fear hits, we speed up the attack. Are you with me? When fear hits, we speed up the war, the attack. The more the trouble, the more you begin to... <laughs> People say, ah, this man was very, very fat before, but look at him, he's very slim. They don't know that he's now adding to his fasting and prayer. <clears throat> he doesn't eat like before. That kind of fool that make him to sleep anyhow. Because he wants to pray, he wants to fast. They say, Stasho, maybe it's Jimmy is exercising. No, not exercising. He speed up the war, the attack. Speed up the attack. And our attack is not carnal. The weapon is not carnal. What is happened to you? Why are you lonely? Why are you fed up? Why, 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 what are you thinking? Who knows? If your prayer for a better life had been answered, what would have happened to you? A better life to buy a beautiful car? To be a president or snitch or whatever, better life. To be the beautiful house, better life. For good health, you are sick and you have been praying for good health. That prayer it seems not to. For everything, there is a purpose as a Christian. For everything, that's what? That's a purpose. It may be to keep you for a new level in life. It may be to strengthen your desire. God will not use pleasure to strengthen your desire. And God will not use pleasure also to keep you for a new level. And he will not use pleasure to keep you for the challenges ahead. It's one of these foolish things that always being used to do that. When it comes, you should know you are a Christian. You can never and never be destroyed by any situation. Yeah. Your situation is not like others. Others meant to destroy them, to kill them. But your situation is meant to keep you for a new level. It's meant to stop you a while in order to 
prepare you well, to equip you well. It's meant to strengthen your desire. It's meant to make you to pray the more and fast the more for extraordinary service. That your situation is not like others. That your sickness is not like others. That your poverty is not like others. That your hardship is not like others. That, that, tell your neighbor, that is not like others. It's not like others. I can hear you. It's not like others. My tongue is not like others. That, 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 that is not like others. I'm a Christian. It's not like others. No condemnation for anyone, for anyone, for anyone who belongs to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. My sickness is not like others. My trouble is not like others. That trouble will not come is a first message. There will be trouble. That sickness will not come, it is a false teaching. Sickness will come. But yours is not like others. When it eats, speed up the attack. Dig deep. Don't stop. Tell your neighbor, don't stop. Dig deep. deep. And fight it through. Tell your neighbor, when sickness come, when disease come, situation come, dig deep. Dig deep. Dig deep. deep. Fight it through. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Come let me hear you sing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. A life full of what? A life full of choices. Take note. There are some bitter words there. Those discouragement. Why are you down? Because of discouragement. You have been with this marriage, been with this man for so long, giving him all your love, but at the end of the day, they carry your property, your luggage, you throw it out. Or you, men, woman has disappointed you so much. After giving all your love and everything you need to do, all your business, you have served this company so long, and it's time to reward you. Now, it's opposite. All your health, you know you live according to the scripture, but remember, it's only God that do the work of righteousness. 
but your health fail you. This bring about discouragement. Your career, after you have studied so much, you have this your certificate. Those who have now, they are in places, but you, there's nowhere. You keep looking for job everywhere. People interview you for job, they are your students. This time you are called for interview. You see those who are interview you, they are your junior in school. And they'll say, oh, God. Oh, my Oga. Oh, Oga. What can I do for you? But cannot help you because it's not the only person in the panel. There are many. Everyone has their own interests. They can only say Oga. So you keep going. Oh, discouragement. Remember when discouragement comes. Dig deep. Don't stop. Tell your neighbor, don't stop. Dig deep. Don't stop. Dig deep. And fight it through. Yes. Yes, as a Christian. It is not the time to relax and become discouraged. Don't allow discouragement. Yes. It's true. The Bible said, cheer up. I have overcome the war. That is telling you he has overcome the war. That he gave you the strength to overcome whatever come. That is what he says. The meaning, I have overcome the war, cheer up. He said, you that live in the war as a Christian, I have given you strength to face any situation. Mean dig deep fight it through thank you lord we believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched click here to subscribe to witness more of god's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies deliverances sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations, and changing the... You have been fasting and fasting and fast and fast and fast, but no, nothing to show. Try this from today. Wow, my God. You, you come here for testimony. <laughs> this means, as from today, don't begin to ask God, hear me, hear me. Pray against your weakness. As from today, don't begin to say, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. Pray against your weakness. As from today, don't begin to say, God, protect me, protect me. People are after me. People want to kill me. You are wasting your time. Straight. Pray against your weakness. That is the avenue Satan used to enter. To afflict you with poverty. To afflict you with insecurity. To afflict you with sickness. To afflict you with whatever you are talking about. He used our weakness to enter us. If you close that place, no more Satan. <laughs> Brother, please, I will disturb you people today. Because you people disturb me. Stand, I will disturb you. You people keep disturbing me. Come, come. Stand here. Brother, please, stand here. Stand here. This man will pass here to, to come to me. But if two of us close, there's no avenue for him to pass. It means you live in full and fullness. Abundant life you live. What is good is to close this this is weakness. Here is the weakness entrance for this man to enter here and come. And afflict with poverty, afflict with sickness, afflict with setback, 
uh, the, the, uh, I mean, barrenness, just name every affliction. This is the place to pass. Instead of one to begin to say, God, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Ah, it doesn't make sense to say, God, hear me. Why can't you close the avenue and have the abundant life? Life in abundance. But we keep saying, heal me, heal me. When you are sick, you say, heal me. When you are poor, you say, bless me. When you are buried, you say, bless me with the fruit of the womb. No, God is aware. He knows your situation. You don't need to. When you begin to tell God, God, I want to go there. It means you say your God is blind. Someone who created you, he know you. He know your disposition. He know your thoughts. And you are not telling him that I am poor. Bless me. I know it doesn't make sense. So what we are saying now, to make it and to get your life fit, you need to fit your life. Many life has been disconnected from creator. In order to fit your life back, from today, begin to pray against your weakness. This is what God was telling Paul, Apostle. Three times he came to God. Hear me, I have tongue in my flesh. Each time the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Me, my righteousness is sufficient for you. Then hear me, hear me. God will say, My grace is sufficient for you. Me seek first the kingdom. I will healing, blessing, everything will be added. God use Paul as an example for every one of us. We never had anything after that three times the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for you. No record about that again. And we never had that that deceit is, was the one who kept up. We never had it in anywhere. And Paul lived the promised age God gave to him. What is your challenge now? Weaknesses. Tell you now, my, my, my challenge is my weaknesses. Not my hardship. Not my sickness. Not my trouble. But my challenge is my witnesses. That is such a challenge. If you have been praying against this, all this why, your situation will not remain like this. In summary, your prayer today should be basically against what? Witnesses. Witnesses. I'm poor, God is aware. I'm sick, God is aware. I'm barrenness, I'm barren, God is aware. Whatever challenge you have, God is aware. It's unnecessary to begin to atomize your I'm this, I need this, I need this. Block the avenue Satan used to afflict you. Block the entrance Satan is using to do all to, to affect you. Which is weakness. He used our weakness to affect us. He used our weakness to attack us. He used our weakness to, to hit us. That is weakness. Pray against your weakness. And once this is blocked, all other things will be added to you. And the one thing is about weakness, when you open your mouth and say, God, eh, I talk too much. Please, God, give me the grace. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to talk too much. After your prayer, as a human being, you want to practice what you are praying for. Now, when you are now going and you are about to talk to me, say, ah, oh, I have prayed against this. Oh. <laughs> say, Timmy Joshua, what do you have to say? Mm, don't worry, don't worry, I will see you later. Eh? <laughs> because you don't want to talk too much. Because it's only a fool that we will begin to pray again. I talk too much. I talk too much. God, give me the grace. I don't want to talk too much. And you leave that prayer, you start to talk too much. You start to talk too much. 
Again, you pray again. So I don't want to talk too much. By the time you continue to pray again, your witness, you have to begin to live life of your prayer. Tell your neighbor, live life of your prayer. That is what you say in your prayer. Live it. I don't want to talk too much. After the prayer, I will live life. I don't want to talk too much. If you want to fast, you want to fast. The fast that answer to God. You don't need even God to minister to you. To, to, to I mean, minister to your heart. Go and fast. Anytime you decide to fast again, your weakness, God answer it. If I'm talking to you, let me you see your hand. But any other fasting, you are just going to the mountain, you want to fast because you are poor. You want God to bless you, you want breakthrough, you are now stay in the bush and begin to fast for four days. Even if you fast for a hundred years, you die there. <laughs> Go and fast and pray against you what? And it's a direct answer. If God, God answer immediately. Because God wants a relation, a relationship builder. When you build your relationship, you say, I talk too much, I don't want to talk too much. God is always happy. What matters to God is our relationship, not what we do. Go and fast. Every other thing shall be added to you. Anytime you have opportunity to fast because of your weakness and its direct answer. When you try it, you have been fasting and fasting and fast and fast and fast, but no, nothing to show. Try this from today. If you next week and you can find a day to fast from morning to evening because of your weakness, wow, my God. You, you come here for testimony. Yeah. Nightmare you are having through your witness, Satan come to attack you. Hardship you are facing, Satan come through your witness to attack you with spirits of hardship. Sickness you are having now, it is through your witness, Satan come to attack you with spirit of sickness. Violence through weakness. Please, let us block this. Pray against it. This is just your prayer. And with this, I'm happy for your life. If a person is a Christian, then we go further to look into their lives. Hmm. Any area of weakness. Hmm. It, there would be at a certain level, obviously. So we, we look in, in that level that they are. How often do they pray? How often do they get angry? Do they have any last, any weakness that would be last anger, unforgiveness, hatred, pride? Rise up, rise up. Is that not educative? <laughs> eh? That is why I say stand up and stand up for Jesus. We will be on our stand and let, him, let her talk. Very, very educative. Just write it down. You listen to that? <laughs> he begins to measure all the fruit of the flesh. He said, there is one, they must, that area. Okay, it starts from where you started now. It would be anger, pride, Boasting. Okay, good, good example. If the person has pride, how do you use the pride? How do you get through the pride? For an example, if the problem is pride, then we're going to create situations that will cause him to be more proud, to talk about himself more, his success, mm. what he could achieve. Mm. In that area of weakness, we, we, we aggravate the area. So that you are caught up in it long enough for us to enter and do what we want to do. Glad for Jesus Christ. Mm. You listen to that. That if it is pride, they will use that pride and they will enter. So you will not begin to be too much, too arrogant, too proud. That will make you, it's enough to for you. 
to get you into the net. Mm. 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 Uh -huh. Go ahead. And then we would use that while you're still caught up in that situation of weakness. Then we enter and we do what we want to do. Then like, we would like, definitely like get what you want to do. In this case, we want to probably break, break up the marriage. Hmm. Yes, we want this man to leave his wife and marry this sister who is my client. Hmm. And you people have succeeded in doing that to many? We have succeeded many times. To many Christians like that? To many Christians like that. You listen to what he's saying now. This is, it's just in the world, no one is perfect, not even one. That is the angle there you see. Look at what the Paul said. They say, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Last meeting, Candle 9, I used the word affliction. Our affliction are meant for our spiritual benefits. And I define it by saying we are sometimes tempted so that we may learn to pray the more. Now, what you say now is that if that pride is your weakness and your prayer line is still there, the more you are tempted with pride, the more you pray. Then they cannot use that. That angle cannot, they cannot use that angle against you. Unless they close your prayer line. If your prayer line is closed, the more you are, you are proud, the more you are destroyed. The more that pride, the more your destruction. But if your prayer line is not close, the pride, the more that pride comes, the more your prayer, you pray. The more you pray. And when they realize that uh, the weakness, their aim, the use and the purpose of weakness is to overthrow you as a Christian. But instead of overthrowing you, it's strengthen you the more they are lost <laughs> are you with me okay now i want to carry this i want to push this the more you try to push me not to push this the more i push the more i push the more i push the more i pull you can see the purpose of pushing me out of this place is defeated so therefore there's no need of pushing me so the purpose of satan the reason why satan is then you see that weakness is with their weakness they normally use as a bait now if the more that attack come the more you pray so that is the meaning of our affliction are made for our spiritual benefit. That affliction could be temptation, could be poverty, could be attack, could be this, could be that. But when it comes, it's meant for your spiritual benefit. Right? You pray the more, you fast the more, you see the face of God the more. So what he's saying now is, he said, if you look at the weakness, if that weakness is that, and your prayer line is there, then if, when this attack comes, you pray them all, they have no right over you. They have no right over you. But when your prayer line is closed, if they can take your prayer line, they take your life. This is why the Bible says simple. 
that nothing can separate me. That is the meaning. Can weakness? No. If your prayer line is there. But if your prayer line is close, weakness can separate you from the love of God. If I'm talking to you. If your weakness, if your prayer line is close, weakness can separate you from the love of God. But if your prayer line is there, nothing can separate you. This is what Paul meant. He said, what can separate me? Can tongue? He said, no. Can weakness? Can infirmity? Can hatred? He said, nothing and nothing can separate him. Because his prayer line was there. But once they close your prayer line, you cannot pray again. You are finished. You are finished. You are finished. We talk more about that. You may be seated. Look at the look at the case of Paul. Paul three times, not one time. Three times mean three hundred times. Each time means hundred times. Many times he run to God. Jesus, God, Jesus save me. Jesus heal me. Jesus bless me. Jesus rescue me. Oh, how many times have you run to God over a, an issue in your life and you give up? without hearing from God but you give up remember Paul heard from God my grace is sufficient for you still still continue still continue still continue what of you that did not hear from God at all and you gave up compared to a man who heard from God my grace is sufficient for you don't worry yourself. Stay. 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 But you never heard from God. But you give up. And he never got offended. He never got offended that God did not remove the tongue. They were my graces of there for you. And he's okay with that. Because he knew whether he's here or not, that will not change the position of God. Whether you as a person enter the kingdom of God or not, that will not change the kingdom of God. God will remain the healer, the deliverer, whether you are healed or not. He knew that whether he is he or not, Jesus is the healer. So why do you bother yourself? So take it again once again. The weakness the sister is talking about the bible says no one is perfect whatever weakness is yours your prayer line since that prayer line is not close is that weakness is a spiritual benefit to draw you closer to god to run the more believe the more faith enough because you have faith but not enough but weakness will make you have faith enough hallelujah you may be seated glory be to god almighty the title of the message today what is possible in Christ Jesus. What is possible for me in Christ Jesus may not be possible for you. If what is possible for me in Christ Jesus is not possible for you, there must be something restricting you. If what is possible for you in Christ Jesus is not possible for me, there must be something restricting me. What could this restriction be? When the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ realized that there was something restricting them, they said to Jesus, why could we not cast it out? 
the book of Mark 9, you take your reading from verse 28. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? 29. So he said to them, this kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. When the disciples realized that there was something restricting them, they said to Jesus, why could we not cast it out? Why could we not deliver this boy? In Mark 9, verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. When you take your reading, from Matthew 19, verse 26. With God, all things are possible. If you take our reading also from the book of John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater ways than this, he will do, because I go to the Father. When you look at the book of Philippians, 4 verse 13, it said, I can do all things, through Christ, who strengthens me. From all these scriptural passages, we can understand that man is what he is by faith. We are what we are because of our Capacity to believe. That is, ability to believe. In other words, God cannot walk through us except through our capacity to believe. Lord, I What is possible for me in Christ Jesus as an individual depends on my capacity to believe. Our capacity to believe can either increase or decrease depending on how much we feed our soul with God's word. 
our capacity to believe can only come through our obedience to God's word. Remember, our souls in believing, our bodies in confessing the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at the world today, we do much by outward restraints, but lack God's character in our plan. In our resolution. I will not lie again. I will not smoke again. If such resolutions are not rooted in God's way, they will not stand the test. The book of Romans 10, starts your reading from verse 8. But what does it say? The way is near you. In your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Two things are required as conditions of belief. Openly professing one's relationship with Christ. Let someone say, openly professing one's relationship with Christ. That is one. Two, totally depending on Him for everything. And standing by him in all circumstances. When the goings are good, Jesus is the Lord. And when the goings are tough, Jesus is the Lord. These are two conditions required. The profession of faith with the mouth alone, without the power of meat in the heart is a mockery of the very fundamental article of the Christian faith. That is, there must first be faith in the heart before confession can be acceptable with the mouth. If you say Jesus is the Lord. If you say Jesus is the Redeemer, if you say Jesus is the Healer, if you say Jesus is the Savior, without faith in the heart, it's like making jests of Him, making Him to hear what is opposed to His will, making Him to see what is opposed to His will. Christians are commanded to walk by the Spirit. In that Galatians 5, verse 16 and 35, Christians are commanded to quench not the Spirit, to quench not what? In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19, you will find it there. Quench not the spirit. Christians are commanded to grieve not the spirit. You find it in the Ephesians 4, verse 30. These are the commands given to you. Whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. Jesus has done everything for us. All we need to do is to believe. Tell your neighbor. Oh, 
I owed a debt I could not pay I needed someone to wash my sins away Now I can sing a brand new song Amazing grace Lord Jesus pay the debt that I could never pay. He paid the debt. He paid the debt. He did not hold. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now, now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Jesus has done everything for you. All you need to do is to believe. In that book of Romans 10, verse 8 to 10, it is with the heart man believes unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made. The Bible advises us to give up to God our souls and our bodies. Our souls in believing and our bodies in confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ. By His Resurrection, Jesus has demonstrated that he is worthy of being the object of our faith. He is worthy of being the object of our belief. He has demonstrated that you can never be disappointed. He has demonstrated that you can make him the center of your faith, the center of your belief. He has demonstrated that you can make him the center of your own world. By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has demonstrated that he is worthy of being the object of our faith. He has demonstrated that you can never be disappointed if you make him the center of your faith. You can never be disappointed if you make him the center of your belief. You can never be disappointed if you make him the center of your own world. We are therefore required to respond in faith to the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ by believing that God raised him from the dead. It is this belief and confession that brings power to do all things. When opposed to Paul says, I can do all things. Through Christ, he was equally saying, I had given my soul to Christ in believing and my body in confessing. This is the true sense of believing. When you believe absolutely, you believe it is done. Even before you pray, 
because very much is promised to our believing. So much wood. If you can believe all things, not some, some measure of trust enabled the disciples to do some. Are you there? Some measure of trust will enable us to do some. But the Bible says, all things are possible. Too many people trying to get acquitted with God through their feelings. When they feel fine, the thing God has heard their prayer. And I've heard it, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. After that prayer, the headache gone. You see? Hallelujah! I will worship him. I will die for him. I'm a Christian now. I'll be going to church. Any other time, if the same headache comes, and they say, and the headache continues to persist, they say, ah. <laughs> what do you think is happening? Do you think, I don't know. Ah. The same Jesus I called last time, and my headache was here. But I'm calling the same name now, and I fasted. Look, I don't know. We do more by outward restraints, but lack God's character in our resolution. We hold to the outward form of preaching. We hold to the outward form of teaching, but reject the real power in it. We hold to the outward fasting and prayer, but reject the real power in it. Man has the ability to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays as he will. Remember several sons of Skeba? They were going about preaching and teaching and praying. Man has the ability to preach. Man has the ability to fast. Man has the ability to meditate. But it was trial that exposed the weaknesses of several sons of Skeba. They were going about preaching, Jesus is the Lord. The demon said to them, look, Jesus, I know. God of Paul, I know. Who are you? Well, when you look at the book of Acts, Acts 19, verse 15, it said, The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. I'm Paul, I know. But who are you? It was evil spirit that exposed their witnesses. This is to tell you that man has the ability to preach, but the Holy Spirit preaches as a way. We that claim to be Christians, we do much by outward restraints, but lack the character of God. We hold to the outward form of preaching. We hold to the outward form of teaching. We hold to the outward form of fasting. We hold to the outward form of prayer. But reject its rare. Lift up your voice. Ask Jesus. Give me the grace <laughs> to make your word the standard for my life. Give me the grace, Lord, to prove your word. Give me the grace, Lord, to teach your word. Give me the grace, Lord, 
to live by your word. Give me the grace, Lord, to make them walk. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Faith is not a feeling. Second Corinthians five verse seven. We live by faith, not by sight. Faith is not a feeling. Some people base their spiritual experiences on feeling and emotion. The Bible says faith is not a feeling. For faith to be consistent, it must be based on something with more stability than your feeling. For your faith to be consistent, to be genuine, it must be based on something with more Stability than your feeling. Feelings are influenced by temporary things. What do I mean? What we see, what we hear, what we read, what others tell us. The question you need to ask yourself, what could be more stable than feeling? What could be more stable than feeling? This is the question you need to ask yourself that what could be more stable than feeling? Remember, everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's words. Breaking news. Problems arise when feeling and emotion change, problems arise when feeling and emotion change. Today, so many claim to be Christians and they are controlled by Satan's devices. If you are a Christian, you must be controlled by the Spirit of God, which the Bible refers to as right reason. Let's not say right reason. I can hear you. If you see something like this, you do not take it the way it is until it is examined in the light of God's word. When you see something like this, You don't take it the way it is 
until it is examined in the light of God's will. If I say something as a Christian, I will not take it the way it is until I examine it in the light of God's will. Because faith is not a feeling. Feelings are influenced by what we see, what we hear, what we read, what we touch, what others tell us. Ask your neighbor, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? I can hear you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That is the question. Take your pen. Read. The book of Acts 19, from verse 1 to 6, when you get home. Listen, if you have the Holy Spirit, of what value is he to you? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor once again. As the viewer, those who are under the influence of this telecast. If you have the Holy Spirit, of what value is he to you? Remember the first question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? If you have the Holy Spirit, of what value is he to you? Take your pen and write John 7. Start your reading from verse 38. And Romans 8. You take your reading from verse 12 to 15. And take your time to read the book of Galatians 3, verse 2. And the Romans 14, you take your reading from verse 17. The question, if you have the Holy Spirit, of what value is he to you? Because faith is not a feeling. A Christian who is controlled by Satan devices would take anything he sees, he reads, he hears, and he touches the way they act. The Christian is commanded to walk by the Spirit. Well, you take your time to read the book of Galatians 5, verse 16 there. The Christian is commanded to walk by the Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19, Quench not the spirit. Grieve not the spirit. If I see something like this, as a Christian, 
I must examine it in the light of God's will. Because a Christian walk by faith, not by sight. We all learn what happened to Elisha servant in the book of Second King six fifteen. You take your time to read what actually happened there. It is a lesson to us today. Today, when we are facing an immediate situation, we are grieved by panic and fear and then begin to run after men of God without faith. That was exactly what happened. What happened to Elisha servant? He ran after his master when he saw chariots and instruments of war. Master, they are more than us. These people are more than us. And the master replied to him, don't be afraid. For they that are with us are more than they that are with them. What does this mean? This means they that are protecting us, they that are supporting us, are more than the forces of the adversaries. This statement is spoken to all faithful Christians to all faithful children of God who without are fighting, who on the outside are fighting and within filled with fear. They will say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Whereas inside them, full of fear. When they hear, boom, they open their eyes. <laughs> they say because the war is still very far the land that uh, there is a war in Atisola we begin to close up but when we now realize that the war is very close to the gate here we, we, will, not be able, we will not want to close our eyes again this statement is spoken to all faithful Christians all faithful children of God who without are fighting and within filled with fear, filled with tension and pressure, filled with trouble, filled with panic. You will see them waving their hand in worship, fasting and praying, but within, filled with fear. You say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praying and fasting, waving hands in worship, but within, filled with fear. Let someone say, faith is not a feeling. 
I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Faith is not a feeling. Jesus is willing to hear you now. He's willing to bless you now. He's willing to deliver you. If you are not here now, it may be to strengthen your desire for him. Because he realized that if I give you that healing now, instead of pressing the more, new desire will take your zeal. New responsibility will take the zeal. Say, you are not strong enough. If you are blessed now, you go back to the world. He is willing to heal you now. His desire to heal you now. If you are not healed now, it may be to strengthen your desire for him. Is willing to bless you now. If you are not blessed, it may be to strengthen or to prepare you for the challenges ahead. Is willing to deliver you now. If you are not delivered, it may be to keep you for a new level or to preserve you for redemption or to reform you for a better position in Christ Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart I want to see Lord, I want to see you, to see you, to see you. be to God. It is God's way to heal you now. If you are not healed, it may be to strengthen your desire for him. It may be to prepare you for challenges ahead. It may be to preserve you for redemption. It may be to keep you for a new level. And a new level you need some experience. It may be to reform you for a better position in Christ Jesus. It is his will to bless you now. If you are not blessed, it may be to strengthen you your desire for him. It may be to preserve you for redemption. It may be to prepare you for the challenges ahead because you are not strong enough. When you are blessed, you go back to the war. You forget your, your relationship. The Bible says you need God more in blessing than in poverty. You need God more in good health than sickness. Before your desire for Christ can be strengthened, you must see the cause for losing hope in man. If I'm talking to you, let me you see your hand. 
Amen. So I want to take you to the book of John 5. Are you there? When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Verse 7, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is steered why I'm trying to get in, someone else go down ahead of me. He had lost hope in man. He had lost confidence in man. The man in question had lost hope in man. Had lost confidence in man. Before your desire for Christ can be strengthened, you must see the cause of losing hope in man. When we lose hope in man before receiving our miracle, we value our miracle. And the reason for it. Are you there? When we lose hope before receiving our miracle, we value the miracle, we value the blessing and the reason for it. It is his way to bless you now. It is his way to heal you now. It is his way to deliver you now. It is his own way to prosper you. If you are not healed now, it may be to strengthen your desire for him. And before your desire for Christ can be strengthened. You must see the cause for losing hope in man. The man in question had lost hope, has lost confidence in man. If the problem I'm having now, um, if I wait for a little while, I'm going to see the doctor. You have alternative. That total submission to his way. can only come when we see the cause of losing hope in man. Total submission to his will come. Good morning, church. Good morning. You may be seated. Thank you. Viewers all over the world, we salute your faith. Thank you, Lords. Today we talk about the Word, the Word of God. As we all know, faith is of man's heart. And uh, the Bible says in the book of Romans, anything that does not come from faith is sin. That is anything that does not come from heart. So that is man's spirit is sin, it's wrong. Hallelujah. So you take your reading with me to the book of Isaiah 55, verse 10. It also will be a very important passage for you to read. We read the book of Hebrew, that is chapter 4, and there also the book of Ephesians 3. So when you look at verse 17, there also will be of help, John 3 will help us. Hallelujah. I can hear you. Amen. So you also take the, your reading from the book of John 15. So that verse for 17 too will be of help in our reading. So let's take that book of Hebrew. Therefore, since 
the promise of entering his rest still stands. Let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them. Because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Verse 3. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. The world rest, 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 rest. You take note of that. Rest, rest, rest. Verse 10. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. That it also rests from their struggle, from their tension, from their pressure. Take note of that. When you enter God's rest, you also read from the tension pressure. Just as God did from his, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any war, double edge. That is the word of God. So, like I have said, getting home, read the book of Isaiah 55, verse 10, will help. Ephesians 3, 17, will help. Faith. Is of man's heart. But there's Bible language that God used to save us. To create us, to judge us, and to rule over us. That is Bible language which is language of heart. Faith is of man's heart. Take the other. But today's language we use to gossip, to give directions, to do politics. You know, politics today all over the world. Today language is not Bible language. That is why it's difficult for Christians to involve in politics. Very, very difficult to involve in politics today because they use today language to do politics, even to do business, to sing songs, and to talk to our children. We say, get out of this place, stupid. We don't mean it. But the word of the heart means, you know, think of how many, how many, I mean, time you have booed your children. So get out of this place. Please, stupid, idiot. You don't mean it. But heart means it. Tell your neighbor. That is why God's language is Word of heart. Bible language is word of heart, but you don't mean it. A lot of business, when you check today, you see many people with business car. I'm a contractor, I'm an architect, I'm a lawyer, I'm an engineer, I'm a this, a lot of business card. We use today's language to pray. See, you see people today, use today's language, they don't even know the difference between the language of Bible and today's language. People use today's language to pray. That's why whatever they say in their prayer, they don't mean it. And whatever they receive seems not permanent because it's mere words. Uh, abide in me, 
come into my life. Save my soul. I'm a sinner today. Lord Jesus, I will follow you to the end of my life. But next day, you see them somewhere else. Freedom today, Monday tomorrow. Because when you are, you are receiving healing, you say, Lord, heal me, heal me. I'll give my life to you. Heal me. After your healing, look at what you are saying. It's not from your heart. So we use today language to pray, to counsel, to prophesy. You see, some prophecy will say, ah, it will rain tomorrow. But you find that there's no rain. Because they don't mean what they are saying. It's not from their hearts. Faith is of man's hearts. When the well is in your heart, it will preserve you from desiring sin. That is the word of God. You need the word of God in your heart to bring Jesus to the sin. You cannot say in Jesus' name and respect Jesus. When what you are saying is not from your heart. When you don't mean it, you say, in Jesus' name, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, do this for me. Give me blessing. Give me this. Give me this. All what you are saying is not from your heart. And you are expecting Jesus to come. The where in your heart can only bring Jesus to the scene. The word of God is the living presence of that divine power. If that word comes from the heart. Are you with me? If that word comes from the heart, it's the living presence of that divine power that heals, saves, that delivers. But if the word is not from the heart, you're just talking to yourself. You are saying the word of today. People use the word of today to pray, to cancer, to evangelize, to prophesy. You say, uh, I don't want to smoke this. I don't want to smoke. You keep coming to church. You don't want to smoke. If this word is not from your heart, it cannot influence your conduct and your character. It is the word from the heart that can inflame your conduct and character. The word from the heart takes the place of unseen Jesus. Meditation in the word is a visit with God. Jesus. That meditation from the heart. A visit to Jesus. You become a part of the word by meditation. You have to get hold of your heart. What is going on in your heart? Locate me in your mercy, O oh Lord. Locate me in your mercy, O oh Lord. More of you, more of you, more of this to continue. Your heart should continue saying this. Why looking at me? Meditation brings revelation. By the time you're busy saying this, you suddenly see who is talking here. I'm not the one talking, but because you are not in, in the vision, you are not inspired yet. You are still seeing a man talking to you. No, I'm not the one talking to you. You have to know, you have to see who is talking to you now by revelation. Meditation brings revelation. Continue. Turn it over and over again in your heart. Locate me in your mercy, Lord Jesus. Take more of me Give me more of you. More of your faithfulness, 
more of your obedience, more of your purity. Holiness, Lord. This is, this is, this is. Then the revelation comes. You will now say, who is talking? You say that this is not the man that is talking. Ah, uh -huh, I said it. It's not the one. Now, after the God will take you back again to your, you, your real self. You don't say, oh, I'm back again. Again. You switch again. This is life you should live. Switch, on, on, switch, on, on, switch. There's a lot of melodies that should be going on in your heart, a lot of spiritual songs, hymns. You have song. You know a lot of songs you can continue to engage your heart with. I've seen downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. That will continue in your heart. See downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. Continue to go in your heart. Continue in your heart. Continue in your heart. Continue this in your heart. Keep your heart busy. Why are you looking at me? If you cannot see beyond me, me, you are not engaged in God's projects. You must see beyond me to believe. Tell your neighbor, you must see beyond your pastor to believe. Just your pastor you used to see every day you go to church, you see your pastor moving, I know you cannot believe. You must see beyond your pastor. Beyond him is the person talking. Tell your neighbor, beyond him, the person talking. Beyond him, the person preaching. That is all. It's not your pastor. You keep seeing your pastor every day. You are not going to church. You are, a, you are just a religious person. A religious person, that is all. You must see beyond. So to see beyond is that meditation. 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 What will hinder us? What is the reason why you cannot do what I'm asking you to do now? What will hinder us? Our human nature will. This has a lot to do with hindering God when there's some mixture. Part spirit, part flesh in the heart of man. A constant conflict between flesh and spirit. So I say, Don't listen to him. Listen to him. Is it possible what he's saying? It's possible. Ah, I don't know. What is wrong? No. I've tried it before. Try it again. A constant conflict between flesh and spirit. A struggle between faith and doubt. Little time you say, take more of me, give me more of you, look at me, your mercy. Uh, what is the time say? You have abandoned what you are meditating. Okay, take more of me. Give me more of you. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Your heart. Little time say, ah, can you help me switch that station, the channel to, um, you are forgetting what you are talking. A struggle between faith and doubt. A constant conflict between flesh and spirit. When there is division in the heart of man, John Tilly said, find out the truth, and the truth will set you what? Wrong, mistake, or sin is never covered by our parents. You put tie, collar, 
be Bible, cross, garment, be cap. Sin, wrong, mistake is never covered by our appearance, by our presence, by our prayer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus did. By our tears. Sin is never covered. Sin can only be removed by repentance. So if our parent cannot cover our sin, our mistake, why are we wasting our time over our parents as if it's part of the deal? How you look cannot cover your sin, your mistake, your presence, whatever majestic. That's nothing to do with us. You must bring your wrong, your mistake, your sin before the blood of Jesus. Before the Spirit prays through you. Tell your neighbor again. I must bring my wrong, my mistake, my sin before the blood of Jesus. Before the Spirit prays through me. We don't know how to pray. The Spirit prays. We cannot do the work of God. The Spirit of God does. Where shall we start now? I'm talking about your life. We cannot continue this way. You have much, much, much to do. Don't let your age deceive you. Don't let your words deceive you. It's the spirit of God that can maintain when it comes to maintain us. You can achieve in whatever way, but to maintain nothing and nothing can maintain except God. There's no way you can maintain your career. Look at our leader, our hero, the most powerful in the world. You read about them. Many of them fail to maintain their profile. That you are not mean what you are saying does not mean you cannot receive healing. You will receive healing if you don't mean it. You say, let me just come here. Um, uh, and you don't mean what you are saying, but you have problem. God can, you can, be, the problem can be solved. But to maintain that, it's better not to receive than to lose. Because the people that say, congratulations, we'll later see you later. And say, what is wrong again? They start crying. What is all this? This is why I'm asking, where shall we start? Since you know what hinders us is our human nature. Like I have said, this has a lot to do with hindering God in your life. Tell your neighbor, this has a lot to do with hindering God in our life. When the human will is not wholly surrender. What else again? It's not wholly surrender to God. Your will refuse to surrender. You want to go there? And the will of God says, no, don't go. And you say, I will go. I will go. And I say discretion, you, everyone has. You have discretion. Look at the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus asked him, what can I do for you? He has the power and the grace to carry him. Yeah, you, are, you are in trouble. Carry, let him carry you. Drop him in this pool. Instead, he said, oh, what can I do for you? You want me to help you or not? And the man said, please help me. So the same way, the same way, you, you have discretion. That discretion is, 
a special blessing for for you. You can say no. You can say what TV Joshua says is nonsense. What I can't understand what he's saying. You have the right. Part spirit, part flesh. A constant conflict between flesh and spirit. That is the struggle you are going through. A constant conflict between flesh and spirit. If God is coming, your heart is contact point. But in that heart, there is a constant conflict. There is a battle. Go, don't go. Take, don't take. This is where you are. When you want to pray, Lord Jesus, help me to get there. Why something will be telling you to, you will not get there. This is why I'm saying, don't let your word deceive you. You have not get there. The richest man in your family, you say, oh, he has succeeded. You want to be like him. How do you know he has succeeded? Because of wealth? Man, natural gift cannot make one succeed. The success is all about spirit, supernatural. So something you can suddenly die and leave, and the enemy will start sharing them. If our leaders know this, superiority, complex, and all this fight will cease. If they know they are not what they think they are. Vanity upon vanity. What your heart is telling you, saying about you, is what you are. What your heart is telling you now is what you are. Tell your neighbor. Tell yourself, tell yourself, speak to yourself. <laughs> Listen to your heart. When you wake up in the morning and you want to go somewhere, just listen to your heart. Your heart may say, go, don't go. Heart is about meditation. You have been living in the thinking processing, not meditation processing. Tell your neighbor, you have been living in the thinking processing. <laughs> Not meditation processing. There's a difference. Meditation is about God. Thinking is about our problems. People can see you as a poor man, but your heart is telling you you are great. Indeed, you are great. Yeah. You see a poor man, and his heart will be saying, oh, you are great. Indeed, he is great. But why you rich, your heart will be telling you, you are the poorest in the world. Whereas upon the cash and money you are seeing, yet the heart to say is poor. So mean such money will not last. Whatever you cannot enjoy to the last is not of God. <laughs> if what you are cannot be witnessed by generation yet unborn, it means it's not for generations. And God is of generations. God is of generation. And whatever you are cannot be witnessed by a generation yet unborn. It's not of God. And because God is of generation. So please, let's 
build our lives, commit your life to God for generation yet unborn, to witness and see what you are enjoying today. Some had paid supreme price to bring them. That means minute. Tell your neighbor. I can you understand? Heart means minute. Heart means minute. Mm. Whatever comes from the heart, we mean it. This is why each time I pray for you, I say, minutes, 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 minutes. It's a place where there's no doubt. Minutes. Minutes. Mean what you are saying. In your heart, talk to yourself. In him, in songs, in melodies, to your heart right now. Right now. That is the job. We are created to keep our heart busy with the Lord. Keep your heart praising God. That is what we are created for. You, our heart must be busy praising who? Praising God. But your heart has been... <laughs> Can you imagine how old are you now? Your heart has been roaming about. We are created to keep our heart busy for God, praising God. Busy, 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 busy. At the beginning, it, it may look very difficult. Beginning of everything is always very difficult. But as time goes on, it will be part of you. So keep your heart praising God. It sounds in Him, in the melodies. That is the, what you are created for. And when you start this, you will come back and give testimony. Yeah. Yes. They are supposed to know God's opinion about yourself. No matter what you are, no matter what you acquire, no matter how great you are, if you don't know God's opinion about yourself and about others, whatever you acquire is zero. The first place we are to prosper is in our spiritual life. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. I can't hear you. Again and again. Yes. Because your spiritual life is the engine that will carry your success. If you prosper financially, and you are just like a little baby in your spiritual life. That money you have will be spent by enemy. You take it to care for sickness, to run from one problem to another, to, to, to run for medical checkup. You realize that the money will be spending you instead of you spending the money. You know, you know money can spend in one. Ah, you are supposed to spend money, spend your money, but instead, the money will not be the one to spend you. You will not be able to eat any, any food you want to eat. There will be certain food you should not eat and certain food you should eat. If you try to eat other food, you'll be in trouble. You have so much medical, med med medication you have to take in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. The day, the day, the day. You start seeing yourself like that way. The first place we are to prosper is in our spiritual life. So if if you are not prospering your spiritual life and you are great, your greatness will be fading away, fading away gradually, fading away because nothing to carry, fading away, fading away, fading away. Fading away. Fading away gradually. 
So that is why you have to take your time, leave that money, pray, find time to pray. Don't let money control you. Let the giver of that money control you. But today, what is happening? Where are you living? Because you have money where you are living before, you have to leave the place and live where rich people live. Money is the one control you. You know where you started? You know your beginning? Where are you living now? You live among the rich because you are a rich man. That is money control, not the giver of the money. The rich are living together and the poor are living together. Who will help the poor? And you are blessed to bless others. You are blessed to bless others. You are safe to save others. That is the purpose of your blessing. You are blessed to bless others. This is the cause of the problem now all over the world. If God gives you breakthrough and you become so rich and you are now mismanaging, misbehaving, it's peace you cannot run away with. But you can run away with rich, wealth, but it's peace of heart you cannot run away with. So like people sitting down now, they're looking for prayer, they want... Prayer, you are here, break through your business, but after the prayer, you have breakthrough, billion of dollars, you receive it. And then you say, ah, I've received it. You run for God. But it's peace. You cannot go away with it. You will run away with money, run away with wealth, run away with the fame, but the peace of God. God will be looking at you to see the money you are going, you, are, you have taken, he has given you, how you spend it will determine the peace of God in your heart. So this is what is happening all over the world today. This is why you see so many rich, wealthy people all over the world without peace. How do we know that they don't have peace? The conflict among them will tell you this people has no peace. But if you have peace of heart, people are insult you, beating you, and you'll be saying, take it easy, take it easy. Because peace does not want conflict. It wants peace. Peace is always fighting for peace. Unity, love. So when it gives you that greatness, it will hold on with this peace to be, to be monitoring you to see how you go about your greatness. That will determine how we will re release the peace. So please, the first place we are to prosper is in our spiritual life. So please, you are to go back to your drawing board. Tell your neighbor, go back. Go back to College of God and seek the Spirit of God. Yes, you have to go back. You have to go back. If you know you are blessed, you have money, you have property, you have this, please go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back. Man live without peace. Are you one of them? God bless his way. has been quite some time, I took a resting time. Resting time is time to receive from God. Working time is time to give what we receive from God.
this is a difficult time where every day is filled with uncertainty. These are some of the places I spend my time to receive the message you are about to hear right now. message is important for your focus. Let us pray. Feed your Lord from your word that we may know you. Your word is truth. Your word is light. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Viewers, our first reading shall be taken from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12. We start our reading from verse 1. Our proof reading, verse 10. The book of Proverbs 24, verse 16. The book of Number, chapter 13, verse 31 to 33. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, we start our reading from verse 15 to 21. The book of Psalms. 119, verse 67. Let's take our reading. Second Corinthians chapter 12. It is necessary to boast. Nothing is to be gained by it. But I will go on to visions and revelations. Of the Lord. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, do not know. God knows. Let me take you to verse 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. So that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm content with weaknesses, insult, hardship, persecution, and calamity for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Mistakes are correctable. What is mistake? It is an act or judgment that is wrong. We wake up in the morning determined to get it right. Before we know it, we have missed the mark. 
making a mistake. It's not the issue, but how we handle it matters. For instance, the issue of COVID-19 is a mistake. However, how we are handling it has led us to where we are today. Where are we today? We are surrounded by uncertainty, the twists and turns of life, like economic oppression, poverty everywhere, physical oppression, sickness disease everywhere. Fear, panic, everywhere. No one is above mistake. You cannot live a proper life without making mistake. Life worth to emulate. If you make a mistake, as we all do sometimes, don't run from God. Run to him. If you must get to your goal, there must be a time to cry, a time to lament, a time to complain, and a time to be happy. The mistakes make Christian life more interesting and more valuable. The mistake will continue to draw us closer to God, make us pay attention to Him. The book of Numbers, 13, verse 31 to 33, and Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. God knew that the biggest enemy Joshua would face would not be the giant in the land, but the little boys inside saying, Whom do you think you are? You are not able. In the same vein, our biggest enemy is not the problem we are facing. Our biggest enemy is not the challenges we are facing, but the little boys inside driving us, saying, you can do this, you can do that, and get away with it. You can kill, you can destroy, you can steal, and get away with it. You are different, but we are not. We all have feet of clay to some extent. All of us has made mistakes at one time or another. And some of us are in the middle of a high risk mistake right now. We made the call. And all of us have made the bad call in some area of our life. Viewers, when we connect with Jesus genuinely by way of a personal relationship, he will walk you through everything you do. You know there are many wrong connections. When one is born again, when one becomes a Christian without the Spirit of God, 
this is a dangerous mission. When we are well connected, the word and the spirit must join together. I mean, God's power working through his way and his spirit to bring about the new birth. When you did not know him, you were influenced by your own decision and by the pressure that comes from others. When we accept him genuinely, we will be different. His decision on our life will guide us. All of us fight similar battles. But they are just camouflaged differently. They was in the first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. When we rely on the strength that comes from Jesus, he will not allow the enemy of our soul to give us more than what we can take. There was, let us pray. Our heart is the prayer room. I need your heart. I need your attention. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to be made whole in Jesus Christ's name. We come with our emptiness that we may be filled. We come with our weakness to receive your strength. We come with darkness seeking your light. Never a sickness, never a disease. Jesus cannot heal. Never a body, Jesus cannot bear. Every garment of sickness, every garment of affliction be removed in the name of Jesus. 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 Whatever sickness in your internal organ, in your system, in your organ. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I can hear Jesus say, you are free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Let healing anointing flow from your head to your toes to all your internal organ in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 The right hand of God is power. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven above. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the healing power, the healing anointing, flow from your head to your toes to all your internal organs in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of your spirit, that affliction, that sickness, that virus, be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. That COVID-19, be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of your spirit, that affliction, that COVID-19, that sickness, that disease, that trouble in your internal organ, be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. I push your organ in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I purge your system. Let every organ, your system, your internal organ, purge in the name of Jesus Christ. Purge in the name of Jesus Christ. I purge your organ in the name of Jesus. I purge your system in the name of Jesus Christ. I purge your internal organ in the name of Jesus. I purge that affliction. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit of addition be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that is not of God, familiar spirit, Demonic spirit, spirit of killing, spirit of stealing, spirit of destruction, be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel. Every clinical prophecy consign you. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. By your mighty power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I proclaim a mighty blessing upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I proclaim a mighty blessing upon your life, upon your now, upon your future, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every appointment with sorrow be counseled in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Every appointment with disappointment be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Every appointment with failure be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Every appointment with nightmare be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Let the garment of favor envelop your life in Jesus Christ's name. Let the garment of mercy envelop your life. Let the garment of favor envelop your life in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. I say good morning to your business. Good morning to your career. Good morning to your family. Good morning to your marriage. Good morning to your health. Yes, it is a new dawn. This program is not bound by time. Anytime you hear it, the mighty power of God, they are new every morning. The anointing of God is present 
anytime you hear it, good morning and win today.